Assalamu alaikum everybody um, Welcome to another arena Apologise for being fashionably late as usual um, So What the arena is for anybody who is not aware Because I think we've got quite, picked up quite a few subscribers Mashallah over the past week I think over 10,000 so maybe there's some new people here um, So this is a, a Stream and it's basically Called Challenge Islam And so what it is it's set up to invite Non-Muslims guests to either challenge Islam directly, um, so challenging something Islam teaches, the Quran, Allah, whatever, whatever you want to do, you're welcome to do so. If you're a Christian, you might want to present Christianity as your truth, meaning that Islam would be false if Christianity is true. You're welcome to do that. If you're an atheist, want to tell us that we're all stupid, we're a sky daddy, sky wizard, you're welcome to do that as well. It's for non-Muslims. It's for non-Muslims to challenge Islam directly or indirectly. Yeah? So please, non-Muslims, don't join. Because you're going to clog up the bank, inshallah. So like I say, we uh, invite non-Muslims to come and challenge Islam. And today joining me, I have Brother Irfan, mashallah. Now, Assalamu everybody, alaykum. we might need to do a minute silence for, for Irfan. Alaykum salam, because Germany kicked out the World Cup. And he might be a bit sensitive. Bro, I'm not even about football. So I, yeah, I, 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 I know. Yeah, yeah, we know that. Yeah, it's only a game. Yeah, we know it's only a game. Yeah, no, no. Yeah. Relax, relax. No need to, no need to, like... <laughs> I'm a basketballer, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we, I we never don't. used to like football anyway. So. Yeah, we, yeah, yeah, of course. Of course. <laughs> when Germany lose, we don't like football. Yeah, yeah, we get it. We get it. We hear it. Anyway, welcome. Mashallah. Nice to have you back in the arena. Mashallah. Um, and mashallah, we got Brother Jake. Alhamdulillah. He's the reason why we're here on a Thursday. Asalaamu Alaikum, bro. <laughs> Wa Alaikum as -salam. How are you guys doing? Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, I moved the whole show to a Thursday just to accommodate Jake because Mashallah, he's very busy doing what he's doing. <laughs> Rightly and, uh, so, bro. Alhamdulillah. Jake so we had to do it. Um, we're still waiting on Muhammad Ali. Maybe he's praying. I don't know. I'll give him a call. Um, in the meantime, chat amongst yourselves and I'll just do a little bit of housekeeping. Inshallah. Sounds good. Inshallah. Let's see. Looks like we got people in the chat already. So hopefully you get some interesting guests to come on this time. I haven't been on the arena in a minute, so. I just did the uh, arena warm up, yeah, and I uh, caught four good little fishes. So uh, oh, okay. if two of them come, we'll we'll have a show. Um, and there were some really nice guys as well. It was it was really good warm up actually because I do I go live on TikTok at the same time. So mm. I'm I'm speaking to TikTok and speaking to YouTube, mixing it up. Anyway, I'm gonna do my housekeeping. So just ignore me. Right, <laughs> Mashallah. Right. Uh... Let's see. I'm going to put slow mode on straight away. Uh, subscribers only. And then I'm just going to. <clears throat> Jake, someone is asking, is that red hat for Morocco? <laughs> yes, that's right. Oh, oh man, yeah, 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 yeah. As well. There you Mashallah, go. It's not visible from. Like, yeah, from far away. It's. it's yeah. uh, because the light, I think, is kind of like glaring on it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, mashallah. Yeah, so I, I don't have to make excuses about football, you know, that I'm not into it. I can just <laughs> say Morocco's moving on. So I came to boast, my friends. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be tough games, uh. Next round, playing Spain. Who we got? So. Who we got? Morocco is playing Spain, Oof. so that's going to be a tough game. It could have been worse. It could have been Germany. Oh, yeah. sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> bro. I haven't even watched. <laughs> yeah, one yeah, we know. We saw the World Cup. Really? Oh. <laughs> 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 Right, so we've got a new format as well for the arena, Jake, um, since you've been last here. So what we do now, oh. what we do now, yeah. because people have been spluttering and then complaining, they've been interrupted. So what mm. we do now, we give them a 60 second to make their case, and then we deal with it. So no interruptions, 60 seconds, make your case. And most of them just mm. hang themselves <laughs> after about 20 seconds, you know, but... They don't even know what they're saying. But anyway, is Mac Mac here? Brilliant. Mac Mac will be our first guest then, inshallah. Right, let me just try and give our other 
Because of this recall while I'm there. Mac Mac. I don't think I know this person. <clears throat> Interesting name. Yeah. Let's see. I'm going to say just us three for now, inshallah. Well, you too. I'll just be a spectator. Right, is the link pinned? Is the link pinned, yeah? Uh, oh, did I not yeah. put a link there? No, I didn't put the link. No, no, there is no link. Oh, for God's sake. Oh, okay. I'll do that again. I said, <laughs> come in if you dare, and then they give me a link. Right. <laughs> Let's start again. Yeah. Don't worry, Matt Mac. He's coming. We're waiting for you, son. He's, He's one of my arena warm up guests. So, uh, what's his deal? Is he atheist, Christian? What? I can't even remember now. <laughs> there were no. so many of them. There were some making <laughs> nonsense, but I remember him. I think he was. Um, was he? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You'll love it. You'll love his question. I'm going to let it be a surprise for you. Okay. So, somebody said, Jake, why do you call yourself Jake? Is that your name? Uh, yeah, I think so. <laughs> oh, boy. I hope we're not going to get questions like that from the guests. Yeah, inshallah. <laughs> uh, yeah. We are. Welcome to the arena. Honestly. All the big boys run away from the arena, so we just have to deal with what comes. Yeah. Let me link up. I just have to emphasize non-Muslims, you see. But congrats, Hamza, mm. man. You're you're not far from the 100K, inshallah. Oh, sorry? You're not far from the 100K, inshallah. Yeah, mashallah, amazing. I, I targeted yeah. to hit 100K in um, Eid, as like an Eid gift. And it looks yeah, like we're going to hit it before the end of the month, end of December, inshallah. Inshallah. Oh, yeah, almost at 95, mashallah. Yeah, mashallah. Those YouTube shorts, you see. Mm. Yeah, sh shorts have become very powerful, mashallah. Yeah. And the thing is, we put it on TikTok and we put it. One of, one of them went like 4 million on TikTok. It's like, what? <clears throat> right. So the link's coming up now, party people. So get ready. Get ready for the influx. Right. Should be sorted now. Should be sorted now. Is the link there? Yeah, uh, there we go. Yeah. Uh, as if by magic, Mac Mac's here. All right. So let's start with Mac Mac. I, I, I think his question is so profound. Mac Mac. Yes, sir. sir. Sarcasm. How how you doing, mate? Good. Good man. Okay, so the format of the arena is very, very simple. <coughs> you get 60 seconds to yep, make your case. Yeah? Yep. Okay. okay. One second, one second, one second, one second. Hey, Google. Let me just set the timer. Hey, Google. I like every setting of his Google. Uh, 60 second timer, please. All right, one minute. And that's starting now. Okay, so I got an example. You have four judges, 10 criminals. They're all guilty. Judge number one punishes all 10 criminals. Judge number two forgives all 10 criminals. Judge number three forgives one, punishes nine. Judge number four forgives one, or forgives nine, punishes one. Now, which judge is the most just? Is he done? Did, did anybody it? write? Did anybody write that down? <laughs> okay, well, it should be pretty simple. The judge that you know punished all the ones for their crimes is the most just, right? Why is that? 
Because he applied justice. <laughs> what does justice mean? To penalize or to give to what a person is deserving. So if they did wrongdoing, usually justice applies punishment. Um, yeah, but on what basis do you say that they're deserving of a punishment? Well, if they murdered somebody, they broke the law and they're guilty of a punishment, right? Uh, yeah, I would say that in the case of murder, sure. Okay, how about any crime? <laughs> I mean, these are criminals. Yes. Okay. So, so which... but you're you're saying you're saying that the ten criminals committed the same crime, right? They're punished sure. the same way. Sure. Okay. Okay. What's now, the point? I don't get uh, what the well, point is. We haven't gone there yet. What judge is the most forgiving judge? Probably the one that forgave all ten criminals. Uh, okay. If, it depends how you're determining forgiving. If you just mean well, forgiveness uh, from not wrongdoing. punishing a person. Well, they're forgiven from their wrongdoing and not punished for it. Okay. That's forgiveness. Now, can any judge be both most just and most forgiving? Yeah. How? Uh, because it's going to be based on the situation. It's not going to be, if you mean just most just and most forgiving is somebody that forgives everybody and punishes everybody, well, then that's just silly. And as well, another thing is, it, it kind of, he assumes that if you make justice, then you automatically cannot forgive anymore. But I think, uh, like, it is possible that you make a judgment and then still forgive, like with the case, like, with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, like, we believe if, like, a murder, he is, justice is applied on him, Automatically, the sin on him is forgiven as well because of the because of the hat that's uh, yeah that's happened on him. So both cases would apply. Uh, okay, you got somebody killed somebody, right? According to Allah, that's a sin, right? How can He forgive the person and apply justice to him? Well, if, if well, are like, you saying that are you saying that applying mercy can't be a just thing to do? If if you're giving somebody some uh, oh, what's the word to look for? Like uh, can you give if, someone what they deserve, and what they deserve is mercy? If you give somebody what they deserve, that's justice. Yeah, that is the definition be, of justice. If some, if you give someone what they deserve, you're saying it cannot be mercy. You cannot, somebody cannot be deserving of mercy. Is that what you're claiming? No. If they're okay, then you can be just and merciful at the same time. No. If you're giving somebody mercy because that is what's deserving, you're actually doing justice. You're not showing mercy. If you look up the definition of forgiveness, you're not. It's to forgive the wrongdoing, to not hold any anger or any stipulations towards it, to just straight up forgive it and not apply any justice. So, so if that's you, not what you, so we're if you saying somebody, about Allah. Yeah, I mean, it just makes no sense to me. You're saying if I forgive someone or I'm merciful to them, then I'm necessarily not being just. Well, yeah. If somebody steals from you, make any and you sense. Oh, well, think about it. If somebody steals from you, right, and you forgive them, how have you applied justice to them? Maybe, maybe. What if the person who stole from me is starving and he needs to feed his family? Does that stop the law from applying justice on anyone? No, no. You said about me. You, you know me. So I, I could, I could see, uh, I could have mercy on them. Yeah, and be just because I can see that. Um, how can you, how are you being just if you're forgiving them for their crime? Who do who who who's just? What what law are we applying this to? Can I forgive but, somebody if they steal off me? Do I have to report them to the police if somebody steals off me? Do I have to? No. Right. You, so, you can forgive them, but you can't, I can forgive them. Yeah. I can forgive them. Yes, but right. you can't. But you what, can't. What if, what if? What if? See, here's the problem you've got. You see. 
you think you can explain justice and you know what it means where if you read have you read plato's republic have you read the dictionary no have you read plato's the republic no where socrates tries to define what justice is no what is justice then? define justice justice is fairness in the way people are treated the system of laws in a country that judges and punishes people a judge in a court of law right. Right. used in the name of a judge in a high court it is the punishment or, or it is the deserving behavior who says it's deserving who's standard the dictionary. Of deserving you're going to here yeah but even what you said about deserving and fairness sometimes in the example that hamza gave to be merciful to them is to be fair and giving them what they exactly. deserve they deserve mercy in that situation so you're trying to make it seem like they're polar opposites, and they're not. They are. They're not, because we just gave you an example of where you're both you gave merciful an example and of just towards the person. You give the person if you gave them what's deserving. And if you give them what's deserving, sometimes that is also what's merciful. Yeah. For example, in, <laughs> in Islam, what is deserving, that is the definition of justice to give them what is deserving. No, you just said that. Yes. Yeah, but you just what Jake it. is saying, they can deserve mercy. And in Islam, exactly. we have this if they principle. Deserve mercy, let, let me talk one minute. Define in, justice. In Islam, you said, we right, have, no, you said one second. You said you just said justice was being fair. Yes, exactly. Right. So, <laughs> so someone steals from me, someone steals from me. And I see the reason, and I, and I want punishment for them because they stole from me. How dare they steal from me? Then I see they've got a starving family and he, he needed to feed his family. And I think, you know what, um, that's fair enough, man. I can understand as why well. you would do that such a thing. Because I would probably do the same as you if I was in, had a starving family and I needed to eat. Yeah, so I therefore, agree. I would do what is fair. And that is fair. And that was well justice. In, in, <laughs> well, that would be justice and mercy. It's not mercy because it's justice. Because it is mercy. Gave... No. It is mercy. What are you talking about? I have used mercy to be fair. Mer you, you are either showing mercy or you are showing justice. I'm Just sorry, because but... you're saying it, it doesn't make it true. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you can go and look in the dictionary for yourself. No, no, but, but, <laughs> Mac, 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 don't act, don't act like you've done something here, right? You said... To be just is to be fair, yes? Yes, that is the definition of right. Justice. So I can see that somebody stealing from me has done it for a reason, yeah? Mm -hmm. so, so I can choose to be fair with them. I say, you know what? I, I, I get it. I get it, mate. I'm going to be merciful. I'm not going to get the police on you, man. I'll forgive you. For, forget that. I'll give you what else you need. Do you understand? So it's, you, it's like Jake said. You're trying, to make, you're trying to make justice and mercy polar opposites. Well, we've just given you one example where it's the same thing. No, you give me an example of justice. You haven't given me an example of mercy. We just did. Why, you why would I be fair He was them? deserving of the forgiveness, right? Why? Was he deserving, why of, was the he deserving of the forgiveness? But because you said that he was stealing for his family for food. No, no. Because of my mercy, I feel that he shouldn't be punished for what he did. My mercy... I feel I should be fair with the guy. Oh, so he shouldn't have justice applied then. Well, the, the fairness, because... Oh, my God. You, look, forget the word justice. You should be fair. You just said to, we just said to you, they're not polar opposites. Fairness okay, and uh, mercy are coinciding. I've applied. I've looked at the fairness and shown mercy. What, why, what are you missing? It's like you, you, you're determined not to understand it. <laughs> it's like you're determined not to understand the definition of justice. <laughs> I've just used the definition of the word fairness. But you are saying that's mercy when that is the definition of justice. Yeah, no. so you're saying, no, you're, no, he's no. basically saying, Hamza, he's saying mercy can't be fair, which is just ridiculous. Yeah. I Absolutely. mean, yeah. how does what that make mean? any sense? The mercy okay. is based upon Tell the me how, oh, Wait, wait, let me speak. Tell me how a family who had their child murdered, right, then go to court and the judge says, we're just going to forgive them. 
please tell me how that is fair to that family. It isn't. What? Exactly, because mercy isn't fair. Well, what? what? You what? brought one instance where mercy it's isn't fair, and you're, 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 you're making a general rule out of it. It's ridiculous, man. Yeah. Why don't judges, why are they not allowed to just forgive criminals? They can do. They can. <laughs> no. Oh, I'll prove it. Shall I prove it? I'll prove it. Okay. okay I, went to court. I went to court, right? I had 12 okay. points. I, I think I had 12 points on my license. Or uh, No, sorry. I had nine points on my license. I had caught using my mobile phone. It was a mandatory six points, and I would have been banned from driving, yeah, for six months. That's the just. That's the law. If, if you get over 12 points on your license, yeah, you it, the law says, justice says, you're banned for driving, yeah? The law says that, yeah. Okay. Although I could appeal <coughs> the mandatory ban based upon extreme hardship clause. And the extreme hardship clause is if by banning me, you're going to cause unnecessary suffering to people who depend on me, then they can arbitrarily uh, not give you the ban. Yeah. And you have to convince the judge. You have to convince them that you this is the case. If you say you're a taxi driver, they don't care. They say you should have thought about that. Yeah. If you say you're a market trader, they don't care. If you say you have to take my disabled daughter to school, or you well, your disabled daughter shouldn't suffer because of your incompetence. So the, the the just the law says I should be banned. And this is an actual case. The law said I should be banned. I appealed on the extreme hardship and I escaped a ban based upon other people around me would be affected by me being banned. So the law says I should be banned. They showed mercy on me. What's the problem? Justice was served. They didn't show mercy on you. They, they showed... did show mercy on me because they didn't ban me because they shown justice to my family who would be affected they by my They showed justice because that's what they felt you deserved. Oh, oh, okay, I'll say it again to you. Did I get punished? No. Why not? Because that's what was deserving. Because of your circumstances, hence why you went to the court of law. Right. To right. Your circumstances, okay. Right? What's justice that's why you to the court of law? That the law says what's this was justice wrong. Served? justice being done in what's the court justice, of justice. Was justice is, served? Or not? Sorry, what? Was justice served on me? Yeah. It was. You got what you deserved. Which was what? Mercy. No, which was. Yes. They should no. have banned me. Yes. <laughs> no. Yes. Because he... No. <laughs> what did I deserve for using a mobile phone and having nine points on my license? What did the law say I deserved? Uh, the law said that you deserved whatever the law would say. A ban, you deserved, a ban right? from driving. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Did they ban me from driving? Do you know why you went to the court of law for it? Why did did they ban me? Why from didn't driving? they just give you the ticket and just say you're done? Did they why ban me from driving? The court of did, law. Okay. The law said they should ban me from driving. Did they ban me from driving? The law said. You need to I go should to be court banned from driving. This. Yes. No, the law said driving. you need to go to court for this. That's what the law said, and that's what you did because right, that's right. what the I law went to said, court. Right? And the right. law says, right. the law says, and you stipulated your case that people look, depend Mac, on Mac. you with Mac, your. Mac. The law says, the law says, if you have more than twelve points on your license, yeah, more than twelve points on your license, you're banned from driving for six months. That's the law. I went to court with nine points on my license. Knowing a mobile phone being being on a mobile phone is six points, okay. yeah, six points, which would be how many points? Fifteen points, which is an automatic ban. So uh, the the law says I should have been banned from driving for six months. Yeah. The law said you need to go to court to determine exactly what. The oh, okay. Or the law says the, the, the law. The court is just a place where the law is applied. The law Where says, justice is done. <laughs> yes, I would agree. So the law is the, the court is where justice is supposed to be done. I agree. Okay. Was justice done on me or not? Yes. Right. Was mercy shown on me or not? No. Why wasn't I banned then? Because your circumstance 
made what's happened this... with anything? What's, what's happened? happened? The laws of law, mate. What happened? What... If, so, if, 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 the, if your situation has nothing to do with anything, then why do why do cops even bother no, no, telling people no, no. to go to the court? Why, did, why they didn't they the court to lay out the stipulations? Why didn't they the ban me? So the judge can understand what your situation is, so he could give why you the proper ban me? calling. Why if you're a murderer me? and you sit there and you just scream about fucking killing everybody, the judge whoa, is not whoa, going to show you mercy, whoa, right? Whoa, 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 bye bye. It hurts, doesn't it? Triggered so badly, man. Yeah, yeah, I don't know why he's, he's, he's so doing as if they are contradicting each other. But well, he just went to the same with blowing other. people up. Yeah. <laughs> is that guy a Christian or an atheist? You know. Um, he's a Christian. Okay. Yeah. I think he's a Christian. <laughs> you know, what he's trying to say is, and and this was his stupid argument that he didn't come with. He came with this earlier, right? He says, "How can is, he goes? Is Allah the most?" He said, "Is Allah the most just?" I said, "Yes." And he goes, "Is Allah the most merciful?" I said, yes. He says, how can he be merciful and just? I said, well, why not? No, no, sorry. He said, maximal, maximal merciful and maximal, yeah? Mm -hmm. And I was like, no, Allah's not all merciful and Allah's <laughs> not all just. Oh, he's all just, sorry. He's all just, sorry. He's not all merciful. He's the most merciful, which means that he's more merciful than anything you could know. Now, we're not Christians here. The Christians are, are, are trapped in this particular point. Maybe he's not an a Christian, actually, because the Christians are trapped in this because they say all loving. All loving is killing people by the flipping hundreds in the Bible. What's the love? Mm. <laughs> so we, we say most merciful. So he's more merciful than you can know. Alhamdulillah. But you can't be. You, he, he's correct. You can't be all just and all merciful because that means you, you'll never punish a criminal because you're always mer given mercy. And what I wanted to mention, like we in Islam, we have this principle of darura, necessity. Like there are like uh, laws in the Islamic uh, jurisprudence, but when the person is in a necessity, these laws fall off. Even eating pork or yeah. even other stuff like get allowed because you're in this type of necessity. And it's a, it's a mercy from Allah. Like even, even with prayer, when you don't find water... You can use the sand, you can use tayammum, there's stuff making it easier. So this is from the mercy of Allah making things easier for us, although he didn't have to make it easier for us. So it's not that he <laughs> deserve it. So, <laughs> that's great. <laughs> that's very good. Yeah. And that's it. They go just a mercy at the yeah. same time. See? As well, how, uh, like how do we deserve, like this is good as well, how do we deserve that God is merciful to us? He could be very strict to us. Like if you remember the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ the first time went to Allah SWT and he was told that his people need to make 50 prayers a day. And then mm. Mo Moses asked the Prophet ﷺ that he should go back and ask him to make it easier for us. But do, did Allah SWT need to make it easier for us? No, but he was merciful, most merciful. So he subhanAllah made it uh, easier for us with a lot of other examples as well. So mm. alhamdulillah. Yeah, you know what they see if this guy's a Christian, that's why I was wondering if he hadn't cussed at us, then we we could have maybe asked him. Because what Christians try to do sometimes is say, Well, mercy and justice are necessarily opposite of one another, such that God cannot be uh just and merciful to the same person and all this kind of thing. So they have this idea that God himself needed to come and die on a cross for us. And that is the fullest expression of justice and mercy at I the same right. time. They say justice right. and mercy met at the cross at the same time. This is the whole idea because, well, Christ, who's God in the flesh, according to them, was punished for our sins, right? But it's also merciful because he's providing this mercy to all of mankind if you accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Maybe he was getting at this idea if he was a Christian or... Maybe he's an atheist just trying to say, well, God is contradictory because he can't be ju all just and all merciful. I don't know. I mean, yeah, but the Jake, problem, do you think, but the problem okay. even with that example, though, is um, if Jesus died for our sins, according to what Christians believe, that means God got paid. Yeah? Yeah. So where's the mercy? What's been forgiven? Nothing's been forgiven. If, yeah. if that's the thing, that God needs payment, there's no remission in the sin without the shedding of blood. That means God needs to be paid in blood to forgive sin. Whether he used one person or a multitude of people, he got paid. But if he got paid, he what, all, did you, he, what did you forgive? He paid, and he paid, he paid himself. himself. 
he yeah, but what do you... so he just took money out of his right pocket and said, "All right, I'm going to switch it and put the money into my left pocket." That's, that's all he did. So it's it's just silly, and I don't know why Christians think this is such a great argument. It's ridiculous. Honestly, then let's see who next. Sean. Oh, hello. Hello. Hi, Sean. Hamza, do you remember me from last? Or sorry, last time. I was I was the same name, Sean. Okay. Um, no. Anyway, no? Okay, Sean. Cool. All good. One second. One second. You got one second. Hey, Google. Sixty seconds for Sean. Oh, forget Sean. Hey, Google. Just do sixty seconds. Hey, Google. Sixty seconds. <sighs> And we're starting now. All right, cool. So I actually don't have very much time. I'm just on the like end of my lunch break. But uh, I just want to get your opinion because I know that you respect what Jesus says in the Bible. I want to know what you think about Mark 9, 30 to 37, where Jesus tells his disciples that he is going to die and he's going to be reborn in three days. And we could cut the time short there. That's I don't have much time. Okay. Do you want to wrecking ball that or should I wrecking ball that? You can wrecking ball it. You can go ahead. I mean, I don't know what his point is. Well, <laughs> Mark 9, 30 to 37 says Jesus is going to die and then come back in three days and be resurrected. But Islam denies the crucifixion. So I want to know your opinion on Mark 9, 30 to 37. All right. I've got an easy yeah, question don't... for you. I've got an easy sure. follow-up question. Sure. Were the disciples of Jesus waiting for him to rise after three days? Uh, no, because they didn't really understand. They were, but they, I know what you're saying. You're saying when they went to the cave and they found it empty, they went to tell people and then I'm everyone was like, yeah, yeah, question. whatever. It's a very simple question. I just answered were it. the disciples of Jesus awaiting his three day ar 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 arisen? No. No. Why not? They did not, they didn't really understand what he was talking about. So G Jesus said to them, I'm going to rise after three days, but they didn't get it. Yeah. Well, if you read Mark you 9, get it. 30 to you 37. Get it. No, I'm, just, I'm literally, look, in the Bible, I'm telling you, Hamza, don't be mad. Look, in mad. Mark 9, 30 to 37, he says that the disciples were too afraid to ask what Jesus meant by him being revived in three days. Right. Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Sure. Who's Mark? Sure. Who's Mark? Uh, Mark is presumably one of the disciples. Presumably? According to whom? Or the, uh, yeah. Huh? Well, according to scripture. Where? According to scripture. Where does it say Mark is one of the disciples? Well, if you, what do you mean? It says, <laughs> I don't know the exact verse, but it names twelve of the disciples, and Mark is okay. one of them. Which, which disciple was called Mark? Which disciple was called Mark? Mark. What? <laughs> 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 I'll make it easy for you, Sean. If I was to name sure. the twelve disciples, there's no disciple called Mark, mate. Sure. There is no disciple called Mark. Okay. That's fair. Um, right. But yeah, I understand so, what you're saying. It's like, well, okay, well, your well, point second. is that it's I'm, anonymous I'm authors. Sean, 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 Sean. There's no yeah. disciple called Mark. So okay. how There's do no you know? disciple called Mark. Mark. But there is a chapter in the Bible called Mark that was from one of the apostles or disciples of Jesus. How do you know that? Oh, yeah, why are you saying that? Where are you getting that information Because from? this is what scripture says. Why are you denying the scripture? Where, where does it say that? Where does it say that? Where does it say the gospel of Mark was written by an apostle? Where does it say that? That's his story is following Jesus. Who's, he wasn't a disciple. He's there. Someone was there at the time. Oh, it's someone like narration. Who? Ooh. Okay, look, it's a narration. I know you want like names and stuff. You're saying that it's a. Oh, no, you made a author. claim that it was Mark. You made oh, a claim that it was Mark. <laughs> That's what the book is called. It's called Mark. Yeah, but you right? said Mark was the disciple. Yeah. Right. It's the story of one of his disciples, like the narration of what Mark, I don't know who it really was, but Mark is the <laughs> name that they've <laughs> given really him. Won't. Well, if you don't know who wrote it, how do you know what was written was true? Well, then you could just deny the whole Bible. That just 
at that point you're not even arguing you're just shutting it down and dismissing it completely no there's no, it's not no. even an argument to be had I, then because I'll you're not even it's an argument to be had Sean. can i finish so, you're not like you're, quoting, you're, you're not accepting my side of the argument like as even yeah. like you're not even accepting it as viable no we're asking you, you're you not even you viable and every reason you've given to because... think is viable is false Okay. So remind us why so, you think the Gospel of Mark yeah. is a reliable source of historical information. Remind us. Because this is what's been passed down through time. It's through the. Do you know what the apostolic su succession is? So, so just so I understand, I, I, I'm going to shut up in a minute. Just so I understand, you're saying any literature that gets passed down through time is true. Of course not. This is just what's been accepted in Christian beliefs. This is what's been passed down. The How word of God or against? the word of Jesus. Okay. Oh, okay. No, it's not. It's not okay, bro. <laughs> You've got no Why justification. Okay? Your only justification is, yeah. is basically because someone said it is. Okay. Well, basically, why do you? But, but then, why do you believe the hadith? It's the oh, why thing. do we believe the hadith? Because uh, the chain of narration. The, no, no, oh, I can answer that thing. because the chain of narration. Hey, explain right? the difference. Okay, difference? look, I really, I don't have much time, so let me just, like, Sean, Sean, the stop chain of narration Sean, and the Sean. apostolic succession are the same Sean. thing, okay? Sean, Sean, yes. let me explain something to you. Yes. Don't try to bring hadith to the table, because it will bury your New Testament. All right, I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'm, I'm telling you that they're... You're in the same league. It's, you're they're translated in the same Sean, way. Sean, Sean, Sean. They're passed down in the same Sean, way. Sean, Sean, Sean. I know. Sean! Pay attention. I'm here. I'm okay. here. All right. So you, you brought the hadith to the table. Okay. So why do we yeah. say some hadith are authentic or some hadith are weak and some hadith because are Because you can follow the what? chain of narration. What does, and what is the chain of narration? It goes down all the way back to Muhammad. The people no. who were there witnessing him. Right, right. Like the disciples of Jesus. Like That's a, what the apostolic succession is. So it's what we do. The teachings Sean. of the disciples passed down through generations, just like Sean. the hadiths. Sean, you don't. You're not have even that. hearing me out, Hamza. Because you don't. You don't. Because we do. We you don't have it. Succession. I'll, I'll explain something to you. It's Shall I explain down something to you? Word of mouth. I'm going to give you one question before, before it was written down. Sean, sure. Sean. I mean, you know yeah. the Gospel of John. Yeah, sure. You know who John's student was, Polycarp. Um, no, I'm well, not he, even familiar with so him. To be honest, was Polycarp, yeah. Okay. And he never quotes from the Gospel of John. Why not? I don't know, because I don't know him, so I can't answer that question. All right. No, so I said to you, it's a question for you to figure out. Why would the student of one of the disciples of Jesus never quote Ooh. him, his gospel? Why not? Why would one of the disciples of Jesus or one of the disciples no, of John? Why would one of the disciples of John yeah. never not quote, quote him John? from John's gospel? Yes, why not? Uh, I don't know. Imagine they had different stories to tell. Why would you repeat the same thing? Sean, is this what you yes. came with? Is this what you came with? You came with the Gospel of Mark. You came with, this, is, this, is, this is a breakdown. You but came you, with last Gospel time you second. accepted... Uh, okay, sure. Sean, Sean, right. you came with the Gospel yeah. of Mark, as if yeah. you're quoting history. You've now conceded the author of Mark isn't a disciple of Jesus, and you've got no reason to believe what he wrote was true. And the beautiful I'm thing I don't, is... I'm saying I don't know who he is. I don't know if... No, no, like, I don't know what you see, I'm saying. You know the beautiful thing about this, you see? This kind of explains why the disciples of Jesus were not waiting for him to rise. Yeah. And you know what? The, the interesting point about the Gospel of Mark, I don't know if you know this, Sean, but the Gospel of Mark originally actually ended at verse 8 in the 16th chapter. And it says this, And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulchre, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither did they say anything to anyone, for they were afraid. And that's how it ends. Right. Yeah. Well, that's so nobody that's said anything said. to Jesus anybody. Said, Don't. Nobody said anything to anybody. Okay. Yeah. And apparently, in the other gospels, you have people saying things no to anything. other people. What's that? How did the word get to where it is today? If no well, that's the whole anything. point. If you think that that's what happened, then the Gospel of Mark can't be an accurate account, and that's why afterwards they had to add twelve more verses to the end because the story didn't make sense. It didn't fit with the other narratives. 
right. Sorry, I would love to continue talking, but I really got to get back now. Sorry, guys. Sorry, I don't mean to cut it short, but See you right. there, Sean. enjoy the rest of the stream. We will. I mean, that just ends the whole thing. The the, the longer ending of Mark is not even uh, authentic. But it's it's right? even so funny, it's... like how how he comes, like he makes an argument. He said, like, on the assumption that my Bible is reliable, then because your Quran contradicts it, your Quran is false. But like you have a wall construction site you have to take care of first before we can accept this uh, assumption. So. Right. And and uh -huh. what he doesn't understand, actually, is that when we have a hadith and we have the people that are mentioned in the chain, we have to know who these people are. If they're unknown, we don't accept it. And then we don't say, oh, it's Mark. And then, well, who's Mark? Well, just somebody named Mark. Well, no, we, ha we have to have some biography, familiarity with the people in the chain. They have to be yes. authenticated. It's not just, oh, Mark or some unknown person when we uncover it and we realize, oh, there actually wasn't a Mark. And then, oh, well, now we still accept it. So the methodology is totally different. It's not yeah. analogous at all. It's a, it's a total science of hadith. Like even before the scholars start to look to try to determine if this hadith is sahih, it has to go through several conditions. Like they say um, uh, it has to be like... The one who narrating it needs to be a trustworthy person, and then it needs to he needs to be like someone who can memorize. So his memory has not to be weak. He he cannot be someone who can forget or anything like that. And then uh, he, he has like, to be they, they, he was known. He can't be yeah. he Can't be no, unknown. No, they, they, their biographies are all taken down. And I think exactly. I even heard some non-Muslims saying. Like they were amazed by the Muslims how many biographies they collected just to get to know more about the Prophet. Mm. So they collected oh. biographies of thousands and thousands of people. And imagine even from people that are unreliable, but just to establish that this person is narrating something from the Prophet, وسلم, he's not reliable. Don't take from him. So they even took the, the, the biographies of good people, bad people, like from all different sects and all different ideologies, just to make sure, like. Uh, to get to the ahadith that are sahih. So it's a whole yeah. science. It's not just gossip, subhanAllah. Mm. And uh, yeah, subhanAllah, it's not comparable, definitely. Yeah. No. But uh, the funny thing is, the funny thing is, um, the Gospel of Mark drags Matthew under the bus with it because mm. Matthew's copied from Mark. <laughs> so yeah. they say, but Matthew was a disciple. Wait a minute, why is he copying from Mark who wasn't a disciple? Right. So it, it, it all gets dragged under. So and I don't think Christians know this. Actually, I keep trying to explain it to them. Your position is based upon a false premise. And you've got to realize once that premise has been exposed, you need, you need to look at the ramifications of it. Now, he came on confident that Mark was caught in history. There was a disciple called Mark in the 12. He just found out there wasn't. Yeah, that ended real quickly, like five minutes later. <laughs> yeah. So then he's got to go back and I think, wait a minute. If it wasn't a disciple called Mark, then why do we... Why, why do we um... Why do we follow what Mark says? And why is Matthew copying from him? These are the questions that need to be asked now. And, but the problem with Christians is, ah, just don't do it. Right, uh, Omar, please. Uh, are you a Muslim or not? <sighs> Omar, are you Muslim? Yes, yes, bro. I was here by mistake. I was in the lobby. I'll take note. I'm Muslim. Alhamdulillah. Salaam alaikum. What? He said he's just Muslim. in the lobby. I'm just chilling in the lobby. Sorry. You can't chill in the lobby, mate. Go and chill in the chat. Go, right. don't worry. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Wa alaikum. alaikum chilling in the lobby. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, idiot. Oh, man. Avramel Goldberg. Hello? Yeah, can you hear me? We can hear you, sir. Just just wait one second. I'm just going to plug my earphones in if that's okay. Okay. I actually got to uh, pray, so I'll be right back, guys. Okay, inshallah. Yeah. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I could hear you before. Now you don't... They put a bucket on your head. What happened? <laughs> nah, my, my family's sleeping because I had to put my, my ear. Okay, let me see if I can turn your mic up, man. 
You've just gone from yes, we can hear you to um, speak now. Yeah, is that good? Oh, that's better. That's better. Okay, just one second. Hey, Google, uh, sixty second timer, please. Sure, one minute, and we're starting now. Unmute yourself. It's, it's your turn. It's your time uh, to shine. One minute to speak. Lovely. Yeah. So, so I'm I'm Jewish, and I want to know more about the Quran and uh, maybe mistakes in the Bible and Muhammad in the Bible. Um, and things like that. I'd be really interested to learn. Yeah. That, that's my 60 seconds. <laughs> okay. Do you, do you understand the nature of the stream? Yeah, yeah. But I thought maybe maybe you just help me with that either way. Okay. Well, you, are, you, are you here to challenge Islam or present Judaism as the truth? Or what are you here to do? No, no. I just want to learn, to be honest. Um, I believe that uh, whatever religion is correct. Um, I'll turn to God. Um, so yeah, if you could, with substantial evidence, prove your religion to be correct. I have no other option but to turn to who you believe to be Allah. And uh, yeah, submit to him. Go on, you, go on, Irfan, deal with that. Okay, it's, it's kind of, um, like like you said, not the topic of the stream, but what, what I would be like, before I go on about evidences and stuff, I would ask uh, the brother, like, what is your experience with Islam? Like, what do you know about Islam? What do you know about, like, what is the things we believe in? And maybe misconceptions you heard that's, or are you just neutral? Um, I know a fair amount about Islam. I wouldn't say I know it really a lot, but compared to whose opinion you're asking, I'd say I know a fair amount. Um, I know who you believe in. I know some of the Sahaba, I've read some of the Quran, I've read some of the Hadith. Um, yeah, uh, I know the five yeah, so what's, five what's, pillars of Islam, so on and so forth. So what I would start with, because what I think uh, you definitely must have noticed is how strong the, the concept of God, the Islamic concept is in comparison to other religions, okay? So uh, you said you were Jewish, okay? And there are even like other concepts, Christianity. I think you know some stuff about Christianity. And uh, what do you think about the concept of God in the Quran? I mean, it is very clear, straight to the point. Like you have uh, chapters like Surah Ikhlas, where uh, it just is like, uh, say Allah is one. Uh, Allah, uh, uh, Allah, the the uh, independent that everything is dependent from, a samad. Uh, he wasn't born, no, does he gives birth, and nothing is like him. Like this uh, straightforward uh, um, concept of God, and even like um, the Quran being a book like that is speaks so confidently, you can really like not compare it to any uh, scripture. If you open the second chapter of the Quran, how, what what does it st uh, start? After reading the Fatiha, it starts Alif Lam Mim, Dalik al Kitabu la Rayba Fi. This is the book there is no doubt in. And uh, then the other verses follow. So um what do you what do you think about the concept of God and Islam and the what I would call the pure monotheism that you won't like find in this form? Um yeah, anywhere else. And yeah, what do you think about that? So the Jewish view on God uh, in terms of oneness is exactly the same. We don't believe God has a yacht, for example. Um, we believe God, um, I, I know you say that God is uh, a being we cannot comprehend, we cannot understand, but uh, you say that he has a yacht, so on and so forth. Um, we believe God doesn't have any of this. We believe the attributes are all created from God and they're all external to God. But in terms of his oneness, yes, I agree with you. So, so what do you mean when you say God, God's attributes are created? So, so what what is God? So, so if you say the attributes are created and they're not like part of Him, then like what what is He? Um, God's a being that was always there, that will always be there, a being um, that is perfect, and the rest of that, and everything else from that okay. is created from Him. Correct. But but you just you just mentioned like attributes, okay? So how do you like differentiate between attributes that belong to God that he must have? Okay. But we would agree that uh, God's attributes are not 
uh, parts in terms of pieces that can be detachable or attachable. This is this doesn't belong to God. But uh, like, how do you differentiate? Okay, this attributes uh, because we don't say that God created attributes. We say God can only be the way He is. Nothing is like Him. He is a necessary being, and having created like being like what what you're like describing to me is like a concept of God, like to a, to a certain <coughs> extent is a created God because He created Himself these attributes that are still like it's like still him attributes of him right so that uh, doesn't really make sense of me so you mentioned the yet for example well we we don't say that the yet is uh, a part of god in the sense of that it's like a piece that can de it's detachable or attachable but we said that yes god has a yet because he said it about himself uh, we don't know the how and we know for sure that it is n like nothing uh, in the creation okay but uh, it, it don't I, I don't think like it works when you say like we don't say that God has a yet, but then you say like God's attributes are created, because I think what you're trying to run away from you just uh, you just fall into. You try to run away from maybe saying God has a yet, although we don't say that the yet is created, uh, and you you just say well the other attributes of, of God are created, so you make God like a contingent being. Yeah, I understand your viewpoint. I'm not going to go into it because I'm not a fan of philosophy. Um, you can mm -hmm. read books um, done by Kabbalists, and that will explain all this. Um, this is a long thing, and I can't really explain my viewpoint uh, within a short time. Um, you can read the Zohar. They go into all this and the attributes of God and how they're created. Um, yeah, but... Uh, I don't okay, really let's, let's talk about... Uh, can can, can we cut to the chase? Can we cut to the chase? Hmm. Yeah, go on. If it can be shown to you that the Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was a messenger of God, are you ready to become a Muslim? Um, so it depends what you mean by that. You have to be more precise. If it can be demonstrated to you that the Prophet Muhammad was a messenger of God, are you ready to become a Muslim? Um, so again, the, the, let's let's clarify that exactly. So I believe that there can be prophets who uh, they didn't, for example, in the Old Testament, there was a prophet, um, and he was a prophet that cursed the Jews. We tried to curse the Jews, and he wasn't successful. So there can be people who have prophecy that are not good and divine people. So to say that, that if he comes in the context of Torah, then I can't accept him as a divine prophet from God. Say that again, sorry. He said if a prophet comes and contradicts the Torah, he cannot accept him as a prophet from God. Okay. Do you believe Muhammad uh, contradicts the Torah? Yeah. How? I mean, the Torah states is for eternity. That's for a start. The what? The Torah states it's for eternity. The Torah states we have to keep the, the Shabbat, the Sabbath for eternity. Um, so on and so forth. You've got to keep so, the yeah, Sabbath for eternity. Correct. Keep the Sabbath for all days to come. That's what it says. No, you have to keep it for eternity. Correct. They have to keep it. Correct. For your punishment. Yeah, so. I, look, I've got a friend who's a Hebrew Israelite who's a Muslim. And he, he teaches his Hebrew and he keeps the Sabbath and all of this stuff. He's a Muslim. He believes Jews should adhere to their law and Islam. The, the, they, they're being punished for the extra stuff, which is in your religion, and then the true guidance is in Islam. So you should be so doing both. I, so can I drink alcohol? Can I drink alcohol and not drink alcohol? No, you can't. But the Torah says I can. The Torah says you can, but it's been abrogated now by the final messenger. Ah, so he contradicts the Torah. There we go. No, he corrects it. Okay, so you believe the Torah. What's your oldest manuscript of your Torah? You're so confident. Okay, the oldest your... manuscript of the silver Ketav scrolls that were from the time of the, your your, oldest... the time of Isaiah, because we love prophet okay, Isaiah. Okay, Isaiah, I'll, I'll say it again to you. So, What's your oldest 600. complete manuscripts of the Old Testament? What do you mean complete manuscripts? Complete Torah? I mean, complete. <laughs> How Does complete okay, have two meanings? About, so a manuscript is not a full. You think the oldest full manuscript, you mean the oldest full Torah, or you mean the part of a Torah, which is a manuscript? No, oldest full manuscript. So oldest full, full Torah, correct? Full book, yeah. Okay, so first of all, what difference would that make? Because this is this is a secular academic argument that you're using. What, what difference what, 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 would, what, what, would the oldest what, what, manuscript you know make? Well, you're not, you're not going to answer the question? Or do you not know? No. It's, it's the Bologna Scrolls. When, when was it written? Well, no, sorry. What is the oldest? What date? What, what you got? What you got? So, roughly a thousand years ago. 
a thousand years ago. Correct. What's that called, sorry? Something along the lines of bug by looking near scroll or something, bug somewhere, something like that. What? Come on, have some respect for your scripture, man. What's it called? Yes, I told you it's called the bug lot. It's the B O G L L N I A. If B-O- you Google the oldest Tyra. One second, one second, one second, one second, one second. B O, go on. Go on. B O G. Yeah. L O N I A. I'm, I'm not sure. It's something like that. Bologna. Bologna as in Italy, yeah? Bologna. It might be that one. Bologna manuscript, yeah? Correct. I don't believe it's manuscript. I think it's the whole tower. Correct. What's it called? Just if you Google the oldest Tyra scroll, the oldest full Tyra, it should come up. That's, I'm not asking for a Torah scroll. Away. I'm asking for complete book. So that's, the complete Tyra scroll is a complete book. Complete. No, we're not. Okay. <sighs> What's the oldest manuscripts of the Old Test? Complete manuscripts of the Old Testament. So you say complete manuscripts? What do you mean three verses, three chapters? Codex Parensis, pointed by Moses Ben Asher, dated by a colophon eight ninety five CE, contradicted Ooh. by radiocarbon dating, which indicated an eleventh century date. Eleven... It's the oldest manuscript bearing the date of its writing, written in Tiberius, subsequently was in Cairo. Eleventh century. Again, what are you years. asking for? You're asking for oh. a manuscript, or are you asking? No, for no, because Tyra? what I'm saying is, you're so confident in what it says. That's true, and anything that contradicts it is. I'm not um, confident in Google. No, I'm not confident in Google. I'm confident. You're not confident in Google. Tyra. I don't run from manuscripts. I don't run from manuscripts to prove the preservation of Torah. I run from the what the Torah says. In order to write a Torah, I have to copy from another Torah. Now, if you have, yeah, to, you have to establish Torah, first that the Torah is a reliable source. That... Yeah. And when was the, the first Torah, is... When was it first written? When was it first written? What do you? When was it first it was written by Moses? No, because it wasn't. It was. It was oral, wasn't it? Correct, and that was compiled by Moses. You asked when it was first written, and I thought it was written by Moses, then you think it's oral. All right, right, so, you, all right so obviously we don't have anything 3,000 years ago. So, see, here's the thing you see. You think your Bible you is standard. The written Torah you, you was always written. Torah written. No, written. I'll be honest with you. Yeah. Oral Torah. Listen, listen, sense. listen, listen, sense, listen, to be honest. listen. I've, got, I've got no issue. I promise you. I've got no issue if you think that what you've got is authentic. I don't care. Okay. The Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu is the final messenger and he came with the final seal. He came with the final message and that's it. Like it, don't like it, who cares? Now, you have to justify. That's not a justification saying that, oh, because he says we can't drink alcohol now where before we could. And that's saying not, we don't have well. original Tyra from only a thousand years ago is also not a justification. That's a pathetic I'm sorry? But, but as well. No, just because you speak quickly yeah, and then okay. zip off, doesn't mean you make a succinct point. Just oh, relax. Yeah, no problem. No problem. I'll, I can speak a bit slower for you. Just make your point succinctly and clearly. Right. You okay. said just because what, what, what? Just because of all this manuscript so, of the 11th century doesn't do what? It doesn't prove that the Torah has been corrupted. It just proves we don't have a manuscript. It proves you can't compare whether it's been corrupted or not. You have no if it's been corrupted or not. Again, we don't need to compare. Let, let me explain something to you, okay? Go on. How do we know? How do we know that you exist today? If we chop up the grave of your great, 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 great grandfather, we won't find his body. Yet we know that through transmission of a, of, of a pregnancy, so on and so forth, that's how men transmit. Likewise with a Torah. We might not have the oldest Torah. We might have the oldest full Torah. But when you're through the transmission process of the Torah, which is from one written scroll, which cannot be done no, 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 no. Let... memorization, and needs to be written to another Torah, from one Torah to another Torah, that still has to be copied. So when you're through that transmission process, we can guarantee the preservation of Tyra. But let, let me let me let me debunk you with your own example, because if you like chopped up Hamza, God beware. <laughs> okay, that, no, not him, but all his ancestors and all his uh, all the information about his ancestry. Okay, we you could come to the fact Hamza was transmitted through a chain of humans. Okay, but you couldn't establish what the source of his ancestry is anymore. You couldn't say like. He came from that tribe, from this part of the earth, and the source goes back to this people who lived in this and that place. So, okay, you maybe can say about the Torah that it's something that has been passed down, but you're claiming more than that. You're claiming about the source of our, of your Torah that it's the like God inspired or the Word of God transmitted through uh, prophets and other stuff. But if there is no chain, 
how can you like be sure about this uh, uh, about this source? You can be maybe sure that it has been transmitted. Okay, like uh, the, the case with Hamza that you could say he came from human parents, or you cannot say that the source is this or that uh, precisely without oh. like having the chain. Yeah, Great question. Really good question. So in order for a synagogue to accept the Sefer Torah, the Torah, they can't just take any random scribe and say, well, that Torah is a great Torah. So they have to know who the scribe is. They have to authenticate he's a pious scribe. They have to authenticate he's going through the training and every word. Where is that? Torah. Where, where's the chain? This is, this is, this Where is that? Because in, in, in Islam... Again, in you're Islam... interrupting me and you don't give me a chance to explain. Okay. I mean, I'm happy to, happy to go, but I can't explain it to you that way. Okay, okay like where is that? So, so we have to authenticate who the scribe is. So let's say there's a community and they have a scribe who's just in the Torah. They have to authenticate he's a, he's, a, he's a pious scribe. And then that Torah gets passed into that synagogue. And when the scribe wants to write another Torah, he takes that Torah. And from that Torah, he writes another Torah. So from Moses, you can guarantee that each generation, each sages have taken, have, have witnessed this scribe write the Torah. And they have proved the preservation by witnessing him. And that Torah goes into the ark, the ark of that synagogue. So on and so forth, when another Torah wants to get written, that's how he proves just, the preservation. Just so I understand what you've just said. Are you saying your Torah you have today has been copied, copied all the way back to Moses? Correct. Where can I find this information? What do you mean? Where can you find this information? What do you mean by that? I, I, I don't think that's. I don't think that's true. I mean, what? What do you, do you think that this argue, this rule exists? That we have to copy Torah from another. No, Torah? I don't believe that your written Torah or what you have today has been copied meticulously, word for word, back to 3,000 years. No, it hasn't. I don't I know mean, where you got the you information. You don't have to believe it, but that's how no. uh, every, All right. every Jewish scribe so, works. So can you give me the evidence for that? Yeah. One second, one second, one second. Can you, one second, one second. Give me the evidence for that. Sure. So uh, the oral Torah states that um, when writing each Torah, it has to be written with the exact same cloth, which is the parchment, it has to be written with a particular ink. Um, and again, like I said, from a Torah for another Torah, it cannot be done by a memory. Which means if every Torah has essentially been passed down by Moses all around the world, so on and so forth, um, we can. That's how we 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 understand it. We preserve. Well, no. I, you, see, now you sound like a Christian who thinks he's got an original Bible. You don't have I mean, what you're saying. Whatever I like. I mean, obviously we do, but you don't like it. No, 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 no. The well, way you don't have it. The way you should I bring mean, evidence to that, prove but, this. Yeah. The way the way you should bring evidence to prove this, because what you're claiming is that we're people generations after generations, and you're saying in synagogues. So I don't even think you mean it's just one synagogue, okay? You mean like several synagogues. So you have to have names. This person and this year he copied the Torah, and before him that person, and before him that person, and this person was a trustworthy person from the synagogue. This is like what our science of transmission is like in Islam, like why we think our source is reliable. So unless you're just saying, well, the Torah should be copied, and uh, it, of course we assume that it has, but we don't know the names, we don't know which synagogue, we don't know, uh, I don't know what, uh, the, the, the near, nearest manuscript Hamza said like is so, not even that far ago. How can you how can you establish this claim? So so when, uh, when the scribe writes the Quran, um, if if that ever happens, um, do you do you authenticate which scribe it is? Do you do you transmit that for? Yeah, it's all it's transmitted. Don't, don't come with that nonsense, please. You, you, I yeah, I, I don't even like understand why. Why would you ask that? Like, why why else do we see it as reliable? Because the Quran even has two change of uh, chains of uh, uh, narration. It's, it has the oral tradition and the written tradition, and both so when like you say a chain of narration, it's like. It's like it's like a double check because nothing can be written, nothing can be transmitted from the Quran except that it's in agreement with what the oral chain of tra tradition like says. And nothing can be orally transmitted than like what, what the other uh, chain of written transmission, um, how, how that was transmitted. So it's like a double verification process we have with the Quran. And you don't even have one of that. You don't have a oral transmitting case where you can say orally that there is a chain of people going from there to him and him and there it is. was passed orally nor there, there is, is a like, written okay, okay I mean, then, then show us That's please fair. show, show so us so please uh, sure. I've, got, I've got my google ready you want to google. tell me where I'm looking google Rabbi yeah. Lawrence Kelman or Kelman K-E-L-L-E-M-A-N one second one second no problem Rabbi what Lawrence 
Kellerman. K-E-L-L. Chain of transmission. Well, let me just see who he is first. No problem. You have to authenticate that he's pious, of course. Could be a I'm sorry? We obviously have to authenticate that he's pious. It could be a lion. It could be gathered a faulty chain. Well, no, I want to know who he is. Well, well, okay. Yeah, yeah. W w while Hamza is uh, looking it up, I wanted to bring something up uh, about what you said earlier because you said like about some legislations in the Quran contradicting uh, legislations in the Torah, and so you cannot accept it. Okay, and what I would say like it is not necessarily a contradiction. Okay, so if you say there is another legislation in the Quran and another legislation in the uh, or about the same thing okay you there is the option that okay this is a contradiction in the sense of that god legislated here something and he made it forbidden there something else at the same time so it's, it's a contradiction but you could do another explanation where it's not a contradiction by saying this was abrogated because god is god able to change his law if god no made it's not so when God creates a book, God is bound by this book if he creates it. For example, if God says in the Torah that I am God, I am one, can he become two? No, because if no. he creates that book and that book is God, he is bound to becoming one. So if God states I'm talking about eternity, law and legislation. Correct, I'm not talking correct. about the concept of so God. So if God yeah. states that you should keep the Torah for eternity, then he is bound to keep that promise with us. And we are bound to that promise that God has bestowed on us, that covenant from Allah. And we have to keep the Torah for eternity. And he no, cannot no, no. change his mind and say, you, what you, missed you missed what I said God. earlier. Okay. Yeah, you're a Jew. Yeah, you're being punished for your misdemeanors of the past. Yeah. So, yeah, keep your whatever you have to keep. But you've got extra now. That's why Allah addresses you, Bani Israel. Mm. So, so I've got extra. I have to drink wine and not drink wine. I have to keep the Shabbat and not keep the Shabbat. I mean, the Shabbat tells us the custom for the Shabbat is to drink wine. I mean, it doesn't even make sense. <laughs> what? A custom on the Shabbat is to drink wine. To drink you you get drunk on the Shabbat, yeah. No, 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 no. no, we don't get drunk on the Shabbat. We have a glass. We have what's called a, a minute amount to be yotza of, of grape juice, of wine. Now, does, it have to be, does it have to be alcoholic? Yes, it's grape juice. It's like zero point whatever. Well, why can't you just have grape juice that's not been fermented? Because that's the why custom is it not, the does it, does, Are you stipulated to have fermented There is al There is alcohol-free wine as well. Yeah, no, but no, but do they have to have alcohol? Where does it say that you have to have fermented grape juice? I, I don't know the verses off my head, but essentially my point is: Does it say it's that? Does it actually say that fermented uh, grape juice? Again, I don't, I don't know the, the the verse off my head, so I can't exactly quote it to you. But essentially, the point is that mm. you cannot be a Jew and a Muslim at the same time. And to say you can, it's it's ridiculous. What? Yeah, in terms Sorry? of theolo theology, we're not saying that you can. But in terms of uh, law, I, what I was just pointing to, that it's not contradictory, like it's not a logical contradiction if God changes his law, okay? Uh, but yeah, in, in terms of theology, if you're saying like our theology says that this law is staying for eternity, eternity and of, uh, the Islamic theology contradicts that by saying, no, every prophet came with a certain legislation. The Prophet Muhammad came with the last legislation le legislation for humanity that's going to be until the Day of Judgment. Okay, this is like clearly uh, not the same theology. But um, yeah, laws can, like there's no logical contradiction that laws can change. Laws can change, but not eternal, co not eternal confidence that we're commanded to keep forever. But yeah, sure. Yeah, so I see Jake is back. Jake should, I don't know if he has... Jake, do you want to tackle the Jew? Yeah. What's that? Sorry. So basically, what he's, I, I don't even know why he's here, to be honest. Because he said, if Allah says you can't drink alcohol, Islam is false because he's allowed to drink alcohol. That's his argument. Okay. That's not, that's one of my arguments. I mean, everywhere contradicts the terrorists. No, argument, no, right? no, no. That, that is your argument. I mean, that's just one argument, but correct. Everywhere contradicts the terror. That is my argument. Correct. No, that is your argument. That's you say, one of my arguments. You said, correct. You said Islam contradicts the Torah because it says you can't drink where you have to drink on the Shabbat. Therefore, you don't I accept never said it. that. So, I said, I'll, I'll be honest oh with gosh. you. I'll be oh honest with you. Uh, have a lovely day. I can't be bothered. You're not even challenging us.
I mean, I presented you an argument, you clearly couldn't defend it, but have a lovely day, take care, bye-bye. What? We couldn't defend what? Yeah, I mean, I, I just was going to ask him if, if he believed in any abrogation. Uh, was he saying he didn't believe in abrogation? Yeah. He was saying that uh, the, the covenant of the Jews is like to eternity, that they have to keep the Sabbath and stuff to eternity. So, yeah, there is no abrogation for, for him. Okay. I, I don't know. That's just weird because the Talmud um, and, and even Maimonides himself uh, – goes against that. I mean, I could read quotes for you if you want, but he's gone already. I mean, uh, he was doing my head in the way he was talking, to be honest. So it's really clever, like, as if you say it's like one Yeah, because in the beginning he was saying, like, I, I didn't came to challenge, I just came, if you give me a good argument, I'm going to become Muslim. And then he's So like, I asked him a very simple question. If we can demonstrate to you that the Muhammad Sallallahu was the messenger of Allah, are you ready to accept Islam? Mm. And then yeah, went, let me just read. Let me just read one yeah, quote yeah, from the yeah. from the Talbot. It says, uh, "The abrogation of a law is sometimes equivalent to the maintenance of a law. It is better that a single law be uprooted than the whole Torah be forgotten." So, I mean, I don't know where he's getting this idea that there's no abrogation um, within the Torah or the, or the Jewish Bible. It's a bit strange. Anyone understand this comment? Uh, let me see. Hamza, why don't you let others speak instead of speaking on their behalf? I mean, I wasn't here the, this whole time, but so I don't well, really I know. Think, I on. think Hamza just summarizes it. Like he just cuts to the point <laughs> because sometimes like <laughs> if they talk around and around, Hamza just says like, just answer the question. Just Was this guy waffling? Yeah, I just I just yeah, cut yeah. to the chase. If we demonstrate Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the message of Allah, are you ready to take shahat? You ready to become Muslim? Mm. That's it. Yeah, and then and if his like, reason for not accepting Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam because he can't drink alcohol. No, he has well said. Uh, he has well said that prophets can basically do bad things. Like there was a prophet who cursed the Jews, and I don't know what. So he cannot just because someone is a prophet, you cannot like mm. follow him mm. or something. So it was weird. Small question. But he's got a B as his uh, uh -oh. label there. That it should be big. big question if he. Yeah, exactly. That's confusing. You're muted, mate. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. Good evening. I won't take up much of your time because um, I have not a formulated argument that's worthy of you. But I just wanted to ask very quickly, and I'll leave you to it. And and uh, are we going to do the sixty seconds or? Yeah, we'll do the 60 seconds That's anyway. One second. One second. Hey, Google. Yeah, yes, sir. 60 seconds, please. All right, very quickly, and I'm off. Jake, uh, I know that you're you're sort of adverse okay. in philosophy. Um, Roger Penrose. Oh, I'm sorry. Sorry. Okay. Uh, I know you're adverse in philosophy. Uh, Roger Penrose and um, 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 Wolfram. I forget his um, name, the inventor of Wolfram Wolf Alpha, a very famous computational scientist. I mean, he's easily Googleable. They both agree that um, causation and time are not re relevant, are re not necessarily related to each other, or not necessarily causal to each other. My question very quickly is this, Jake. The, if, if it can be demonstrated that time and causality are not um, causally linked to each other, which is to say that con causality is not a consequence of time, would that have implications for the Kalam cosmological argument? In other words, what that would ultimately basically boil down to is, would causality, if causality precedes time, this is an emanationist causality, if causality precedes time and functions outside of time, does that have implications for the Kalam cosmological argument? That's all. Um, no, because you could, uh, it, basically it seems like you're asking, um, is the Kalam necessarily wedded to an A theory of time, and uh, I don't think so. People have run the argument on B theory of time. And uh, secondly, I don't really understand your question that well, because if you're trying to say that um, causation is, isn't necessarily dichronic, which means um, that the cause precedes the effect in time, then I'm not sure what you've been reading, because science uh says that quite clearly that causation is diachronic it's not synchronic cause precedes the effect necessarily 
So I, I, I don't understand where you're getting this information from, to be honest. Okay, fair enough then. I suppose the question was badly formed. That's enough for me. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, I mean, I would just look it up. I mean, just uh, just Google causation is diachronic. D a d i a uh, chronic c h r o n i c, and you'll see that. I mean, <laughs> it, it's quite clear to me, at least in the in the literature, uh, both scientific and philosophical, that uh, causation is uh, diachronic. It's not simultaneous or, or what's called synchronic the cause precedes the effect you're right if, my, if, uh, if cause if causation is diachronic then it collapses my question i agree okay thank you sir thanks guys take care dude well that was okay quick. it really was a small <laughs> question yeah. i mean really well i thought it, it felt like he he may have thought he had like a brilliant point where i was like well, it, here's this point that destroy the Kalam cosmological argument. It's like, dude, it's based on a false assumption. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I, I was well, he was a nice like, guy, so whatever. Well, like, These comments, man. I'm gonna start timing stupid comments out now. I'm, I'm you need them. to ban what do you say? You need to man, man up and debate Jews. I need to man up and debate Jews more. Stop hiding behind Christians. What did we do two minutes ago, dude? Jews are welcome to come on anytime they want. What are you talking about? Astrad. Okay, I'll be very quick. Um, you know how. Oh, don't be quick! Why, why is everyone coming on being quick and running? Stop okay. tying your laces. One second, Astrad. Astrad, wait, please. There's a new format. You get sixty seconds okay, to present okay. your case. Okay. Hey Google. I understand. Sixty seconds, please. All right, one minute, and that's starting now. Go. Um, right. Hamza, I think I've right. seen you argue that when it says it was only made, it was only made to appear so that it doesn't mean that Allah deceived the people. It could mean that they just saw it wrong, or you know, substitution or whatever. But then there's a hadith from Ibn Abi Hatim. Ashtadi, are you Muslim? Ibn Abbas said just before Allah raised. Ashtadi, are you Muslim? Uh no, but I've been living. I'm not. I've been looking into it for a while, though. It's appealing to me. Okay, okay. Are you a Christian or what? What's your position? Are you Christian or atheist or what? Uh, I was born in a Unitarian Christian family, but my family doesn't. Well, what do you believe now? What do you believe now? Do you believe in God? Um. Yeah. Seems quite hesitant. I do. So do you believe the Bible or no? Uh, not really, because it has some contradictions I've seen. Okay, so you're I'm just, just kind of like a de deist? I'm just Islam, and I can't reconcile, and all just start. Yes. Okay, go ahead. I just wanted to know who what your background was. So you're like a deist. You believe in God, but not any religion or scripture. Uh, not yet. So it okay. says, and I can't reconcile God being old just and then making it seem like someone appeared to be Jesus. Because in this hadith, it says, just before Allah raised um, Jesus to the heavens, Jesus went to his companions who were 12 inside the house. When he arrived, his hair was dripping water, and he said, There are those among you who will disbelieve in me 12 times after he had believed in me. He then asked, Who volunteers that his image appears mine? and be killed in my place. He will be with me in paradise. One of the youngest ones among them uh, volunteered, and Isa said, uh, and Isa asked him to sit down. Isa asked them again for a volunteer, and the young man kept volunteering, and Isa asking him to sit down. Then the young man, um, wait, sorry, <laughs> I'm just a bit stressed. And Isa said, you will yeah, be Just that relax, man, man. it's no big deal. Um, Isa said, you will be that man. And the resemblance of Esau was cast over that man while Esau ascended to the heaven from a hole in his house. When the Jews came looking for it, that, the rest doesn't matter. But it's from can, Katha. Yeah, can you tell me? Um, can you can you give me the reference? Katha okay, what he just what he just quoted was uh, Tafsir Ibn Kathir on um, where Allah says He raised uh, Esau. 
Okay, what 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 verse is that uh, of? Um, that's four one fifty seven. Is that one you're referring to? Uh, I'm not sure. It says page seven hundred and seventy one. See, okay. I mean, I can tell you I'd big, like to I read can, it to be honest, but yeah, I can tell you a big flaw from the get go if you like make life easy for you. It's not hadith. It's not the Prophet didn't say this. This is. Um, that's what I was thinking. This is. I don't. Yeah, think this yeah. The is, Prophet didn't say this. This is from. Um, isn't it? Isn't it Jafir, said he collected it or got it from Ibn Abbas. Okay. Now the problem mm -hmm. is, so the this is basically saying that um, a young Sahaba volunteered to replace um, Jesus um, to be crucified, and uh, this story apparently emanated from Ibn Abbas. But if you read Ibn Abbas's understanding of the same verse, he says that the first Roman centurion was transformed into Jesus. Yeah. So it's like there's two different definitive uh, explanations of the same event, which are contradictory. Yeah. And the, and the bigger problem is that Allah says in the Quran, none of you know. You're all guessing anyway. So whatever happened, we don't know. Allah says you don't know. Anyone who's trying to guess what you know, you, you just, that's all you're doing is guessing. So I don't, I don't see what the problem is or the issue is with regards to this. Because I even, uh, I, I even have uh, Ibn Kathir in front of me, and after mentioning a couple different uh, possibilities how it could have happened, mm. uh, he Ibn, uh, Ibn Kathir as well. He says, "Fallahu alamu ayu dalika kan." Allah oh. knows best which of these uh, possibilities was really like the case. So Ibn, K Ibn Kathir is not making a. It's not, it's not yeah, thing. you have to understand how tafsir works. You bring different opinions that are known in the tradition about a particular verse, but doesn't mean that uh, just because he's quoting something or citing something that this is the position <laughs> and that Muslims must accept it. That's not how it works. Not how it works. Okay, I didn't know that. Thank you. That's all. Are you sure you were Muslim? No, I'm not. I'm Why not? not? Why not Muslim? Well, my parents don't like me looking into other religions, but I still do it. How old are you? Um, I turned 16 a few days ago. Take care, young man. Thank you. 16. This guy's going to be fun. Mahmoud! Hey guys, how's it going? Good, man. I'm going to give you your 60 second time in one second, yeah? Sure. I'm looking. For, I'm looking forward to this one. Honestly, that's why I savored you in the backstage. I'm looking oh, forward. Thanks, to I appreciate it. Uh, hey Google, uh, sixty second timer, please. All right, one minute, starting now. Okay, so me and Hamza had initially started this conversation uh, regarding whether the Prophet could potentially be alive or not, and I brought up an example, and Hamza wanted me to explain it in the live uh, stream. So here's the example. The Jews of Medina asked three questions of the Prophet. They asked about Ruh, they asked about uh, the kids uh, in the cave, and they asked about um, the uh, one with two horns. Okay. Uh, so the Ruh is actually, um, uh, what I'm trying to prove is that these things are concepts that Jews have in the Torah. And it makes sense that they'll be asking about stuff in their own book, but it seems like the prophet misunderstood what their questions are about, which seems to be contradicting the fact that he is divinely inspired. If the prophet misunderstood the questions, it means that God misunderstood the questions. So the questions are about ruh, which is a Jewish concept, which is related to receiving visions. The second question about the kids is actually from the book of Daniel, who are the three companions of Daniel, not the children of the cave, who are from a completely different thing. They are uh, from uh, Christian writings in the second century. So they have nothing to do with Jews at all. Jews don't even believe in them at all. Um, and the third question about the one with two horns is actually also a vision from the book of Daniel which is related to a goat with two horns. And Daniel explains the vision in also his book, but somehow this was misunderstood to be referring to some king, but 
the Torah doesn't have any king that is referred to as the one with two horns. It only has one thing referred to as the one with two horns, which is the goats in the book of Daniel. Just before you answer, um, he's not a Muslim. You're not a Muslim, are you, Mahmoud? Correct. You just called the Prophet a liar. I mean, Neil, come on, man, pay attention. Anyway, <laughs> carry on. Did I, did I claim I'm a Muslim? I'm sorry? <laughs> did I claim I'm a Muslim? You got a Muslim name. Yeah, but it doesn't it doesn't mean that I'm saying I'm a Muslim. Do I have Obviously, to change you my just name? Called the a liar. How could you be a Muslim? I'm just of saying to yeah. Neil, even though he's got a Muslim name, you can hear he's talking kufr. He's not a Muslim. Of course oh. I'm not a Muslim. <laughs> I already said that. I wasn't addressing you, Mahmoud. I was addressing Neil. Oh, okay. I wasn't sure if you were addressing He's me. addressing somebody in the chat. Yeah, it, it couldn't have been obvious to me, my bad. So basically what I listened to all of your questions, there's like a lot of assumptions going on. Like one of them is like that the question was about these things that are <laughs> that you quoted from the Torah. And I think this is an assumption. How can you prove that the Jews, when they came to ask the Prophet Sallallahu that these were the things they're asking for. And then how do you know that if, if, even if they were like, subhanAllah, the Prophet ﷺ, what he sometimes does because of a wisdom, even if someone asks him about a particular thing, he gives an answer that's suited for this person. And I can give you an example. When the Prophet ﷺ was asked about when is the hour, so someone came and three people, I think they came, and there, there was a boy, and he said, when is the hour? So the Prophet ﷺ will wants to like show them, you carry about yourselves, like, and he says like, uh, when when this when this like boy becomes like old, then this is where your hour will come. So the meaning like, you have your own hour. This is where you die. This is what you have to care for. Uh, the day of judgment is not like important for you. Okay. So the Prophet ﷺ like he didn't respond directly to the question that they was asked but he gave them information that was more beneficial to them in that case so uh subhanallah like like i said it, it could be that they didn't even ask about these things because that needs to be established and i don't think you can establish you're just saying it seems and it would be logical that they ask about things but in their torah and then we have to it's written we have to yeah okay but what so, so the thing is, you say it is not the Dhul Qarnayn the Quran answered about. It is the Dhul Qarnayn that is mentioned in this and this occasion in the Bible. Exactly. So this is the this is the assumption. Wait. Okay. No, 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 no. You would imagine they would ask about something that they have in their books, wouldn't they? What would? It's not necessary. Like if they don't know not it, necessarily. What would? How would they ask about it? So they maybe not be, necessarily. No. So you're saying they could have just asked about. The one with two horns that they don't have any mention of in their books. So I I don't know exactly like when when the, this like uh, the the story about Dhulqarnain was revealed. Okay, but for example, I just give you one possibility: if mm -hmm. the Muslims already were talking about Dhulqarnain and they come and they ask, "Who is this person?" For example, okay. So it's not necessarily that it's just this one possibility. And then the other thing is like maybe they even asked about the specific thing about in their Torah, but the Prophet ﷺ wanted to educate them about this because this information was somehow more like more wise to give them this information instead. But you like understand the that Prophet they were testing the prophecy, his prophecy, right? Like all the narration about this incident was, you know, asserting that the Jews were trying to test the prophecy of the Prophet. I, so I'm there's no sure, way like, that they heard about, there's no way that they heard about that because you know, there's this some story and they were just inquiring this was actually a test no because the prophet sallam, i think like even if you look at jewish scholars like abdullah ibn salam when he he tested him and he asked him stuff about the torah mm -hmm. uh, it ended up in him becoming a muslim yeah. so yeah okay but what about Definitely, this like that what about this particular incident so like, like i said you cannot assume that like because he answered like this, like there, mm -hmm. what, I, what I'm saying, like either uh, it depends on the question, like uh, why the question was uh, asked. You cannot assume that it was directly because of this, because they're referring to this or that. But and the other thing. They only have one thing mentioned in their 
book. So what you're saying is, it could be that they're asking about something that is not in their religion at all, right? Why not? If they hear it, maybe from the Muslims, and they want more right, details about again, it. Again, it's supposed to be a test. Where, where does it say it's a test? Can you mention that too? Because all the narration about this incident was that there are. Where, where's the, where's the, where's the, let's start from the beginning. Let's start show, show, show the narration, please. Where's the narration? Yeah. I'm kind of lost. I don't know what this guy's on about. What's the narration? Let's deal with the narration first. Let's see if it's an authentic narration and we can move on from there. Yeah. What's the narration? Sure. So, um, let's see. Mm -hmm. If you look up the, uh, the tafsir of this verse uh, from any of the tafsirs, right? Yeah, we just spoke about tafsir. Or... About yeah. what verse? What verse are you even talking about? Which verse of the Quran is it? How, how do you understand the Quran without tafsir? What verse are you talking about? We are not going to search the tafsir now yes, and Aluna, looking for the uh, hadith. It's easy to just look up the... Yes, Which Aluna verse are you referring very, to? I just said it. Okay, yes, yeah, yeah. It's very easy. I mean, so I think yeah. you, you should be prepared if you actually come and ask a question about a verse and you don't even know the chapter to, and verse. That's yeah, pretty that's, silly. Wait, you want me to... Like, yeah, no, I, got right the, you got I got it right here. I got it right here. Look it up by the word, um, the verse, rather than the 1883. Number. 1883. Yeah. Is this how you guys look up the verse? Weird. Yeah. What do you mean, look up the verse? You came okay. and you didn't even know what you it was. Dude. But how? how? I, said it, I said it a million times, unless you don't know the Quran. Where's Elunak An? The Al Qarnain. I don't. If you're saying that by not having the Quran memorized, that I don't know it, then okay, I guess I don't no, know. No, it. it's just a very, very common verse. Like it's a very yes, well it verse. is. But that it's doesn't mean that I know Friday the exact yesterday. number off the top of my head. Why would you need to know the number of the verse? That is so easy. You can just Google. Because you that you text. told us to look up the tafsir. The so text. Yeah. What no, are you no, about? You just type the text in Google. The tafsir is gonna come up automatically. Anyway, so what was your question about the verse? No, your question was where is where does it say that the Yeah, and I'm asking what is question your question the, about the verse? Okay. The question is that it's talking about something that is not within the Jewish scripts. Meanwhile, the Jews were asking about something in their scripts. Is that, that is that what they said when he spoke? They don't even need to say it actually because oh, I'm, I'm, I'm bored. I'm I'll bad. tell you why. I'll tell, I'll tell you why, yeah. You, you, you're only... saying that he got it wrong when he responded, or the Quran yeah. got it wrong, or the Quran's in error. Yeah. Is that how did you because, respond to it? Because that story doesn't exist in the Torah. That three, okay, uh, that what, did the, what did the Jews say when the Prophet the Torah. answered? Hmm? As well, I want the wording of the Hadith. I want him to show us the Hadith. There is no Hadith. Yeah, that's there the is no Hadith. Okay, okay, okay. okay. Let's see. Uh, there's so many. Like I, I thought you would have seen yeah, it by well, then. There's so okay. many. You can, right, you can, right, okay. give can you just give us the hadith? Yeah. What what tafsir are you looking at? Um. Right now, I'm looking at um, tafsir Saadi. Okay. And what does it say? And before what, that, what's the hadith being quoted? The it's the tafsir of the verse, and you can look throughout the tafsir and see clearly that what it says that is ata yahudi qala ya abul qasim. Do you want What's me to read it in Arabic? It's literally in Arabic. I, I, yeah, I think he doesn't understand it. Seems like, it seems like you don't even know your own argument. You can't even come on here and present it. It's like you want us to do your homework. But this is ridiculous. Asked. Okay, okay, okay. It's right here. And you man, keep saying it's right here, but if you already are coming on the to send you, I can send the you the link. Just I can give send us you, the argument. I can send you the link. The, the, just the, give the, us the argument. The, the, I already What's did. your argument? The argument again, one more time, so you don't ask me again, okay? No, no, no. I heard what you said, and then we asked you a question. Contained. What hadith are you quoting contained. within the tafsir itself? Um, hadithani, you want me to read the hadith? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, I want to know yeah, if it's, I want to know if it's from the Prophet alayhi salatu wasalam, or I want to know mm -hmm. it's from a companion, or who mm -hmm. it's from. You can, it's tons of hadith. I'm the asking the tafsir. you, you're the one that is presenting okay, okay. it. Do you, me, do you, do you not know? Do you, me, do you I know, not I know? I see it in front of me. Okay, so then tell me. Uh, okay, I'll tell it to you in Arabic. Is, that is, okay? it, is it from the Prophet or is it from somebody else? 
it is from eyewitnesses there. You believe in eyewitnesses, right? Answer the question. Yeah, is it, does it go back from the prophet himself or mm -hmm. is it from a companion or it's somebody from else? Who's it from? That's what I'm saying. It's from a number of companions. Okay, it's from the companions, but it doesn't go back to the prophet himself, right? Let's start from the very basics. Very basics. How does this work? Broke in the Medina, I was with the let's, prophet. In the let's Medina. start from the very basics. Mm -hmm. What book of hadith is it in? It's yeah. in Tafsir al Tabari. No, no, the... Tabari. Yeah, it's the, the no, Tafsir no. al Tabari is referencing the hadith. I would have to go. Yeah, but where is the reference? Google of the and look for the hadith itself if you want. Yeah, please do that. Okay. Yeah, sure. Because Tabari is not Tafsir, like the Tafsir of Tabari is not a hadith reference. <laughs> It's a Christian princess argument, it sounds like. Okay, just a second. We just explained about Tafsir. We're not, it's not set in stone. It's nothing that we're held to. Yeah, but I understand. If you look, if you just bother yourself to I'm look not talking to you. you do do your research. research. Okay, you, no, you cannot. You cannot Hamza, this guy is really pissing me off because he's, he's telling us with if we would actually, and... we would actually yeah. go and bother and look at it. Dude, mm -hmm. you came on the stream okay. to challenge so, us. And we are not going to do your homework for you. You should come correct what with homework? your references. Explain what the argument you is. Can, and when okay, we ask you a question. share the links? No, no, no. You should be quiet. I'll give you, you 10 minutes. Come, you should come with the references so that when we ask you what the reference is, you don't say, oh, Jake and Hamza, why don't you go look for it? And then you can find the reference. No, no, no. You find it and tell us the reference. I mean, this is ridiculous. Honestly. Anyway, I'll give you 10 minutes. Go sort it out. I've kicked you out for now. Um, you're not a big time hands fan. Go on. What do you want? Oh, assalamu alaikum. How are you? Yeah. Alhamdulillah. You Muslim? No. Nope. I'd just like to put forward the idea that um, all you the are Muslim. Sorry, no, I'm not Muslim. You're not Muslim, are you? Then? No. I, I I've got very much respect for um, Islam. Just want to put that out there. Um, my thoughts are that all the Abrahamic religions, going back to ancient Sumeria, maybe even possibly before that, they were all misinterpretations of what the people were actually experiencing in those times. Now, I don't know if you guys are familiar with a, such a thing as a cargo cult. I'm not. You're not. Okay, so in the World War II, uh, there was a small island, I'm not sure where, but the Americans set up a, a runway there, and the natives of this small island saw the Americans, they laid down a, a landing strip and a, a control tower, and after the Americans left, they started to build effigies of what the Americans had placed on the island, and they believed that the Americans were actually higher beings, and... Um, they misinterpreted what they were seeing. They took them as supernatural beings rather than rather than just being uh, natural beings. Now, I'm I'm not I'm not saying that I believe that this is true. I'm not saying that I'm a, you know I'm not. I'm just putting out the idea that those people in that location in that time they were experiencing natural beings, not dissimilar from ourselves, from a planet in space. They can traverse space, they can come to Earth, they can land here, and the people, not having a frame of reference for space and space travel, they could not really understand what they were perceiving. And so, and we know that the gods and the angels, sorry, God and the angels, the angel just means messenger, I mean, and you've got the God in heaven. Why have the messengers come down? Why doesn't God? They directly give the messages. And then there are other things such as uh, the night journey, Al Barak. And uh, why would they need, why would um, Muhammad need to take a, a mode of transportation if God was all powerful and wanted to transport Muhammad to, uh, was it Mecca or Medina in one night? Then, you know. Why didn't he just transport him instantaneously instead of using Al Barak? It's just an idea. I'm just putting it out there. I'm just thinking the people back in those times had no frame of reference for space, space travel, etc. 
So it's a possibility that... Are you positing aliens? Seen... Well, of course. We Where'd they come about? from? Where'd they come from? <laughs> same, the same place that we come from, space. And where did space come from? The creator. So you believe in a creator? Yes, I believe in the Kalam Cosmological. You believe in a creator? Um, yeah. So why couldn't there be angels? Sorry? Why couldn't angels have come? Why, why does it have to be aliens? No, I'm saying that an I agree, the angels, yes. But angel, that word just means messenger, okay? So these beings were just messengers for the God. I mean, not the creator of the universe, maybe the commander of the spaceship they were bringing messages from. And they were telling us, giving us information, <laughs> teaching us about the creator through logical you know, deduction. Why are you jumping to aliens? Why aliens? Because it seems more believable to me than supernatural beings. You believe the creator is supernatural? The creator is outside of anything we know. He's outside of space, time, outside of anything we can recognize. Is he supernatural? No. That's a human term. I don't really... I mean, you, say, whoa, whoa, whoa. you can't say I don't believe in supernatural things and all of a sudden now you don't use the word supernatural. Yeah, but you okay, use the word can, supernatural. Okay, you okay if, you, if you call it... Okay, Hamza, if you're calling everything in the universe natural and everything outside of it supernatural, then fair enough, let's call it supernatural. Okay, so supernatural are things that defy the laws of physics, I would say. Well, it doesn't defy the laws of physics. Would you agree with that, Jake, or would you have a different understanding? Supernatural doesn't defy the laws of physics. It's outside of the laws of physics. It's separate from the laws of physics. Maybe yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, whatever. Fine. Whatever. Sorry? Okay, so what's, yeah, so what's, what's the point of the whole thing? I, I didn't really understand it, honestly. Are you, are you saying we should believe in aliens? Is that the point? I'm saying that I just think people should look at this as a possibility. And maybe it could even unify people if we come to the realization of what actually happened, this could be a what unifying about this? force. For what about is it the same aliens? Is it the same aliens coming to different people or different races or what? Is it the same aliens coming to different people? Well, is it is it the same aliens coming telling people different things or is it different? The message is the message of aliens. The message is always, you know, you know as well as I do, the message is always the same. Giving the message about worshiping the one creator, doing the right thing, working. Yeah, for the but then one one alien said Jesus is God, and another alien said Jesus never it was never a prophet. No, uh, no, 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 no says... none, none of the none of the aliens or supernatural beings, whatever you want to call them, they never said that Jesus was God. Jesus was a prophet, just like the others, a messenger of. The no, God. no, but the the Christians were taught by their alien that uh, Jesus died for this. I'm sin. wondering, you know, I'm just wondering why are 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 you not a Muslim? <laughs> I believe in the one true creator outside of the universe that creates universes. But I believe that you believe in the prophet I Muhammad. Believe that be I believe that God. beings, I believe that beings within the creation are able to traverse space and give the message that. Yeah, know, that's that fine. You can believe in aliens if you want. That's fine. I'm asking, do you believe in the prophet Muhammad as a true prophet of God? I would not rule that out, but I don't know about enough about Muhammad to decide one way or another but would, would he be a prophet of aliens or a prophet of god a prophet is a being with the message of the one true god yes yeah but did the aliens bring the message from god to muhammad no i don't suppose that the aliens were in communication with something that's outside of the universe i think that they logically deduced god and they brought that to us just like we have logical, just like we can use logic okay. and our how, how, intellect how, to come to the conclusion of the Kalam. It's the same thing. How did, did they transmit the message <laughs> to Muhammad? How? How did they transmit the message? Okay. Yeah. They, came down, they came down in physicality. Okay, so, so the thing is that we believe that in the Quran and, in, and even in the Hadith that it was given to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, there are things that like go beyond the laws of nature, like prophecies, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, very accurate prophecies that's going to happen, for example, or other miracles. There's even uh, miracles being reported from the Prophet ﷺ that he made like little food be enough for an army of people, 
and they've been mm-hmm. keep keep coming and eating and it's just not running out or he made um a spring of water uh, like like a, a, a little uh, thing of water like being enough for an army of people for example and uh, among the, the other miracles and then we have the inimitability of the quran that the quran cannot be imitated that it's like linguistically so strong that not even the experts of the Arabic language can imitate it. But he's so just going to say aliens had better technology. Yeah, no, he's just going to say aliens. No, but how could the... Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Like, you would need to say that aliens defied the laws of nature to be able to do that. Um, it makes no sense. Do, do, does the Quran defy the laws of nature? Or, I mean... The, no, no, the Quran uh, could, says... Could, 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 the, okay, then, okay, then could the miracles have been misinterpreted by the people that were perceiving them and it could have been some higher technology? No. Why is why no, are you why so why are you so convinced uh, and obsessed with aliens? I, I just don't understand. Have you no, encountered no, one? But to me, believing in physical. Have you encountered an alien? Different. That's a serious question. Sorry. Have you encountered an alien? No. So you haven't seen one. You haven't seen a UFO. Nothing like that. Have you encountered an angel or a god? No, that's, no, 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 no. I, I'm just asking you a genuine question. <laughs> okay, okay. Sorry, no, no, I haven't. Can okay. I ask you a question? Do Do you indulge in drugs? Sorry. Do you indulge in drugs? Uh, uh, yes. Well, he has mushrooms in his picture. Does that Does that discount? <laughs> does that Does that does, does that discount everything that I say, Hamza? Because I've done that. Uh, it, it's just mashing up your mind. Can you back that up, please, Hamza? You're saying it's mashing up my mind. Can you explain how, please? Yeah, because you're talking absolute gibberish. Well, you keep saying that, but explain yourself. Why is it gibberish? Okay, because you say this is what you're basically telling us. God created you, aliens. Right God created aliens, and God created us. And God didn't do any give us any advice or any guidance. These aliens took it upon themselves to come and try to offer us guidance. That's what you're saying. Okay, Hamza, if you can just, yeah. Is, is, is that a nonsense? Can, yes. But can you imagine, okay, just let's do a little bit of imagination exercise, okay? Imagine our own species, maybe another 500 years into the future. We've got better at space travel. We can go to another star system, let's say. What would we do if we arrived at a different star system, a different planet, and on that planet there was it was able to support life, possibly have life on it? What would we do when we got there? Me or you? Me or you? Me or you? It's a. I'm not saying us personally, Hamza. I'm talking about a hypothetical situation. I'm talking about our species. Me or you? Let's imagine I'm alive in 500 years' time, and I'm on one of these spaceships going to another star system, and I encounter an alien race. You ask what I would do or what you would do. What would I do? No, yeah, no, because you're asking what would you what would what would you do? You said so. I'll give you an example. If I went to an alien uh, society five hundred years in the future, and I encountered them, I'd speak to them about a creator. Speak to them about Allah. Do they know? Have they heard? Yeah, so you'd be like an alien giving dawah, would you? Yeah, but my information is coming from Allah. <laughs> You, you're, 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 not, you're not saying that, you see. If I remember correctly, your your argument is the aliens work stuff out for themselves. Well, just like humans do, yeah. I mean, who can well, no, we, we, well, we don't work things out for ourselves. We can't work things out for ourselves. We can't know the nature of the creator and the purpose of our creation by ourselves. We just can't do it. We can't know what's good for us and bad for us by ourselves, objectively. Who came up with the Kalam cosmological argument, for example? Who came up with that? Why does that matter? Yeah. Well, you're saying that we can't arrive at this knowledge. I have a question. I don't have a problem problem with knowing that God exists. That's not that's not the point. I'm pretty sure Muslim came up with the Kalam cosmological argument. To be honest. Yeah, but yeah, what's the point? I think a Muslim came up with the Kalam cosmological argument. Yeah, okay, but still, that's him using, so his, what? That's him using his intellect. <laughs> what, to arrive what's at your conclusion. point, though? No, yeah, his intellect, we get that, we get that. But the point is this, there comes a point where there's things we can't know about without revelation. You know, you're denying yeah. revelation. You're saying the revelation we've received is from aliens who don't know themselves, they're just guessing. That's what you're saying. 
Now, you can't support any of that, uh, and I would say Brad must be paying a part with it. Let, let me let me ask you. Let me ask this. This is a serious question. Did you have this idea before or after you started using drugs? I started reading the Bible at about age eleven, and I started reading certain stories about um, the Jews being led through the desert. And it occurred to me, with at age eleven, reading the Bible, that this could be some kind of interaction with a higher race of beings. So it's from a very, very young age that I've been, I've been Buddhist for ten years. I've studied Christianity a little bit. I've studied Islam a little bit. I've been around the houses, and I'm still not come to a conclusion. I mean. I love the Kalam cosmological argument. I was an atheist for a long time until I listened to Kalam. And it's for me, that's undeniable logic. Okay, that's so good. I'm now left in this position where I can agree with the Kalam. Uh, <laughs> I know Hans are like to sit back and laugh at everybody who's got a different opinion. Which is no, no, no. He's laughing at a comment. He's laughing, laughing at, at a comment from the chat. That one. That one. <laughs> so, so. It's, you know, it's very belittling because uh, just because I've speed, he thinks that everything that comes out of my mouth is irrelevant. It's it's quite disrespectful. No, he's he wasn't laughing at you. He's laughing at the comment, dude. No, but he well, he has been. <laughs> it's quite annoying. Well, I mean, let's be honest. You, you're coming on here with a picture of mushrooms. You're talking about this fantastic story about aliens and you know, them communicating, all this kind of stuff, it just, it's going to Sounds like a bizarre. potted night, honestly. Yeah. You know, it, it, night. To be quite yeah, honest, it seems like you... I wonder how it all happens. It seems like, like, you, it seems like, like you've so come to the party, you brought mushrooms, you, you've taken the mushrooms for yourself, okay. and we're all sitting here and we're not on the shrooms. That, that's... It's basically what it's well, happening. You, you, all, all you lot do is like, well, if I put forward an idea, you just talk about drugs. I'm not talking about drugs. I'm talking about aliens and religion. You're talking about drugs, not me. But we talk about drugs because we think that's fueling your mind. But you well, you're not giving me. us one good reason to accept these ideas, or why you I'm even yourself accept, accept them. I'm just ideas. asking you to explore the idea and try and try and refute it, put it down completely, say it could never. It, it's not possible. Can you say it's not possible that what I'm saying is correct? Yeah, it's not possible. It's not. Why is, why is we it not cannot possible? say that it's. Wait, we we cannot say it's not possible that aliens existed. God created other creatures. Okay. Can you say it's not possible that people the is, misinterpreted what they were experiencing? What do you mean, like in in terms of the miracles that Islam came with? No, it's not possible that it was. Well, what about what about what about back in the Old Testament then, when? Uh, wasn't it Abraham going up the mountain to get the Ten Commandments? Or was that Moses? Moses. So I, 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 I won't. Uh, I will not agree that. Uh, like I will agree with Hamza. It's not possible that the miracles of the prophets are uh, able to. Like someone is able to imitate them by any technology or anything. Okay. Look, and look, I'm saying the point, that, the people, the the point I don't get. That wrote down the miracles uh, misinterpreted what they were seeing. But this is a disconnect. You said the aliens didn't get revelation from God. So God hasn't done anything in all of this. God You're asking me to accept. You're asking me to accept God created everything and just left it like an absent father. I can't not buy even, that. Not, 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 not even that, Hamza. Even a step further. God created everything and then he gave us everything for uh, provide for our needs. So we have hunger, we have food, we have thirst, we have water. We have uh, animals on the earth. We have different plants. We have different, like, everything, like, we need to survive and prosper as, a, like, beings, living beings, we have, okay? And then God created, not only created us with the instinct or something like animals, he created human differently. He created human in a way that he's thirsty for meaning. He wants meaning in his life. He's looking for a purpose. Why, why am I here? Where am I going? <laughs> Everyone, even atheists, ask themselves this question, but then God left the human being out in the dark without answers to this thirst that he created in the human being in the first place. Doesn't make any sense. Hmm. So why, why did God create us uh, as beings that look for me, meaning and look for... Like, we have all these things that are satisfied, all these uh, things we want, like hunger and thirst and other things, 
But then we have this thirst for meaning and truth and valuing truth. And God created that in us, but uh, he didn't provide anything to satisfy it, like he's provided for all the other uh, things. It's, it's highly not reasonable. I'm not, sure, I'm not sure that God put those things in us, that questioning nature in us. God could just create universes and then, yeah, yeah. deistic styles, okay, let so, it roll. Yeah, so, so why, okay, so why aren't we like, like the animals are not like uh, turning a certain age and then they're thinking, what, 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 what do I want my role in this world to be? And discussing philosophy and stuff. They're just following a pattern until they die. And it's maybe, maybe we're able to divine our purpose through <laughs> the natural state of things. And we don't need a direct communication of our purpose. We can deduce, deduce well, it. All I'm here is if, buts, maybes, what ifs. It doesn't work. Means nothing. You got no I'm guidance just, in your I'm life. Just, I'm just proposing an idea. I'm not. Yeah, I'm not no, but did, did the aliens say taking drugs was a good or bad thing? Oh man, Hamza, you really stuck up on this drugs thing, man. <laughs> yeah, did they I, I the this thing? conversation because because you just look down at you whatever you're doing at the table and then you pop your head up every five minutes saying drugs, drugs, and you got nothing else to say. And I was going to leave this conversation because I thought it'd be more. You know, try, try to you. rather than just insulting by saying because here's the thing you see, you, you believe God created us and gave us no guidance. I don't buy that. I know you don't buy it, but this is the discussion, yeah. And I, I don't believe God would do that with no purpose. I don't believe God would create human beings and all of this creation for, for a joke for no reason. Well, okay, then, Hans, it may, maybe as human beings, we're not at the intellectual level to understand our purpose, and that's just well, so that's why we need revelation. Way. No, it doesn't. Maybe it doesn't. We need to be drugs. more involved. Maybe we need well, to be well, here's, more a, here's the difference between me and thee. As a Muslim, I avoid all the poisons in society. You're susceptible to them, so I win. Okay, Hamza, I think uh, I think I might as well say good night. And uh, thank you for the conversation. You're welcome. Because obviously, all you can do is look, just say drugs all night. So we'll leave it. it there. No, we didn't. We didn't say just that, and even. Uh, no, None of us I made a very simple statement. I can't, I can't really have a proper conversation when Hamza's sitting there because he's quite he's, he's belittling and insulting. So I'm going to leave it there. Just, just take it with humor, bro. Facts don't really care yeah, about it's humor. Not, it's, it would be. I would take it with is, humor. Is, is that not a fact really what I just said to you? Is that not a fact what I just said to you? I'm protected from all the poisons in society. Let me ask you a question. Can I, can I ask you a question, please, Hamza? Yeah, go on. Have you, have you ever had a drink? Yes. Oh, God, I'm not talking to you. You're a drunk. What? I'm not talking to you. You're a drunk. What <laughs> talk about? I haven't had a drink for 24 years. When's the last when time you did drugs? When, when was the last time I did Well, that's the question, is it? When was the last time I did When's drugs? When's the last time you did drugs? Six years ago. Six years ago? Yep. That's all right. Cleaning up. Alhamdulillah. Rehab. When's the last time you had a drink? I don't drink at all. Oh, beautiful. When's the last time you gambled? I don't gamble at all. Alhamdulillah, man. You make a fantastic Muslim. Just get rid of the aliens. Well, I'm, well that's, that's, <laughs> that's, why I'm, that's why I'm talking to you today, because I'm on the path. So, so just become a Muslim and stop the nonsense, man. Get well, on with your life. To be a, in, in order to be a Muslim, you have to believe in the one true God in heaven and that Muhammad was the final prophet. And I don't, yeah, know, enough, so. I don't know enough about Muhammad to make that conclusion. Okay, let, let me give him an argument. Let me give him an argument. So, See, the only problem, one second, one second, the only problem you're going to have is when you try to convince that although an angel came to speak to the prophet saying, oh, it's an alien. I mean, how, how are you going to count that? You're an alien. No, 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 me. because this one, I, I don't think the alien thing can, can so, solve this, okay? So I told you before that we believe that the Quran is, no one can imitate it, okay? No one can bring even a chapter like it, okay? And uh, the Quran, when it was sent down, it was sent down to a time where, like, the Arabs, the strongest thing they knew was their language, okay? Uh, their poets used to carry their history. You can even read from Western source sources, like, how important, like, a poetry was with the Arabs. Like, they used it for everything, to, uh, to <clears throat> make their men courageous for wars, to go to battles and stuff, to... Uh, talk good about their leaders and stuff. So they didn't know much. They didn't know much sciences and stuff. They were a illiterate uh, community, but what they knew was their language and sense of mm -hmm. orally. They were very strong, okay? So the Quran comes and challenges them with that, okay? 
Okay. And it, it may be difficult to bring something uh, for, for the first time, but the, the thing is not this. After the Quran brings it, he, he challenges them with uh, 10, 10 uh, I think it was 10 chapters, and then it comes back to only one chapter. So if they can just make one chapter like the Quran, then mm -hmm. Islam is wrong, okay? And no one can, you cannot fool anyone, okay? Because it, this is a society that values their language. So you cannot just come like, I made a verse like the Quran or I made a chapter like the Quran and you can just fool the people because people will find out not everyone is an expert in language, but the experts are everywhere. Mm -hmm. So explain me like aliens are not an explanation. Explain me how until this day, no one could meet up this challenge. Okay. And I will tell you why it couldn't be aliens. Okay. And, well, what, what pops and into let my me head. finish. Let, let me finish. Let me finish. That after the Quran was like even completed that, even until today, no one can even reconstruct something like it, like taking the formula that he reads in the Quran and then construct something like it, and mm -hmm. that it was never even, a, a serious attempt was never even recorded in history, although things were recorded like going to war against Muslims, torturing Muslims, going to war and losing your armies and armies of people against Muslims, and taking all these casualties, if, if it was so easy to just make a scripture like the Quran, why did they went for the hard, hard way and failed so hardly? Okay, so what, what did you think about that? Um, maybe you could compare it to something like, say you've got ancient Egyptian hieroglyphs, okay, and then you've got modern English, right? You can't express in ancient hieroglyphs what you can express with modern English, okay? I know um, that... We're the talking Quran about the same language. Arabic and it's a, and I know, yes, I know it's in Arabic and it's from the local people, but suppose, going along with my <laughs> hypothesis, that you're a higher intelligent race, is it not conceivable that this higher race can order your language to... Yeah. Make it out of Let your own reach. Maybe okay. not necessarily God doing that, but the higher being rearranging your language into a more untouchable. This could language. be the case in the first place of bringing this book forward, bringing a, using all this higher technology to bringing forward a book that no one ever has brought before. But after it is out and everyone can, everyone can take it and can examine it, then it should be possible for people to reconstruct what they're seeing. And mm -hmm. 1,400 years have passed and they couldn't even do that. So I'm not saying like, why couldn't they bring before the Quran came something like the Quran? I'm not saying that because it is always possible if you have a higher technology or someone who is like more intelligent or something to bring an, an invention, even in medicine and every field, okay? But after this thing is out and it can be examined and taken apart, it should be reconstructable if it's naturally possible. But with the Quran, this is I not the case. I hear you. Um, I've heard Mansour talk about um, the way the Quran's constructed, like building a house where none of the bricks are touching each other. Hmm. There's even the ring structure in the Quran, and, and these are just like <coughs> and, and you know, you know, the scholars of, of the Quran, like um, there is the scholar I, I really love him, Muhammad Darraz. He he wrote a, a very beautiful book and he talks about. Like if, if when you listen to the Quran, a lot of people think, yeah, it, it sounds beautiful, but only this this beautiful sounding of the Quran that like attaches so people. He just calls it the outer layer, so he just calls it like the crust, like something. Okay, so <laughs> and there is like layers, and the deeper you go into the language, the more miraculous it gets. You have the ring structure, and then you have the ring structure is something like completely different, and then you have the the rhetoric. So, so, so the rhetoric, it's like what's most miraculous. And, and then in rhetoric, you have, it's divided in two different categories. It's nothing like arbitrary. It's not like it just sounds nice or it's just like mm -hmm. the sentence sounds nice or something. But there is actually a perfect way of saying something in the Arabic language if you want to, uh, depending on the audience, depending on what you want to say, depending on what you want to put emphasis on, there is always a perfect way of doing this. And the Quran gets it in every single verse subhanallah, in the perfect way and not only that that in a way that you cannot even imitate it and like i say it's not like arbitrary it's like based upon rules and 
And I really think if you if you if you would busy yourself with that, and instead of making hypotheses about aliens and stuff, you would see like even if there would be aliens, this couldn't be work of anything natural. Because that's the point of a miracle, right? If God gives mm-hmm. us a miracle, he wants to prove that look, there is no natural explanation to this. This only can could have come from me. So take this, this serious and follow this message. So this this is where you should go, inshallah. I found this is one of the hurdles for me because uh, I just really wish I could understand and speak and read Arabic so I could, no, <laughs> so I could actually appreciate There's no need. There's no need. I, I'm going to tell you something. I'm going to tell you something. Yeah. Let's, say, let's say you take a course in Arabic now and you can, you can travel all Arabic countries. Like you take six months a course and you can speak with them. You can understand them. Would you, do you think that you would be able then to, to see the miracle of the Quran for yourself? I assume that you will be able to see it, or else other people no, wouldn't be talking about you won't. it. You won't. And even so I, I, even I, cannot determine the miracle of the Quran by myself. And let me tell you why this is not important. So how is because it recognizable that it can't be recreated? I, I will tell you. Know? Yeah, that's that's why okay, that's why I'm going to answer right now. So the thing is, for me being able to determine the miracle of the Quran, I not it, it's not sufficient that I just speak Arabic, but my Arabic needs to be maximum. Like, I, I need to know the limits of the Arabic language so I can say this Quran goes over the limits, okay? okay? But my Arabic is not at that stage. So I have to rely on the people where, if I see the experts fail, if I see, like, the experts fail, at they, they're, the experts are saying, we cannot we cannot produce anything like it. Like, we, we would rather, rather go to war, we would rather, like, take casualties and everything, but we cannot bring a chapter of the Quran that's like three verses. The channel challenge has never met. So this is where, where I can recognize, okay, this is really something miraculous because the experts of this field have um, have like uh, said it so. And I can give you an, an example so you can understand it better. Just, Imagine, just, a, just a moment, just a moment. Yeah. Um, just a moment, Erfan. Mm-hmm. Uh, so if uh, the general the general person's Arabic is not good enough and they have to go to the experts that they have faith in because you can only go off what the experts are saying. So if, what if those experts are incorrect and you have to believe what they say? No, we know like, like from the non-Muslim experts from the time of the Prophet until now, we know that they have a strong will to oppose the Quran, okay? Yeah. And we know that if they would be capable of bringing a, a chapter like the Quran, it will be very less expensive and hurtful for them than doing all the things that they're doing. Mm-hmm. Okay, so so it is in their benefit. So why wouldn't they do it? It just ju- it just shows incapability. Because if you have mm-hmm. the will to do something and you have the ability to do something, alas, then you can you should you should do it. But it, it, it makes no sense. And the example I wanted to, like, um, to show you, um, imagine, imagine someone is lying like on the ground. Someone, so people are claiming he is dead, okay? Mm-hmm. And uh, someone, someone is like uh, going and doing some stuff to him, and then he starts and he's alive. So, so to, to everyone was seeing like, he, he was looking like as if he was dead. And then this guy, like, he said, like, I brought him back to life. I made a miracle. Believe in me. So you mm-hmm. couldn't determine if this guy really brought a dead person to life or if he just knew a certain medical trick or something and this person wasn't actually dead. Uh, right. For example, I heard of a certain poison that makes your heart beat very slowly so you can't even determine that the person is breathing or not. And then you mm-hmm. can give him the antidote and he's, he, he gets up. So you as a person who has no medical experience, you cannot determine that. But if I bring you 10 of the best doctors around the world and I give them a, a motive that they should find out like I give them an, an, an premier like big money if they find out like what is the mystery behind this but all of these 10 doctors are saying there is no naturalistic explanation they examine it they take it they try to reconstruct the method or they say there is no naturalistic explanation this this guy really brought him back from death then, of course, you will accept that. You won't say, like, no, I won't accept that. Maybe all of the 10 best doctors of the world got it wrong. And we are talking about 1,400 years of experts not even being able to try imitate the Quran. And yeah, that's it's a, not even that's comparable. A good, yeah. 
That's a good point. I've got no I'm sorry about, uh, to the other brothers if I've been waffling so much. <laughs> Maybe all the other no, brothers no, no, no. It's, good, it's, good, it's, good, it's good medicine. Alhamdulillah. Uh, no hard feelings, Hamza, as well. But, uh... No. <laughs> Hamza has a big heart, so don't worry. Uh, and you're yeah. and you're a big fan of you're a big fan of Hamza, so how could he be upset? I don't know, Hamza. You, you do seem a little bit angry sometimes. <laughs> I'm always I, smiling. I think you're in, interpreting, misinterpreting it. I'm always, I'm always smiling. People can say to me, "I'm angry," but I'm always smiling. I, I don't. I don't. I can't. You yeah, seemed but... angry today. You were angry today, not me. No, I'm not angry at all. I just, I just like you, to talk you, about you, you, you were losing it. You were triggered, man. Sorry? You were triggered. You were more angry than me. I was angry when you started banging on about drugs. Like that's the I, that I, I didn't get angry about anything you said. I just found it humorous. Okay, then. I, I did take a bit of personal offence when you just started banging on about drugs. Look, if you said okay. to me, oh, uh, yeah, I've done drugs, but I haven't had anything for six years... I would have well, as soon as I said, as as I said well, you acted like you've got drugs, a... you're like, oh, I don't know what he says then. <laughs> it's like, he's done, he's done it's drugs. It's good, it's good. Uh, do you, do you accept it. psychedelic drugs can mess with your mind or not? Well, of course, that's why people take them. <laughs> right, and then no, but they can have a permanent effect on your mind. I'm sure they can. Because I'm telling you, right, I did magic mushrooms, I don't know, 30 years ago. I swear sometimes I, I can actually still... If I close my eyes, yeah, I can I can still see what I saw when I was on Magic Mushrooms. I swear, I had like this thing where only the oldies in the group, only Generation X will know this, right? There used to be a cartoon called The Get Along Game, and when I was on Magic Mushrooms and I was looking out my window, it's like my my house was flying, yeah, and and the the the, uh, the Get Along Gang were like, <laughs> and and sometimes I, I can actually re experience it just by thinking about it. They're not good for you, bro. The drugs are not good for you. I'm having it like, and and it can mess with you because I've been there with that split, and you're you're trying to understand the universe, and you're coming up with all mad mad explanations. I'm not trying to understand the universe. I'm trying to understand. No, the no, what kind of? What, what do you, you think generally? Do, I'll tell you what you need to do. You need to take Occam's razor to all to your system, and you'll well, realize well, that you're. Well, if you're using Occam's razor. Um, Beings from another physical world thing. within our within space is more believable to me than uh, no. supernatural beings. Well, with says, look, if you said you don't believe in God and you believe aliens is effectively God, it's a different argument. But you said you believe in God, and God didn't send us any guidance, and these aliens who didn't get any guidance either, they work maybe stuff the alien, out. Maybe the, alien, maybe the aliens are the guidance. Okay, no, let, no. let me ask you a question. A question. No, but you said they didn't get any guidance from God. You see. So you said they, they worked it out. <laughs> I didn't say so what you said. This is your argument. Idea, right? And then you said these aliens work stuff out for themselves. They came well, down yeah, to sure. Earth to try to educate us upon their hypotheses. That's what, that's what, rather than it's saying like, gods and angels and guided it's us. Like, it's, like, it's like aliens giving dower. That's pretty much it. Aliens can give dower, but the source has to be God. We cannot arrive at God as a conclusion using your reason and intellect no. can you can you can arrive at god but not the details for yeah. everything that we're talking about with respect to the quran how to pray how to make hajj all these th things that muslims do. Do. I mean, the nature of god the purpose of our creation and all of this stuff it can only be known through revelation could that not I mean, just be the aliens teaching us lower beings how to live better and giving us an instruction book basically we're not interested in any alien or oh, anyone else telling aliens. us instructing us what to do with our lives unless the original source is from the creator. Brandon. Now, if you're saying God contacted the aliens to come to us, that's you're a still different story. Yeah. Why would he do that? <laughs> I can't really hear if God can go to the aliens, it, the he can the, to us. The, anyway, anyway, we're done. Have a lovely evening, sir. It was a great conversation. Thank you, guys. Think Thank about you. the argument about the Quran and and explain, uh, explore more about it. Yeah, I'll tell you a good book to read. There's a good book, I can't think of his name, though, by uh, Raymond Farron. Oh, can and, I ask you he... one question? No, no, I'm, I'm telling you something here. Have you got a pen and paper? Raymond I'm, Farron. I'm sitting, I'm sitting in the dark with no pen and no paper. All right. What, did, what name did I just say? Sorry? What name did I just say? I can't hear your microphone, it keeps breaking up.
Shut up, I'm not breaking up at all. <laughs> Raymond. It is at my end. <laughs> Raymond. All right, I'll, make, I'll tell you how to remember it, yeah? Remember the, the program, Everybody Loves Raymond? Yes. Right, so there's Raymond. And Farron, just think of, remember like Farrah trousers? Farrah, yes, okay. Yeah, so Raymond Farrah, but it's not Raymond Farrah, it's Raymond Farron. Yeah? Farron, I, I, I tell you what, my, my original name is Darren. So it's 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 uh, Raymond, Raymond Darren. I've got, 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 got it, Hamza, I've got it, Hamza, Raymond, yeah, got it. Raymond what? Raymond Farron, yes. Yeah, that's it, that's it. Read his book. Because he was a guy who was into Arabic poetry and stuff, non-Muslim. When he started reading the Quran, he became a Muslim. And he wrote a book about it. I think I'm, right, not, very far, I think I'm not very far off being a Muslim. I just need to convince all Muslims that it was alien. <laughs> Being an Abu Dhabi. Take care. Okay. Good night, fellas. Good night. <laughs> that was interesting, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Well, like I, I think, mashallah, I mean, he is. Well, I mean, yeah. you're still only been on drugs, or you didn't, you know, Sh Shaitan is playing his strong game on him, man. No, what are you saying? Like, you, you, look, it's says you take drugs. Yeah, I did six years ago, but I'm clean now. And that would that would kill the drugs conversation. Yeah, that would have been normal. Yeah, you know, yeah like yeah. just starting a flipping crack house. Uh, yeah, yeah, sorry, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? <laughs> anyway, oh, uh, ultimate truth seeker. Uh, this is like. I, I I have to. I'm pretty sure I have to. Gonna have to change this guy's name in a minute. Go on, mate. Oh, one second, one second, one second, one second. Hey, Google. One minute, please. All right, one minute. Hello, can you hear Starting me? now. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hello. Is yeah, this a on, show on, stream to challenge Islam? Yes. Go on. Okay, are you sure it's a challenging Islam, not Christianity, Hinduism, Buddhism, or any otherism? Yeah, we're not Christians, we're Muslims. Okay, but is it to challenge Islam, not not Hinduism, Buddhism, or any otherism? The question should be regarding Islam, yes? Either that or putting forward your own position. I feel like I just want to okay. kick him. <laughs> by the way, <laughs> challenge, challenge is to ask the question, not answer questions. Just as the Quran poses a challenge. Right, right, well, just, just do me a favor. Just do me a favor, right? All right I'm going to give you the minutes again. Where's right. the alarm for? Right. You've got one minute to make your case. Hey, Google. There. One second. Oh, oh, shut up. Hey, Google. One minute, please. Okay. You would agree 10 challenges is separate to one. If I was to say to Hamza, show me one minor miracle, Karamat, then I'll believe you and you manage to, through the help of Allah, exhibit a minor miracle. It is different from them saying, show me 10 more Karamat. So why does the Quran state as end of its authenticity in Surah 223? And if you're in doubt about what we have sent down upon our servant Muhammad, then produce a surah like thereof and call upon your witnesses, other than Allah, if you'd be truthful. I can read this in the Arabic for a time of brevity. Similarly, Quran 1038, and then it says 10 chapters. So, so bringing one surah is separate from uh, bringing 10, 10 surahs like it. But the important point is, who will judge it? If I was to bring you the 113th chapter of the Quran, for example, if I was to say, this is the 130th ch uh, chapter of the Quran. Ya ayyuhallazina amanu. Wa akul ya, ya ayyuhannas. La ilaha illa Muhammad Rasulullah wa inna ma dinu l-Islam in Allah. Who is to judge that as not being from Allah? That from a Muslim standpoint should be a perfect verse that encompasses Islam's main central monotheism. Who will judge it on the, uh, the grammarians, the Arab Arabic speakers, who only make a small proportion of the earth, of the planet earth, that is exhibited throughout history? Who? Will, what kind of test is this? You have to be very good in Arabic. So if that is the test from Allah for its authenticity and you have been banging on for centuries against it because the Quran is the word of the batting word of Allah, God, not the inspired holy word as the Bible is for some men, who is to judge its authenticity? Answer, that is a challenge. Not with questions now. You answer that question. You need to bring your best scholars on to answer that. I'm just going to say no. <laughs> <laughs> it's, just oh ridiculous, isn't it? it's just ridiculous oh. <laughs> the dude hello can you hear me yeah i can hear you we can hear you hi everyone hi. Hi. hey google 60 second timer please okay one minute starting now okay so i have recently been reading sahih al-bukhari and 
the reference I will give is Sahi Al Bukhari two nine seven eight, book fifty six hadith one eight seven. It was narrated by Ibn Abbas. Abu Sufyan said to Heraclius sent for me when I was in Ilya, Jerusalem, etc., etc., etc. When we turned out, I said to my companions, so this is Abu Sufyan speaking, the cause of Ibn Abi Kabsha has become conspicuous as the king of Bani al Asfar, which is the Byzantine uh, emperor, is afraid of him. My question is, why is Abu Sufyan using a derogatory term for Muhammad? Why doesn't it just state the cause of Muhammad has become conspicuous? Why does Abu Sufyan use that term for Muhammad? There is a lot of uh, narr narrations where Abu Sufyan wasn't a Muslim and he he was trying to like finish the, <coughs> the message of the Prophet Sallallahu and then he became Muf Muslim after uh, actually the, the conquest of Mecca. So pretty mm -hmm. late, you could say. So it, if, it seems that it's from then, I don't does know. Does that make sense? No, but it doesn't make sense to me, Irfan, because this supposed event happened um, like after the fact that Medina and Mecca had been, you know, won and over by it. What's the, what's, 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 well, let, let, let's, let's cut this. Where is the hadith? Uh, can we get the number of the hadith? Yes, yeah. um, so it is... Because, yeah. I have it okay, up on my screen. One second. Well, uh, because I remember a situation where Abu Sufyan was with uh, the, the Roman emperor yes. when the prophet sent the message yeah. to the Roman yeah. emperor yes. and yes. Abu Sufyan was there as a non-Muslim. And he even said when the Roman emperor was interrogating the messenger of the prophet... Her Muslim, Heracles was asking remember? him questions. Yeah, Heracles. Yeah. Abu yes. Sufyan said, I wish I could put a lie in there to, to defame the prophet sallallahu And this was before he was a Muslim. Anyway, go on. What, what's the point? What's your point, the dude? I just wanted to know. Okay, so well, what's, the what's, the what's, the, what's the hadith? Oh, um, Sahih al Bukhari 7. Just the number. Uh, hadith 7. I apologize. I'm just trying. To... I'm on yes. sunnah.com. Um, mm -hmm. uh, book 1, Hadith 7. Hamza, can you post the link in the Sorry. lobby and sunnah.com and then we have it? Is it Hadith 7? Yeah, Hadith 7. Seven. What number? Hadith number seven. Why seven? What, what number? I have to admit, I'm pretty poor at trying to find the exact well, reference. Well, bro, well, well, if you're on, if you're on Sunnah.com, it should it should tell you the Hadith number, right? Yeah. And there's the thing, the dude. There's no way you've just come across this. You've been scouring anti-Islamic sites trying to find arguments against Islam. We both know that, yeah. No, I've been actually trying to understand. You've not read Sir Bukhari, so please don't don't blag me. You've not. In order to understand the Quran, you have to have hadiths. You've not been reading Sahih Bukhari. We both know that, so no one believes you. So stop, just drop that pretense. We know you think you found an argument against Islam. Can you, you put the link the into the lobby the so we can? Yeah, yeah. The so just right. give us the just give us the reference, man. We're not stupid. Yeah. In the, I'll put it in the private chat. <clears throat> Can you see it? Yeah. It's is, it a, it's two, is it Sahih Bukhari two nine seven eight? It's uh, but Hamza, it's the hadith that I was mentioning. It's I know it before is before Abu Sufyan was Muslim. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So just to confirm, the, Abu Sufyan wow, at the time that wasn't one, a Muslim. That was that ended pretty quickly. So 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 let me let me explain very quick the context so you know. So yeah, yeah. so basically, Abu Sufyan was a non-Muslim. He was a leader actually of the Quraysh who were opposing the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him, and the Prophet peace and blessings be upon him sent a messenger to like uh, convey the message to Heraclius, the leader mm -hmm. of the like this Roman leader. So when he wants to talk to Heraclius about the Prophet, peace and blessings be upon him. It happened that Abu Sufyan was there as well, okay? So when 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 the messenger starts talking, Heraclius says, is there anyone from his people? <coughs> people were here. And then they said, yes, Abu Sufyan. And Abu Sufyan was a non-Muslim at that time. So they brought him 
and they like he kind of asked Abu Sufyan questions. So, shall I read the story? Sorry to interrupt you. Shall I just read the story so you can hear it? Sorry, it's, it's pretty long. I'm, I'm listening. I mean, yeah, I I mean, if, you have, if you have the just time, the then... just to set the scene. You ready, dude? Yeah. yeah. Sorry to interrupt you, that fan. So, okay. So at the time, the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had migrated to Medina, and many people were entering the folds of Islam. I'll go to the bathroom very quick. I apologize. Heracles was the emperor of the Byzantine or Eastern Roman Empire. Heracles heard of the prophet from Arabia and he wanted to collect more information about this prophet. At the time, Abu Sufyan was still not Muslim. Abu Sufyan's name was Sahid bin Ahar. He was a prominent leader of the Quraysh in Mecca. Abu Sufyan was a powerful, influential, wealthy, and he led business caravans of trade between Mecca and the area of Syria and Palestine. Mm -hmm. On one such business trip, Heracles invited Abu Sufyan and his companions and asked him about the prophet Muhammad Sasa. The complete dialogue between Heracles and Abu Sufyan has been recorded in the authentic book of Hadith Sahih Bukhari which is a collection of the sayings of the Prophet Muhammad says. So the hadith you're referring to was a time when Abu Sufyan wasn't a Muslim. Okay? But it says in my reference in front of me, Abu Sufyan added, by Allah, had I not been afraid of my... Yeah, Allah, it's not, it's not a big deal. But that means he's a Muslim. No, no Allah, Allah, they, the Mushrikeen believed in Allah. You know, Allah existed before Islam, yeah? Uh, yes. Right. Yeah, the pagans believed in Allah. So by Allah, had I not been afraid of my companions labeling me a liar, I would not have spoken the truth about the prophet. So he he calls him the prophet. Um, just, this oh, is just this is just before the Heraclius asked the questions. Was he? Oh, okay. Man, was this, he a king? Was he? A this, dude, listen honestly. Are you are you willing to actually listen to what we're saying? Repeat again what you what you were saying. No, no, because no, it seems no, like, it I'm, seems not going like to, I'm not going to. Oh. It seems like, like he's just it's, 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 it's beginning to do my nothing. <laughs> Look, it's very, very simple. We're telling you you're incorrect. The hadith isn't to do with the Prophet, uh, sorry, Abu Sufyan as a Muslim. He's a non-Muslim. Halas, what's the big deal? Just say, oh, fair, if that makes sense then. Can you just be yeah. sincere? Can you just say, oh, yeah. fair enough, I've misunderstood this. Oh, I got it wrong. Okay, fair enough. I'll go try another rubbish argument to try to bring to you. Honestly, it's getting embarrassing. Killer. This is big. Hey, this will be are. nice. He's, he's not a bad killer. Killer. <laughs> Thanks for the praise. I've not even said anything yet. We spoke earlier, mate. Um, <laughs> one did. second. Uh, hey, Google. 60 seconds, please. We ready? Are we waiting for Google? Okay, one minute. Starting now. Okay, perfect. Um, so, um, my argument uh, earlier or yesterday um, was basically around uh, the morality. Now, we know, or I don't know, we know, but Muslims say that uh, the Prophet Muhammad, he's like the best example. Everything he did was through God or the angel, uh, you know, his deeds were all good, etc. Things like that. And so my <coughs> argument would be, um, is if that was the best, why did society move away and change um, to a point that we see later liberal values being adopted rather than sticking to that society? If that was the best of the best, you know, we reached the peak. And that's the argument. Um, I didn't. Was was the question about why Muslims are doing this, or why society in general? Um, well, even that society. I mean, even if we look around, um, the companions uh, that were uh, with the Prophet, right? Um, as soon as he passed away, or etc. Um, that society that he had built moved away from how it was conducted. For example, like slavery, right? Slavery isn't still used, is it? Um, or permissible. Let, 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 let's go back to what you're saying. You're cool. saying that as soon as the Prophet والسلام, died, that they immediately moved away from his values. Is that your claim? Not immediately. Um, but so when did it happen? Changed. When did what happen? Outlawing slavery. When did they do what you did? When you said shortly after, didn't you? Uh, no, no, over past. So I'm talking about society. Obviously, it, it evolved as far as I can see. It's more, it's yeah, but you mentioned the evolved. companions, though, didn't you? 
Yeah. Okay, so the companions, right? So they they met the prophet himself. Yep. So it was, yep. had to be a short time. We're not talking like hundreds of years later. Right. So let's say they build a society and they give a set of values and rules. Are they going to be as close as possible to the best, which was Muhammad? Yes. Okay. At their time, slavery was still allowed. Why then was it moved away? Would you argue it shouldn't have been taken out then? What are you talking about? Okay. When the, when the prophet was alive, was slavery permissible? Slavery was permissible and it was being eradicated. Eradicated how? The, uh, to expiate sin, you could free a slave. You couldn't right. free all the slaves right now because you would just have a society of po- homeless people. Fair it was enough. part of the whole society and civilizations, but Islam moved away from that. In Islam, you can't enslave a free person. It was captives of war. So, right. right. Would you mean right as if you've just made a point? You haven't made a point. I've made a point. Well, I should be hold on, hold on, hold on. Right. So, so the Arab nations later on, <laughs> let, let's say uh, any of the Arab nations, like they're fighting now, right? Say Saudi Arabia is fighting someone in Syria right now. Can they take slaves now? If it's part it's of a different war. time, it's a different scenario. Right. So why has the morality or the rules changed? Surely you should be like, well, we don't care. We're going to. Well, no, because the circumstances have changed, haven't they? <laughs> yes. Let me the give you an example. Let me give you an example. I'll ask you for your solution. Right. Yeah. Back in the day, you, you just uh, had a, war, a battle with another village. Yeah. And you kill all their men. What do you do with their women? Are you asking me now? In, in no, the back then. What would you do? Uh, back then, they'd probably be assimilated into uh, whatever society you're you're part of. Right. Oh, is that a right thing to do or a wrong thing to do? Um, it's right for the conquerors, wrong for the ones being conquered. All right. So, why? What's the alternative for them? Um, death. Don't take over them. Leave them as they are. Leave the women and children vulnerable to slavers. Sure. Yeah. That that also happened. There's empires that sure. pushed over villages and left them. Yeah. Leave the women and children to be ravaged by the wolves. Yeah, that's a great idea, mate. And you're saying you're trying to uh, you say more, that. Hold on, hold on. You added great to the to the argument. I didn't add great. You simply asked what else could have been done. No, I'm explaining this... to you. This is the age of empires. Mm. Yeah, this is the age of Persian Empire, Roman Empire, slavers, this, that, the other. You've got sure. a women. You're going to leave a, a town full of women and children to fight for themselves. Really. That's your oh, solution. Are you asking me to make a good or bad? Oh, no, 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 no. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Yes. Okay. Let let's let's say that that's not a good solution. You give me the solution. Take them into your homes. Yeah. Well, I said that. Assimilate them. That was right, right, thing. right. Now today, why wouldn't you need to do that? Do what? Assimilate them? Yeah. Uh, I mean, it depends on how nations are are built. Many do try. I mean, you would argue. Um, Maybe it failed, but that's what America tried to do in, say, Afghanistan. I mean, you can pretend it was what? a pretense. What? what do you mean? They tried to assimilate them into democracy. That's literally how they push them. Assimilation isn't taking them literally back to your own land. You understand that, right? What are you talking, Empires... talking about? Slavery? You said you're talking about slavery. Yeah. So the only slaves in Islam you can have, the, only you slaves, the only slaves are captives of war in Islam, okay. right? And that's based yeah, upon necessity. Hmm. That's it. What's your, what's, what, I don't know what your if there are other facilities to take care of the prisoners, then you don't have to do it. Okay, so so then are you Dr. Imran that... said something beautiful. One second, one second. Let me just see if I can find it. Go on, carry on, carry on. I'll find what he said. Uh, so just to what Erfan said. Um, so are you saying that uh, c- there was no other choice but that at the time? And now that we have better versions, we can move away from that. No, what, what I'm not 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 better versions. What I'm saying, if the same conditions will return to human history, let's say uh, atomic bomb goes off and we we go like I don't know ten <laughs> decades, uh, not decades, like uh, uh, ten to thousand years. Uh, yeah, yeah, apocalypse. One thousand years back into history or something. Sure, yeah. Walking Dead, etc. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so if the conditions reappear, the rulings, mm. the ruling is the same. So right. it's a ruling that applies to certain conditions. In the co- if the conditions are fulfilled, this yeah. thing is the right thing to do. If it's not fulfilled, it's not the right thing to do. So if the, it doesn't mean that we have moved away from it. And even if the conditions come back, we're not going to do it. Right. Like it's not permissible or good again. So, yeah. Okay. But that, I mean, the, I, I still don't. So when they were waging war, it wasn't apocalyptic. It was just a war between two, right? 
those conditions. I didn't say it, but it has to be apocalyptic. I said like yeah. if there is no facilities who can mm -hmm. rule this, if there is like uh, no like not not the options there that we have today that right. can take care of this in a in, in a manner that right right right. Uh, you can then slave them. Is that what you're saying? If if we go back like that time, if, if the same conditions we but then that's that's my point. Was... What what's happened in time that changes it? What if there's you? Oh, so you don't see future... you don't see a change like now. Like there is like nations and they have wait, wait, let me explain. Uh, let me explain. laws let me and they explain. have borders. No, 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 no. I understand. I understand. So you that's can my argument. That's the evolution of morality that I'm arguing. That's, no, but that's sorry, evolution of morality. Would... The conditions have changed. The morality is the same. Uh, how is it? Okay, wait, wait. Let me let me understand. You're saying. In those times, there were certain conditions. It was fine. Present day time, we have uh, not those conditions or better ways of taking care of them. It's not fine. In the future, if those conditions come again, it may become permissible. Is that your what you're saying? I'm saying on it is permissible on that conditions that there is. Yeah, like... sure, sure. If those conditions come back in the future, right? You're saying if there's no other way, but. In those days, okay, they were in a pocket of space. Uh, you say Just bear me one second, killer, 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 because you're trying to make a, this idea that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi agreed with slavery, and then no, 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 um... no, 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 no. The argument kind of are, kind of are. You're trying to say argument. if he was the best, why we, why did they move away from slavery? That, that's exactly your argument. Why it's like it wasn't your argument. Just one second, let me just share this a second because this was quite yes. inspirational. Be in the higher path that Allah wants us to, wants to be on. The first step on that is to free the slaves. Allah says, I have given you your sight and your faculties, and I've shown you the two paths. Do you know what the higher path is? Allah describes the steps that you need to take to be on the higher path. The first step that you need to take to be on the higher path is to free the next. It means to free the slaves. So if you want to be on the higher path that Allah wants us to be on, the first step on that is to free the slaves. Allah says, I have given you your sight and your does that help you? Could you show me where it states that? No. No, I can't. I want to do your own work. I'm sick of people making people's arguments. You can't bring an argument that you, you earlier, earlier, you asked the other people, do your homework and bring it to me. Yeah, yeah, do your homework. Go back. But it's your argument. And this is your homework, killer. Because you'll be back. Go and reflect upon it. I don't I don't want to just give it to you and it goes in the wind. I want you to go away. Does it really say this? And if it does say this, Come back and apologize. That's all. Or okay, never okay. apologize. You don't have to apologize. Just say I was wrong. Um, it's in Surah Bellet, yeah. But but the thing is, is you've made the argument that I tried to say Muhammad condoned slavery. Didn't or not. that's not the argument I'm talking about. No, your argument was this. Morality. You know, you, your argument was this. If the Prophet Muhammad Sallam was the perfect society, and in that society they had slaves, why did they move away slavery? That's what Correct. you said. Correct. Right. He taught the and and we've just shown you in the time of the Prophet Sallam. In the Quran, Allah says to free the necks, free the slaves. I told you about the um, uh, to expiate sin is to free a slave. Yeah. So everything, if you if you if you look at the history and and look at the hadith, the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam said, you'll see everything was moving away from it. But you just couldn't do it. You couldn't do it overnight. It had to be a gradual thing. Otherwise, you'd have anarchy. I, I, I don't know why you hung up on it. To be honest, because because the way you're making it out. Is as if like it was clear cut, but what I'm saying to you is even though it is clear cut, has... it is clear cut. Were... But slaves were still taken after that passage was revealed. New slaves it were is... still made. No, okay, but free them, free them, free the neck. Correct. Okay. Right. So, so the higher so, part. So we've established that. So the first so step on the higher part them. is to free the neck of the slave. Why, yeah, why and it's you... only at a time of war to begin with. What, Fantastic. What? But what you're not understanding. Is you're making it out as if the whole world was some sort of like um, they had communication, right? They took it as in those conditions, slavery is permissible, right? In their neighborhood, whatever, wherever oh, okay. they did it. Do you believe Islam teaches you could enslave free people? You could just invade a village and just take their men and women? No, no, like no. the Vikings. No, no, it doesn't. No, no, that, but, but that's not my argument, which is why you keep running to it. And I keep saying that's not my argument. Yeah, your that argument thing, is example, why don't we have slaves today? We don't have slaves today because the conditions are not the same. We don't have a caliphate established. We're not at war. We don't have prisoners of war. That's why the conditions are different. If that were to occur again, if it were to be the same conditions, then we would have that. It's very simple. But we haven't moved away from anything. 
because you're saying no, it, it doesn't. Isn't. It doesn't. You just made. You're making the claim that we have moved away from it. We haven't moved away from it at all. The conditions have changed. That's but all what it is. Of Muslims believe the conditions are met. Are you saying they can take slaves? They can believe that if they want, but they're wrong because there is okay, no. How do you there, determine it's wrong? There is. First of all, there is no Khalifa. We don't even have a Khalifa right now. We have nation states. Right. Right. But, but so the, 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 the set of government right now, the set of government right now is not the same. The conditions are not the same. The Muslims are not one <clears throat> unified body in which they're at war with people. It, the conditions are entirely different. It's not as if Muslims said, oh, no, this is bad. So we have to move away from it. No, it's that the conditions have changed. Right. So. Okay, so at this so if they were reestablished, if they were put in place again, then the same thing would happen. Simple. But, but do you war. agree? Do you agree? You want the judge and jury of that? There could be a set of. Um, uh, I'm not. Hamza is not. Right? Nobody on this stream is. Right. What's so your how point? How do you get to morality then? How, how are you? What do you mean? How do we morality? get to morality? What are you talking about? You're saying what I'm what I'm idea. saying what I'm saying is objective. Knowing so, when those ow. conditions are in place is going to take people to look at those conditions, see but exactly what they are. Objective? Let me finish. Let me finish, Killer, because you've come on here with a ridiculous argument. Honestly, it's it's just ridiculous what you're but saying. You don't give one condition. We, give me one condition. I did give you a condition. condition. I you did give you a condition. Right? Yeah, I already right. gave you a condition. Okay. What if a nation believes we don't have elephant? one? We don't but have if, one. Listen. How do you make the judgment? Listen, relax. Killer, killer, relax, killer, my friend. Killer. Listen, listen. What, we have point? certain. What's yeah, the point? We, no, his it's point exactly is invalid. That. That listen, the point is, is this. The from... point is this, my friend. You now, your initial claim was that Muslims and society in general has necessarily moved away from the values of the Prophet and the, the early generations. Now, when we're showing you that that's not the case, now you've <laughs> moved to a second argument, which is not the same, which is saying, well, okay, but how do we know when those conditions are met? That's a Correct. second argument that you're making. How is it? Your first one, your first one has already been refuted. But you if you just saying we don't believe it's a caliphate, I have I've just said to no, you. No, 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 no. Your initial argument was why is there a change and why is it different? And I explained Correct. it to you. You don't have a rebuttal for that. Sorry. You said it's subjective, which is why it's not changed. I'm telling you it's subjective. So ISIS right now takes slaves. That's subjective. Right. I'm, I'm done. Killer, right. killer, killer, killer. Your, 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 you your initial argument tool. that we've moved away from the Prophet Sallallahu perfect society has been refuted. Jump it's down. not his society that I'm, I'm arguing. I'm saying no, the conditions and the, and the society... No, no, you just added that now. No, no you're that. exactly... You've only you said did, you that now after that. we've refuted the point. Now you're just right. this oh, anyway, killer, killer, killer. I don't even... Can I just say one line? No. You're dishonest. Well, Hamza, like, okay, you got that. I just want oh, to this say this guy's uh, gonna something. be a real trip. I'm just telling you, Mr. Rilo. I just, all right, then. yeah, before, before he's, he's, been, he's been in the chat this whole time, he's a real piece of work. All Hamza, right, before, I, I like knowing then for now. Well, before, before you, you get, a, before you get anyone, wacky on, Christian guy, yeah, I just wanted to bring a point uh, in regards to the discussion. Like, this is not like he made it seem like is it something like it happens over centuries and Muslim moved away and stuff. It happens like from the first generations that when the conditions of a ruling changes, like it, how the ruling is applying changes. And I, I have this one, I brought up this one example, and it is like where Allah SWT like talks about like how we should give the zakah, okay? So in Surah Tawbah, verse 60, Allah says that alms tax is only for the poor and the needy, for those employed to administer, and for those whose hearts are attracted to the faith, okay? So what the, what that is what what this means is that like uh, that the zakah and stuff can be used to um to to make Islam attractive to people so can people like become Muslim and stuff like this is a way to like for dawah okay Omar ibn Khattab and he was the third generation the third khalif after the prophet sallallahu he stopped giving the zakah to to these for these purposes why because said the condition that this is in a state where Islam is very weak and we need to spend this so we can gain stability and stuff. This condition has been lifted. We have gained stability so we can use this zakah in, 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 in other, other ways. 
So uh, subhanallah, because of the condition changes, it changed. And if the Islam, if Islam comes in a situation again in need of spending a, the zakah in that way, it it stays a rule to Yom al Qiyamah. Okay. Let me just let me just read um, some hadith. Subhanallah. Okay, so this is there's a book there's a there's a book of Bukhari called Freeing a Slave. The Prophet Hassan said, "Whoever frees a Muslim slave, Allah will save all the parts of his body from the hellfire as He has freed the body parts of the slave." Uh, I asked the Prophet, "What is the best deed?" He replied, "To believe in Allah and to fight for His cause." I then asked, "What is the next best? What is the best? What is the best kind of manumission?" He replied, "The manumission of the most expensive slave and by the most beloved by his master." The Prophet ordered us to free slaves at the time of solar eclipses. We were ordered to free slaves at the time of lunar eclipses. The Prophet says that whoever manumates a slave owned by two masters should manumate him completely. There's so many hadith for the Prophet free the slave. Free the, any, oh, yes, yeah, solar eclipse, yeah, free a slave. Oh, it's a lunar eclipse. Okay, free a, Everything was about freeing the slaves. And the thing is, you see, in that time, the rights of a slave was more than a European house servant because a slave didn't have to be free. The slave could say, I don't want to be free. I, I, I want to stay. And you'd have to feed him and clothe him and shelter him to his old age. Whereas an old English, uh, you know, in a manor house like in Downton Abbey or whatever, when, when they reach a certain age, they can just kick him out. That's it. Done. All that life service out the window. So the, it, when they think slaves, they're thinking roots. They're thinking like chain, like the transatlantic slave trade. And this is not what it's talking about. But that's what's in their minds. You've got to get away from it. Anyway. All right, right, love blood, forget him. Oh, they're all nutcases, I think. Now, let me try this one. Four ounce king. That's all it's about. Yeah. Rijad, can you uh, unmute yourself, mate? No? All right. Okay, truth seeker. Ain't freaking truth. Are you Muslim, mate? Are you Muslim? I am. You are. Ju just a second. I, I wanted to address. Just a, just a second. I wanted to address. Salam alaikum. Just a second, please. Salam alaikum. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi. Come on, guys. No Muslims. Mm. And a Muslim man, you shouldn't be uh, uh, saying you're a truth seeker because you already have the truth. Yeah, alhamdulillah. This looks dodgy as well. Yeah, mate. You muted. Asalaamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Asalaam. Oh, no. What do you want? Uh, okay. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I've gone off you a little bit, Hamza. Um, <laughs> we're a fan. Okay. Okay. So back to the alien hypothesis. I know you love it. What? Oh, you found a way to bring aliens into the. Oh, it's that unseen guy. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just a question. Just a question for you, uh, Muslims. Um, Muhammad ascended to heavens on a winged horse, right? You you talked about that before of the burra. I'm, I'm just asking a question. Is it's it not, right? It's not, not a winged horse. It's not a winged horse. It's like not creature. necessarily a horse, but yeah. What's your point? A, a, a mode of transport, let's say. Okay. okay. I know he went so, from Medina to Jerusalem, or Mecca to Medina to Jerusalem on the on the Barak. I'm not sure about went up to the heavens. He did, ascend, he did ascend to the heavens at the end of his life, didn't he? That's a different. That's a different question. End of his life. What are you talking well, about? it's okay. Okay, it's, well, I'm not, okay. Maybe I'm not phrasing it absolutely 100 percent correctly, but you know what I'm getting at. The story in the Quran is that he ascended to the heavens on a winged horse. Is that not correct? It's a creature. He, he was taken to Beit al Maqdis, like to Jerusalem, and there he didn't ascend ascend to the heavens with this creature, but like with the angel. The angels took him from there, and yeah. Mm, okay. Okay. Okay, so did did were people supposed to have witnessed his ascension? It this was not something that uh, was a miracle for the people, like as as evidence for them to believe. This was something the prophet reported. So the Muslims who had faith in the prophet and they 
established upon prior evidence that he is the prophet of God, the truthful, they uh, believed him. And it is it is counted to the belief of the unseen because, like, the prophet didn't do it in front of them, okay? okay. So it wasn't used as something as evidence. We, we are not, no Muslim claim, yeah, I believe in the prophet because he wrote this creature to Jerusalem and he ascended it to the heavens. No. no, sure. I'm just wondering why you'd have to go upwards, like, towards the sky. Or is that just... Is that aliens, mate, aliens. So I mean, if you what's the problem? Like, yeah, he's, he's, he's well. probably trying to say that. He I mean, if 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 you, if you went down, content. you could ask. Well, I wonder why you went down. If you went left, yeah, of course you could. But he didn't go down. He went up. Yeah. So. So what does that mean? He, he was up. visiting the aliens. Is that the point? Well, it's not, it's not just Muhammad. It wasn't wasn't the, uh, a long line of prophets. They all. But um, I'm just saying, what was your point of by leading asking to that? the heavens? Is Sorry? it because you, is it because you think it fits the narrative of him visiting the aliens? Is that the point, though? No, it's about the direction of travel, really, and the mode of travel. Like, so if what, he was going to be, the, what's, the, be I, what's the point, though? I'm just trying to understand. Yeah, what's the point, please? Well, I'm trying to understand. <laughs> um, well, I'm looking. I'm looking at it through a lens of obviously my alien hypothesis, right? But, but that's um, what I asked you. But why didn't you just say yes, Jake? I mean, uh, I don't understand. Okay, so 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 when you look through your alien glasses at this mm -hmm. uh, at this thing, what what do you see? Like, what what what's the hypothesis you come you come to? Well, being a prophet. Um, in communication with messengers, maybe they at the, at the end of his days on earth, maybe he went with them along with the other prophets. But it wasn't at the end of his life, he came back and he kept on doing the message for years and years. Oh, okay, where did he go? Is, is he so? Has he got a burial site? Yes, yes, okay, okay. I didn't realize this. I thought there was some mystery about the... Matter the, of the fact, end. this as well refutes your alien hypothesis because the Prophet ﷺ, he was known as a trustful person, okay, uh, even before his prophethood. And there's like many occasions uh, like from his life, uh, evidence for that. And going to the aliens and seeing aliens and coming back and keeping it like... Uh, lying to the people that he's still talking with God, although he saw the aliens already, it's not something that the Prophet, peace and blessings, be upon him, would do. So it makes no sense. Would it not be that um, Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, he misinterpreted what he was perceiving when he visited with Allah? So he visited. You know, you know that in, in a trip to heaven, he saw the other prophets, like Allah took yeah, him to the other yeah, prophets. Exactly. The angel took him. So he, so he's meeting the other prophets. He met Abraham. He met uh, like a lot of like the other prophets. And yeah, so it, maybe maybe he, this was um, maybe like a space station, hologram. space city. Oh, I, 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 I got, he must have loved Star Trek: The Final Frontier, isn't it? Well, no, it's just a. a You've seen that, haven't you? Have you watched it? Have I'm, you watched I'm it? it? Could be a physical possibility, Hamza. Have you watched it? Star Trek: The what, Final what? Frontier. Uh, Final Frontier. I've watched quite a lot of Star Trek. Um, Star Trek, Final... they think they found God. Mm, no, you have to remind me about that. Yeah, well, they think they found God. <laughs> well, I mean, not much to remind you. <laughs> well, check yeah, it out. Final... What's, the What's the name of the book? What's the name of the geezer who wrote that book? What book? Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, the, the, the guy um, who wrote the book about the Quran. What's his name? What are you talking about? Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> the book I told you earlier about the Arabic and he wasn't a Muslim and then, and then he that's what you should oh, go Raymond, for oh, Raymond Foreign yeah well done Sam oh, right yeah. can you, you've got to get, get up a bit earlier than that Hamza <laughs> well, no disrespect but you were saying what book as if I've never spoke to you about a book okay but you're picking out like things that we talked about ages ago I'm not talking about that now so you, you had to rack my brain for a second. Sorry. Well, no, no, because that was your homework. 
I don't have any homework. You might be setting it, but I'm not taking it. Yeah, I'm setting it. I'm setting it. I'm setting it. Oh, I want you to go you're not my teacher, by Raymond Farron if you're so intrigued to understand the Arabic and why it's so special. Um, read that book. Okay, then. All right. So I am setting your homework, and I look forward to your um, response. I hope we can talk again. Inshallah. Arena's back in two weeks' time. You're more than welcome to come on. Make sure you've done your homework, though. All right? Okay, thanks. Take care, dude. <sighs> Talking of dudes, what you want? Hello again, Hamza. I think you uh, cut me off in anger before, so I'll forgive you. I just want to understand, given the previous topic was surrounding the status of Abu Sufyan at the time of the interaction with Heraclius, can I just, and you guys can confirm with me because I've just read it again. So am I correct in stating that Abu Sufyan at the time of the interaction with Heraclius was on good terms with Muhammad? Is that so, 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 Say that again, sorry. At the time of Abu Sufyan meeting Heraclius, was Abu Sufyan in a peace treaty with Muhammad? Was he in a peace treaty or was he, he did you just changed it? You went from good terms to peace treaty. No, he wasn't a Muslim. Let's just say that. He wasn't a Muslim. He, he was an enemy of Muhammad. He was an enemy of Muhammad. So, okay. And then when he speaks to Heraclius, mm -hmm. um, Heraclius asks, what is his family status among you? Mm -hmm. He belongs to a good noble family amongst yeah. us. So he's speaking yeah. well of him. No, he's telling the truth. Okay. Yeah. So, you know what he even says in the hadith? He said, I wish that I could put something in there, like a lie that I could get away with, but I didn't find anything I could say. And he was annoyed as, about himself that he couldn't put anything in there without being exposed. Okay. So am I correct in saying that at the, so this is like, he's reflecting on it in the past. Like he, he, he's later saying that I be, like I was talking good about or I was speaking the truth about Muhammad. And then at the end of the hadith, like he's just doing a reflection of at the time when. He Who's he narrating to? to? Who's he narrating to? Um, I believe it's Abu Sufyan. It was Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas. One Abbas. of the companions of the Prophet, one of his closest companions. So he could be telling the story of what happened at the time that he was with Heraclius. Okay finish all right that answers okay that's all i wanted that, okay. that's that that's my understanding all right so you so you understand then at the time he was with the Heraclius, he wasn't a muslim so he wasn't a friend of muhammad sallam but even then he couldn't find anything bad to say i see okay that makes sense that makes sense good, good. that's why i wanted you to come back on and say all right all righty um look and... forward to your next um interesting argument uh my next argument is, is it possible to be, so, so. <laughs> is it possible to be a Muslim, but have doubts about, look, I think I'm halfway there, Hamza, mm. but I, I just, I have, I have problems with believing Muhammad. Why? Um, it, it, to me, it's, he's, I don't know. He's someone that I, I can't relate to. I mean... So what? Was he known to be a liar? Um, accordingly, not. No. His nickname was the trusted one. Yeah. And even... You've seen the narration where um, he said to the people of Mecca, um, if I were to tell you there was an army outside, the other side of this mountain, waiting to invade Mecca, what would you do? And they said, oh, we prepare our defences because, you know, you're the truthful one, the trusted one. He says, well, what, if you'd believe me in that, why don't you believe me now? So this is the thing you see. He, he, he was known as a trusted one, truthful one. And yet they, they wouldn't accept this message from him because it changed their whole worldview. It changed everything. Hmm. It turned their lives upside down. It, they went from worshipping idols and statues and such to having to worship the one God. And all their places of privilege was removed and the rights of women was given and the rights of animals and all these things were brought in. And uh, they weren't ready to accept it. But the point is, he was known as a trusted one, truthful one. So the question you need to ask yourself, why for 40 years would he be known as a trusted one and all of a sudden start lying? For what purpose? For what reason? 
it, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't fit his character. And even when the um, the Quraysh, they, they, they sent poets to find out where is he getting this information from. Because they know he's illiterate. How can this illiterate Muhammad come with this, this words? And you know what the, the reply to the poets was after listening to the Quran? They said it's sorcery. Why? Why, why did poets, and, and I think at the time the five greatest poets in Arabia ever lived were around at that time, when they heard the Quran being recited, they said this is sorcery. This is supernatural. This is not something normal. Why? Yeah, yeah, Al Walid Al 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 ibn al Mughira, one of them who said the sorcery, he was such a good poet. There were like seven poets and gold or something. They were on the Kaaba at that time. Like when the, and his poet was one of them that was like, it, it was called of the seven mu'allaqat, the seven hanging poems on the Kaaba. And he said, I cannot say that this is poetry. So he just had to say it's sorcery. It's sorcery. Now, why? 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 What was so profound about it? And these are the questions you need to answer and ask. Well, let, like me, I... let me ask you. Let me ask him. Um, what is like? We have the option that, like, I and this is like what we see that Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, was truthful and he came with the message of Islam, the truthful message. What is the other option that you're struggling with? Okay. So, what do you think? What is because maybe we can take that apart. Is it okay? Is it is it not sufficient enough just to believe in God? To no. Be, no. What's How the point? What's worse, isn't it? Just to believe, believe God exists, but don't listen to Him. Worse than not believing in God. What do you mean by not listen to Him? Okay, you believe God exists, and then you don't yeah. do what He says. Is worse than not believing God exists. Not believe what He's. Sorry, okay, let me more let more me more ask more. you so, so you can understand. Just, just, just one second, Afan. Let me just let this click for him. It's worse to believe God exists and not do what God says than not to believe God exists. Hmm. Because if you don't believe God exists, why would you do what God apparently says? But if you believe God exists, what arrogance are you not to do what God says? And what does God say? Follow his guidance, follow his messengers. Okay, and that and those include like all the biblical prophets, or all, all the way back. To no, 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 no. The Prophet Sallallahu is his own Sharia, is his own. We don't uh, require or need any prophet prior to the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam as some kind of uh, guidance for us as Muslims. We can take examples from their lives. So, for example, the patience of Prophet Yusuf. Uh, we can we can understand that and the wisdom of different prophets and. You know, we, we can take examples. That's what the Quran does, you see. The Quran doesn't give a full um, biography of each prophet. It just gives the lessons from their lives that we can take from and learn from. But the full Sharia is from uh, the Prophet Muhammad Sassab, the final messenger, because it's the, all the truth. It's everything. It's not just um, history. It's basically history, guidance for the presence, and warning for the future. And the Quran says clearly, you're not a dictator over Muhammad. You're not a dictator over the Muhammad. Merely a warner. So all the Quran is, is a warning for you that don't be heedless. This life isn't the end. And, and that, that, that's all it is. And, you know, if you read the Quran, it's beautiful. It, you know, Allah says, don't worry about it. Don't trouble yourself. Those who don't accept the message, don't worry about them. I'll deal with them. When the angels lay them out and say, this is the day you used to deny, get ready. You know, <laughs> don't worry about it. Don't trouble yourselves. Don't get disheartened. You know, the, the, the message is there. People heed a warning, don't heed a warning. If you don't heed a warning and there's a calamity coming, then you're going to be... You know, imagine there was a weather forecast saying there's a hurricane coming, yeah, and it's going to wreck the houses, and you say, ah, who cares? And mm -hmm. then you get caught up in that hurricane, then it's your own fault, aren't it? You'd heed the warning, you'd get out of Dodge, you'd move, you'd board up your houses, you'd do something. So Allah's saying in the Quran, look, the day's coming, get ready. Choose or refuse, it's up to you. But there'll be consequences. Plus. And that's it. But then when you see what you're told to do as a Muslim, it protects you and your family from all the poisons in society. It's the right thing. It's a normal thing. It's a logical thing. It's a rational thing. It's a reasonable thing to do. If, if the only thing to be a Muslim was to follow what Islam teaches, it's enough. Forget paradise and alhamdulillah, all, all that. Just, just to be get through this jungle, just to get through this jungle with a map, with a road map is next level, knowing which way to avoid the swamps, which way to watch out for the poisonous um, animals and lions and whatever it is, just to get get through it is enough. Alhamdulillah, this is a mercy from Allah. Yeah, and this is what the Prophet is for us. It's a guide. 
look, I'll give you an example. We have, I have children. I've used the example so many times, but I'm going to use it again. I have children. Mm -hmm. I have a 12 year old. Now I have a 19 year old. Subhanallah. Uh, I used to say like I have a six year old and a 30, 13 year old. That was like very nine and uh, sorry, 12 and 19. Anyway, time goes quick. So, so my 12 year old needs guidance. Yeah. I, I, I don't, she doesn't have freedom. There's no such thing as freedom. Um, there's guidance. Yeah, you can eat this, you can do that, you have to sleep this time, whatever. Yeah. Now, my 19 year old needs guidance as well, but she doesn't need the same guidance the 12 year old needs. Yeah, because she's a bit more aware, she's a grown a bit more wisdom, more experience. Yeah. But my, my 12 year old needs different guidance. Now, so my 12 year old needs guidance, my 19 year old needs guidance. Who guides me? Who tells me? Who, who's there for me? To tell me what's right, what's wrong, to avoid, what's dangerous for you, what's good for you, what's beneficial, what's hard. Who's there to do that for me? Boris? Liz? Rishi? No. No, it's not. Morals of alley cats. So the leaders of my society are not standards of morality for me. The leaders of my society not, don't care about me. They don't care about the, the health of me. They don't care about the wealth of me. They don't care about my family. They're happy for us to drink. They're happy for us to smoke. They're happy for us to gamble away. They have, they, they, they love it. Get, get longer payday loans. Yeah, no problem. They don't care about me. No. How can they be a source of guidance for me? They can't be. The only one who could be a source of guidance for me is someone who has no vested interest in me, who doesn't benefit from what I do or is harmed by what I do. Because if someone doesn't benefit from what I do and what harm what I do, they've got no vested interest. Yeah. But still, yeah. they guide me. And, and the one who created me is the only one who could offer that guidance without the vested interest. Do you understand? I understand. So as a no. Muslim, what you're doing is you're connecting to the one who created you, which is a logical thing to do. And and it trust me, it's just next level. It's so nice to have the boundaries. Because trust me, bro, there's two things going on here. One, you, there's no such thing as freedom. You do know that, don't you? Uh, not in this worldly earth. There is no freedom. There, there's, permitted, there's, there's permitted things you can do. Permitted, within yeah. limits. Limited things. Okay. Everything has rights and limits in this world. Everything. No one's free. Everyone has conditions upon them. Yeah. But that, that's the first thing um, th that you need to understand as a reality. I understand. Oh, and um, that's the first thing. I forgot what the second thing was. More important than the first thing, to be honest with you. <laughs> that's enough. Fair enough, Hamza. I'll. Uh... Yeah, I suppose there's so th there's that understanding of there is you know one God absolutely, and He creates all things and and you know allows us to have certain freedoms. I understand that that theological position of Islam, but like as going back to my original question was like having to believe in a man, I suppose. Like to me, like I'm happy to be. I know you said he was a truthful person, and you know we discussed like in the hadith about Abu Sufyan, and you know he called him a truthful person. Is is that enough to like to ascribe my future like on on the account? Yes, no. We no, we no. don't believe we don't believe in Muhammad because we <laughs> believe in him as just as a person, or we worship him. But because God chose him to like uh, speak to us about what God wants from us, what our purpose of life is, so he he's like immediate between us and God. That's that's why we believe in him, and in that sense, we believe in him. And yeah, this is why even when we say the Shahada, when we like the testimony of faith, we mm -hmm. say wa anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasulu, and I bear witness that Muhammad is his slave and messenger. Like Subhanallah, that that we put emphasis on it like yeah he, and look at the wisdom of allah look at the wisdom of allah he gave the most profound linguistic book to an illiterate man to reveal well he couldn't read or write and he came with the quran and and, and that's why the Quraysh are, how can this how can this illiterate man come with this you got to answer that question how you can't say he wasn't illiterate because his companions would know he wasn't illiterate and they'd know the quran was wrong when they said he was illiterate do you get me Okay. So okay. the other thing I was going to say, sorry. Um, yeah. Without Islam, you'll never have peace of um, mind, body, and soul. Never. Ever? Yeah. 
Without Islam, you can never have peace of mind, body, and soul. You'll be missing something. Either you won't have, you'll have no peace of the soul because the soul doesn't know what's happened to it when it dies. The soul has no food. It's got nothing. You're starving your soul. Yeah, your mind. There's no way you can handle the scrutiny that I put on you for your worldview if it's not Islam, because you're going to have to come up with something. You're going to have to explain to me where all this came from. You're going to have to explain all these things to me, and you won't be able to do so. You won't take the scrutiny. Trust me. Yeah. So your mind can't have peace. Your soul certainly doesn't have peace, and your body won't have peace because you're, you're going to give it things that are bad for it. Because so, um... You've got no guidance. So, Hamza, hypothetically, if I took the Shahada, mm -hmm. is, it, is it obligatory for me to change my name? Because I see no. a lot of... <clears throat> How come you changed your name? Jake oh, I... Is it... But is, is it like a... Is it like a, a legal... Is it something back in the day no. people used to do? So it's no. optional. No, no, no. It's, only, is, it's it? only... It's only if your if it's only if your name contradicts a, a principle related to Islam. So like some of the um, the pagans at the time, their names would have gone against Islamic principles, so they would have like to change names. But, for example, uh, slave of the sun. Yeah, yeah. Okay. But if your name is Jake or uh, Robert or Darren or whatever, you don't have to change your name. I mean, my name is Jake, and I, I never changed my name. We have brother Ben uh, Ikra. Uh, he has a YouTube channel. Brother George Jordan M. M. He's not changed his name. I changed my name because I wanted the Muslim identity. But, but I haven't changed my name by passport and bank account and um, Darren. Okay, I see. That's so, why a lot of time in this corner, people ask my name I'm like Darren, Hamza. I don't know. I don't know. Do you get angry like, by that though, Hamza? When people I'm sorry? You, do you get angry by that or do you, do you feel upset? Do you get upset when people call you... you your okay. First name, dude, 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 dude. I don't get upset by anything, mate, and I don't get angry. <laughs> really, I don't. Why would I get upset? Why would I get angry? If people chose to, you know, call you something, and you call yourself something, it's just a random question. Like, I'm just curious if you get up, upset. No, he just said he's fine with Darren or Hamza. He's fine with. No, there was, I used to work in a market. I, I used to work in Wembley Market. Yeah, there was a couple of these. I won't say racist, but proper like Essex boys running the, the you know, like the market, um, selling all the market equipment and stuff. Yeah. I'm, they called me Muzzy. <laughs> all right, Muzzy. That, that yeah, was my name. That's the wrong yeah, Muzzy. I don't, I don't care. If that's why they want to call me. That's how they're going to identify me. I don't really bother. But the point right. is this changing your name or not changing your name doesn't change a reason why to become a Muslim, bro. You become a Muslim for two reasons. And there's, sorry, for one reason. That you believe Allah mm -hmm. is the only one worthy of worship. And yeah. to connect to Allah, you believe Muhammad is the messenger of Allah. That's it. And then you Still just get on with on it. Still working on that part, Hamza. What, what are you working on, bro? To establish if who he was. But, but, but Hamza, time. to help him, what, what, because I think something we could do is like, what, what do you think, like, like I said, another option, like, other than the Prophet ﷺ truthfully uh, transmitting us the, the message of God, give me another option so I can give you a reason to tell you that this other option cannot be true. And maybe this will bring you closer to accepting the Prophet peace and peace be upon him. Look, I, I, I firmly put myself as a Christian because... No, you, believe... no, you don't. What makes you say that, Hamza? You don't believe Christianity is true. I know our last discussion, you spoke about the dispute about the historicity and the authorship of the Gospels. You believe Christianity is true? I believe, I believe it is. I believe it is. Um, Why? You don't believe so, in the Trinity. Let me just understand something. Let me just understand something. You don't believe Muhammad, peace and blessing upon him, told the truth, yet he was known as the trusted one. Yet you believe Paul told the truth, but even he confesses to lying. Where does Paul and you confession? believe in so many other gospel writers that we don't even know. Forget about yeah. truthful lie. We don't even know who they are. You can't even test their truthfulness. You don't even know who they were. You just accept them. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, it's a bit strange. I mean, I think it's a good idea for you to look into who the Prophet wasalam, was. I mean, I think that's good. But I mean, yeah. if you're requiring that as, as a standard, 
I mean, how could you apply that to Christianity? And so many of the doctrines that you get from the, the New Testament are based on writers we, we don't even know who they are. I mean, yes. you can't even look into them. Is it enough to say, so put away, I suppose, bias of authorship, but the leading examples and outcomes of a set of beliefs? I'm not trying to state that Christianity is superior or Islam is superior. Is it not enough to see the <coughs> of a society based around religious teaching and to say that may be the better if that makes sense. I'm oh, just trying man. to I'm just trying to put it into context where we can apply, you know, good lessons from religion. Forget about authorship because no, 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 that's a nonsense. Because what? Because of yeah, I the... think you, I think, dude, I think you realize that that seems a bit contradictory. I That's think you absolutely realize that. You're ridiculous. What? That the. And, and that, I, I, I have to add to that. I have to add to that one thing. Because not only did he do that, he even said, like, why isn't belief in God not sufficient? Why do I need to follow this person, Muhammad? Well, he exactly. doesn't have a problem with people like Paul, who, is, who isn't even claiming that he's a prophet. So it, it makes really no sense, bro. Madness. So according to the gospel writers, like are we are we saying that the, the story, so this goes back to the history question, was was Jesus supposedly a historical figure? Like did he actually exist? Is that? Yes. But did he claim to be God? No. Okay. If he didn't claim to be God, who did he claim to be then? According Prophet to of God, messenger of God, is that what people wrote down during the time around then? Like you don't people, know that. Yeah. You don't. You don't know what they wrote down. Him. We don't know what they wrote down. You don't know who wrote what down. Don't you? Don't you understand that? Uh, so the so the gospel accounts. So uh, the gospel account could be a lie. Could be a lie. Why do you believe it's true? Because when I've followed the history of the church in the first century AD. Yes, I, yes, the gospel accounts are anonymous because they were mainly written on papyrus and spread amongst the Roman Empire. But you follow the little bits and pieces and you see the eventual development of the church. That's why I believe, like, in the body of, like, the text of Christianity. Like, because I can follow it, like... I can no, you follow can't. It. Yes, you no, can. No, you can't. No, you can't. How, How are you so? following it? How are you following it? Explain to me. You well, got a Bible. Me, How are you going yeah. back? What are you doing? Well, with the Bible, it takes on the Old Testament and like if is it fair to say, fair enough, okay, the New Testament was not um, you know, is compiled by many authors and the gospels, you know, have different types of evidence and some may have copied from others, fair enough. But is it then okay to apply the same principle to the Old Testament? Yeah, many authors. Yes, what? It's a difference. So, essentially, the book I'm holding right now in my hand, according to you, is a lie, or parts of it are lies. Like, is there anything? One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely a lie. Does Islam actually in does Islam confirm, or is there any reference within the Muslim liter like literature and scripture that says that the Bible is a lie? That's that's like that's where I'm sort of getting. Yeah, at. yeah. No, basically. Yeah. Why, why would you? One second, one second. Why would you care what Islamic scripture says if the, it says the Bible's a lie? Why would that matter to you? You, you believe the Bible? I'm trying to do a thought experiment here. To... Well, no, no, no. I'm asking you. If the Quran, let's just say the Quran doesn't say that, or does say that, does say that. Are you going to take the Quran as an authority over your Bible? I'm not too sure. No, the answer is no. Sure. So please don't play these stupid games. Honestly, but it's ridiculous. The, the game I'm trying to understand is so at the end. No, okay, the it's end not the game, game you're trying is, to understand. It's the game you're playing. You're trying to play it, but unfortunately, you're playing with flipping experts here, mate, and you ain't gonna watch. Hamza, I'm happy to say that yes, you did bring doubt 
to me about the historic historicity and the authorship of the gospel. You won on that. So I suppose the end game is for me to take Shahada. No, I don't care whether you take Shahada. Okay. My end game for you is to be in confusion as to how you connect to God. That's my end game for you. Because whilst you're on to this nonsense of Christianity, you're not going to take Shahada. Come on, man. But the problem is that I think I he, I think he realizes, Hamza, honestly, I think he realizes it is nonsense. I think he I realizes it. Oh, I mean, come oh. on, man. You, you, you're already agreeing there's problems with the historicity. I mean, you don't believe Jesus was God and man at the same time and that God came and died. Uh, you don't believe in a, a trinity claiming that there's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. They're all God, and they're not each other, and yet they're supposed to be one God. None of this stuff makes sense to you. Mm, I would say I question it. I question it, but do I hold it to be completely true? I mean, but it's a historical book, is it not? The Bible. Okay. Do, do you want is me? It, do you want me to show you a way how you can uh, please look what claims in the Bible are the true and like what are definitely false, for example? Okay. Yep. Go ahead. Through the Quran, because if it can be proven to you that the Quran is the word of God. Uh, that the Bible, it says that the Bible originally was from God, but it has been changed. And now you want to look, okay, well, what is the right beliefs that, that, that originally were in the Bible? So you can use the Quran to, to uh, examine the Bible and you can uh, come to the conclusion. So I think if for you, identifying is the, if the Quran is the word of God, sent uh, uh, down upon the messenger Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, this will just bring you closer to validating the statements of the Bible. All right. I'll have to... I'll what, what are the barriers for you to accept it? I have to go back and... Yeah, uh, I do have to go very shortly. Um, but I suppose... the Sorry, the question being that the barriers... <laughs> Are you worried about your family or your friends and things like that? A little. I would say yes. Yeah, I mean, I, I think maybe that's what your problem is because you're asking about changing your name and, and these kind of things. I mean, listen, if you think Christianity has all these problems and isn't, <laughs> it isn't true and Islam makes more sense and it's true, you just got to accept it. You can't care about what other people think. And even in the beginning, you don't have to let them know. You don't have you to, don't have to know put it in the face of everyone. Yeah. Simple. It's between you and God. That's what's most important. The connection between you and God. And I suppose I probably do some sinful things according to Islam that I need to work on. Um, I won't yeah, go you into work on that over time. Everybody does. That's all. Like premarital sex and drinking alcohol. Prophet, peace and blessings. One said, every Listen, it's, human it's being better to be a Muslim. sinful Muslim yeah. rather than to be a non Muslim. Yeah. And there is even uh, uh, where the Prophet reports us from God, where Allah SWT says, if that if we would stop sinning, God would destroy us and bring a creation that will do sins because and, and forgive them. So sinning and, and God forgiving us is just part of our nature. It's nothing like, don't think that any of us are free from sin or perfect. We are far from that. And no, like, even if you go to a scholar, go to an Islamic scholar and ask him, are you free from sin? And you're going to see what answer he's going to give you. He's not going to tell the sins because in Islam we think we shouldn't expose our sins or boast with them or stuff. But no mm -hmm. one will say you that tell you no no good Muslim will tell you that he's free from sin. <coughs> I've taken a lot from uh, well, it's morning here in Australia, but um, I think I'll go back to reading the Quran. And if I have any questions, uh, yeah, I think I'll I think I'll uh, reevaluate. All in next time, man. Yeah, yeah. no, definitely. Um, Thanks, guys. I've really enjoyed this chat. And, um, All right. Take care. See you guys.
Ta. See you. I think he's just confused. I think he's – I think he sees the, the merit in his time. I think he's just worried about other personal things. That's what I think. I've kept this comment up. This is disrespect that Hamza blocked me from the stream. Okay. Let me explain something to you. <laughs> it's a non-Muslim stream. You're a Muslim. You came into the back chat five times and I kept kicking you. I already told you it's from, and you just kept coming. So I blocked you. So you couldn't do it again. That's it. And you may not like what I do next. Anyway, we've got one more. We've got one more. Um, I don't know who this guy is. I don't know whether he's someone sneaking about. Go on. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hi. How are you guys doing? Fantastic. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Um, so would you say that it's a central claim in I Islam that God exists? To believe God exists, of course, it's a central claim of Islam. And what is the evidence for this claim? The universe. What does that mean? It means the universe. Uh, hold, hold, on, hold on a second, Hamza. Are you a Muslim clever agent? I don't want to re release my beliefs. Are you a Muslim? I just said I do not want to state my beliefs. Well, yeah, I have a, if wait, you're not Muslim, well, just say no. If you're not Muslim, just say you're not Muslim. I'm I, asking what you believe. I, I, just huh? want, I just want to debate one of the central claims in Islam. So are you a Muslim? I don't want to. <laughs> not not a, a very that's, clever that's, agent. That's, that's, that is a Muslim, and I know who he is. is I actually know who he is. Okay. Is it the last guy? What's that? Is it the last guy? No, no. But I know who he is, and I'm, I'm going to message him after that. And Like, what you the hell are you doing? That, I know. Honestly, what was that? But it's just amazing, isn't it? Uh, what's your proof of God? Proof and of he God. called himself Clever Agent, and I'm listening. And I'm saying, I know this voice. I know who this is. I don't know why you would do that, man. Honestly. Is he Quranist? This is supposed to be a stream. No, he's a Sunni. This is supposed to be a stream for non-Muslims to come on, and we're giving dawah. Muslims want to come on. Then you have other people like this who are Muslims but are posing as, as something else. I mean, come on, guys. What is going on? <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Hamza and, and other uh, platforms have, have streams for Muslims to come on and ask questions and interact. This stream is not one of them. You guys should know what the arena is. It's just honestly ridiculous. He knows what their reader is. That's that's why he doesn't want to say that he's a Muslim. I know, yeah, I know. And, I, and and he. I think he knew that I knew who I was going to recognize him. I'm really disappointed in that. I'm going to message a guy. Honestly, I don't know. All right, um, I've taken the link of any, so we'll end it there. Um, we had some all right guests. I think we had made some headway with dude, uh, and also uh, our magic mushroom geezer. Yeah, the right mushroom right. guy. Yeah, he became my fan. Next time, he will be Jake's fan, inshallah. <laughs> you see, I changed his name. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I saw that. Yeah, so was very fun. Sorry, bro. <laughs> All right, guys, thank you. So, right, sorry, I just need to ex explain why Muhammad Ali didn't make it from Muslim Lantern. Uh, basically, he's got a new studio, couldn't connect all his stuff up, couldn't get it working, couldn't get his Wi Fi. So many excuses, anyway. SubhanAllah. So, he said he'll join the next arena. So, there you go. Sorry, all this time, girls and boys in the chat. Um, it wasn't like false advertising. I've been messaging him. I told him to come on his phone. He hasn't got he can't weak Wi-Fi, all sorts of stuff going on. So inshallah, uh, next time he said. All right. Inshallah. Other than that, Jake, what's going on, dude? I mean, you had a debate <coughs> recently, didn't you? I haven't watched it yet. I had a debate uh, with Matt Slick, a Christian apologist on the Trinity. And um, and now I got a debate now. It just confirmed it a couple of days ago with another Matt, but Matt Dillahunty, atheist Ooh. Matt Dillahunty. Oh, uh, yeah. So we're going to be debating on does God exist, and that's going to be on December nineteenth. So in a little less than three weeks. You, you know, he's a solid in yeah. presence or online debate. No, it's going to be online. Yeah. You know that, don't you? What's that? He's a solipsist. 
Oh yeah, I, I trust me. I'm gonna be watching all his videos. I've, I've watched. He got wrecked. He got wrecked by that Swedish Christian. Mm. Proper, proper exposed. Watch that, honestly. Yeah. You know, get playing so. clips of him saying stuff and all that. You see that one? <laughs> no, no, no. I haven't. You seen gotta that. watch it, bro. You, you, you. I'll send you the link. That uh, yeah, send me the link. Yeah. So we did a reaction to it. Um, I'll, okay. I'll send it to you, inshallah. But that's inshallah. Like, that. I'm thinking yeah. of debating this. You know this guy, don't you? This uh, Mike. Is it Mike Jones? Um, yeah, Michael well. Jones. Yeah, yeah. I had a I conversation think... with him on the Trinity. What, you, what? What's the topic with you and him? Uh, I, I think I've got a choice. Paul, uh, reliability of the New Testament. Um, oh, okay. Does, you haven't decided. I, I think what it was does Jesus teach his God? Oh, okay. I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to do that Old Testament flex, like this saying means he's saying he's God, because in Samuel five, <laughs> some rubbish. I know that's the mm. kind of flex he's going to go with, um, mm. but I need to ha I need to have a debate with somebody because it looks mm. like I'm just beating up women in the park. <laughs> uh, Honestly, it looks like I'm just ambushing gosh, random man. people who don't know nothing. And mm. the thing is, you see, what they don't realize is that the, the arguments I'm coming with, they, their top boys won't be able to respond to them. Mm. You get me? So it's like, yeah. Anyway, okay. When is when's Matt the Honey Man? I look forward to that. Uh, December nineteenth. Ooh, nice yeah. one. Tyson Fury next up. week, and then uh, Jake and Matt the Handy on the board. All right, dude, I'll let you go. Thanks for joining. I know it's hard to get right. hold of you. Salam alaikum. Thanks. Salam alaikum. Salam alaikum. Salam. And Irfan, alhamdulillah. How are you, my brother? Was a nice. Zakalakhe, you were a really good addition to today's arena, mashallah. Zakalakhe, for Alhamdulillah, I think we covered all angles, the three of us, um, and you, you're beautiful, mashallah, all rounder. I like it. Ian Bolton. We'll definitely have you again. What's going on with you, bro? Alhamdulillah, I'm fine. I I was today building my new PC. <laughs> I built okay, PC, mashallah. So you I, I, say I got nice setup. streaming from it. I'm streaming from my laptop right now because I still need to install Windows and stuff. But you've you've got a good nice setup even with the laptop, man. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, I I need to get into streaming or something, but I don't know. I'm just can't be bothered. <laughs> I don't know. But alhamdulillah, like everyone everyone got their own flexes. What they want to do in it, you know what I mean? Maybe I have to once get into it and then I will stick with it. The thing is, I have the German channel as well and I'm still confused. Like, we have ways of making you talk. Yeah. We will ask the questions. I don't know. All right, my brother. So, are, um, you doing, are you going to Qatar yet? I don't know. Because I, I, I saw I, a I, community I, post like you were. Yeah, mashallah. It's over five grand now, mashallah. <laughs> Mashed it. Mashallah. The, uh, are you going to go, fund inshallah? The is, go fund me are giving me a headache about. Who is Hamza? Ah, okay. As if like we're two different people because my account is in my main name, my real name, mm. my my Daramaya, and then who's this Hamza guy? How, asking me stupid questions, and the problem is, it's all through emails because you can't phone them, and it's oh, like, is... <laughs> uh, give us two business days to get back to you and all that crap. It's like, oh. And then I'm, I'm trying to apply for this higher card to go to there. I've uploaded my accommodation because it's booked, and they've not even confirmed the higher card. Well, the higher card, you can't get a visa. So I can't book a flight yet. It's, it's just madness. Because I heard Hashim came back already. Yeah, they're coming back. Uh, Ijaz is coming tomorrow. back as well. Ijaz, Ijaz is tomorrow. Gonna go I'm picking Ijaz up tomorrow. Huh? Ah, mashallah. He's going to go speak as Kona. Yeah, inshallah, inshallah. I'm taking him inshallah. for breakfast in the morning. And then he's staying at a hotel near my mosque. So I'm probably taking him for a meal in the evening as well, inshallah. Um, awesome. We'll take care of him, inshallah. But um, yeah, they're coming back. But I'm, I just want to go. I just want to taste it. You want to grab I mean? Zakir like Naik? <laughs> yeah. I think he's going as well, isn't he? Uh, Mohammed Ijab, inshallah. He phoned me today. Ah, he's, well. he's still going today. I think I think he's going on, on the weekend. So I was going to link up with him and we'll do our own thing. Inshallah, it's going to work, man. I make dua for you, bro. It will be awesome. I make dua. And Khabib is out there. Umay Suleiman is out there. Zakir Naik is out there. We do some flexes. We'll do some hustling. But. Yeah, I don't know. And the worst thing is, I've got bloody flu coming on now. My missus had it oh, for the past two weeks. So Bro, you, you're even hearing my, my chest like I'm coughing and stuff. Like yeah, I'm getting now, man. still these days. Uh, even just, Ben, ben a couple days ago, I don't know if you if you found out, he was like finished. He had a very bad flu. Yeah, my mind just started yesterday and I'm thinking, what, really? I'm going to go to Qatar? <laughs> They've been COVID. End up bloody um, <laughs> quarantined. I don't know. It's, it looks like it's collapsing. 
it looks like it. Inshallah, see. Because the problem is, you see, I know as soon as the weekend hit, everyone puts their pens down. No one's looking at their laptop. No one's looking at their emails. And that's the problem. I'm relying on yeah. bloody people responding to emails who can be bothered. How long, how long is the uh, World Cup still going? World because Cups I really don't know about anything about football. <laughs> I wasn't joking. Yeah, we know, we know, we know, we know. Relax. We know, we know, how, long, how long is it going still? But I think, I think it's about 20th, 20th of December is, okay. is, the, is when it's over. Um, I'm trying to go <laughs> out on Monday for seven days, but we'll see. Inshallah. Inshallah. What can Inshallah. we do? But anyway, uh, I'll probably, if I don't go, we'll be gaming, inshallah. Have you played that V Rising yet? V Rising? Well, what's this game, V Rising? V Rising? It's, it's when you're like a, a vampire and you have to like... Oh, I haven't played it yet. Is it new? Oh, it's brilliant. Oh, it's a survival game, right? They said it's survival. Yeah, 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 yeah. PvP and that as well and base building and it's a little bit I of will RPG. check it out. Bro, I have the new PC now. I will check everything else. Oh, you have to go. Because we, we, got, we got four... There's two more spaces in our clan if you want to join. There's four to a clan. Who, who's from the bros? Who's playing with you? Uh, no one. Just me and Nondas. Okay. Do you know who Nondas is? No. So he's, he's this geezer. He sounds like Ponders, but he's, we call him Nondas. Cho. He's a oh, really okay. nice guy. <laughs> well, so um, well, nice we, me and him are playing at the moment. Uh, ben might be joining us. But um, it's really good. If I join, Ben will join definitely, I think. Because we game together and stuff. I will try it? to convince him. Yeah. Inshallah. That'd be brilliant. Inshallah. All right, fam. We'll let you go. Salam alaikum. Have a blessed Kaffin. night. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Oh. Uh, brother Khalil is very, very good. But he's uh, he's in a different part of the world now and he's he's a doctor and he's busy. So it's been hard. But I think today's even though there's only two gladiators, I think um, <coughs> I think Alhamdulillah. Um it was all right. What do you reckon? To be honest with you, the guests have got nothing, nothing um, problematic. It's just goof. What do you reckon? The leftists won the election in Malaysia, so Qatar might be a better option. <laughs> so how that? You, did you enjoy the arena today, Gambit? Really? Are you being facetious? Apologize to all the Muhammad Ali fan, fans. Um, Oh, thank you, Iram. I, I thought it was pretty cool. Um, I'm still going to try to keep it to three gladiators. I think three is good. Uh, but, mashallah, we had all rounders, two, two Ian Bothans. And I had uh, I had my mate Sharif in my ear. And he, he says, say this, say that. I said, they ain't your toy, mate. You need to jump on. Yeah, Morocco through, aren't they? That's what Muhammad Ali say. <laughs> Yeah, I'm gonna go rest. Let's see. I mean, if it doesn't all come together tomorrow, I, I don't think I will be going to Qatar. Um, and I'm gonna have some have to ask some questions to all the people who donated as to what to do, um, whether they're happy for the money to go towards the running of the channel, or they want it back, or they want to give it to somebody else. I have to. <sighs> I'll have to make that a uh, call. Shall I? I told Sharif he needs to be a resident gladiator. That he needs to be here every time. You enjoyed Pursuit Excellence, mashallah. And we had a bit of a laugh because, look, my chair's gone down. I'm looking like really small. I feel like Monty Corbett. That's better. Yeah. Um, we have a bit of a laugh because some of the stupidity is you just got to laugh at it. You, you really, really do. And uh, I don't take myself too serious, so I don't mind laughing, you know. I don't think I'd laugh at an academic in that way. But it was funny. Jason Burns came, came on to the, um, the warm-up. <laughs> he had to make his excuses to leave. <laughs> oh, alhamdulillah. 
How are these two unpredictable? Yeah, it's ridiculous, man. I just, I just hate the idea. I'm wallahi, I hate the idea that somebody is in an office somewhere laughing and drinking tea on my emails like there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you doing tomorrow? What are you doing tomorrow, Sandra? Oh, you know what I mean? I'm like, answer. Jake is very tough. He's a match for you. What do you mean match for me? He's with me. Part of, part of what I do. Yeah, I'm trying to get into you, mate. He loves it. He's, he's messaged, been messaging me all through. Say this, say that. And I'm like, no, you have to come say it yourself. But we did the arena today on a Thursday, and it's different to the Friday because I don't think he works on a Saturday, but he works on a Friday. So I'll hand it. I think you would rock the academics. <laughs> it's true. Uh, Muhammad Ali couldn't get his uh, couldn't get his connections working. Um, but inshallah, next time he said, book him in. They're probably drinking his skinny soy milk latte. Yeah, something like that. And, I'm like, and you can't phone him. There's no phone number for GoFundMe. You, you know, they've said, oh, um, I'll, I'll read you the email, man. It's so ridiculous. It's like, what? It's like they haven't read what I've put. See if you think this makes any sense to you. Subhanallah, mashallah. We're on 5,160. All right, so here's, here's what I've wrote. Assalamu alaikum, my name is Hamza. I have a dream. I wish to go to Qatar for the World Cup, part of the mission present Islam to the attendees. While there, I also intend to look at and speak with Zaki Naik to invite him to the arena. I also intend to see about any Qatari support for my ambitious plan to write the book. To do this, I need to raise uh, £2,000, inshallah. Quick update, we smashed 2K, so now I need to raise about 3K so I can book five nights instead of two. Oh, quick note, we broke through the next target. I'm going to raise about to cover everything for full days, inshallah. So now final target is now four grand. So that's what I said in the, in, in the actual... Um, story yeah and then they send me this bloody stupid message in my head in. where is it where is it there we go where is it go do 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 Thanks for reaching out to our team. We've temporarily paused our GoFundMe because we need to add you some additional information to your fundraiser story. Please include the following information in your story. Your name and relation to the person you're raising money for. It's me. How the donations will be spent. Obviously, hotel in Qatar. How you, spend to get the, how you plan to get the donations from the fundraiser to the intended recipient. I am the intended recipient. Anything else you may feel may help people better understand your fundraiser's purpose. It's pretty, it's pretty clear in my story. Once these steps have been completed, please reply to this email. It's like... What? Read the bloody thing. Countdown, countdown. Sorry, it's so annoying. So they're like, they're holding the dough. You're like, we're holding the bloody dough for. Sheriff is something else. I'm saying he's inspirational. Sharif, Sharif. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next level. Next level. He would have given some beautiful answers today. I was reading his answers, but I'm, I said I'm not going to. I'm not like your remote control toy. Take care, Omar. Take care. Tachikoma! I, th I think they take 30 cents in the each donation or something, I don't know. Uh, oh, really? Alhamdulillah. Um, no, I, just, I don't think they take that much as such. To be honest with you. And like, mashallah, it's already, I booked the hotel. Hotel's expensive, seven days, but it's booked. So I could then give that to the higher people so they can see I've booked accommodation. All I need is hire to say, yeah, you're done. I need GoFundMe to say, yeah, here's the fans, and away we go. <sighs> so annoying. Read out Shuri's answers. Should I read some out? Let me see. Second, see if you can. Uh, I'll tell you what we'll do, right? I'll read the. I'll read his his points and see if you can guess the guest. Yeah, let's play. Guess the guest, right? So I'm going to read you Sharif's point, and let's see if you can get. <laughs> ah, I'm not your time. Right, we'll play guess the guest, right? Okay, let's have a look.
You ready, Sharif? You're watching. I know you're sneaking around in the background. He doesn't know. Sharif's hanging around. He's watching. He doesn't know that the Jew have two revelatory authorities. Firstly is the written Torah, and second is the oral Torah. Who was that referring to? Which, which guess the guess? Come on, answer, answers in the chat. I'll, I'll, I'll repeat it. He doesn't know that the Jews have two revel, revelatory authorities. Firstly is the written Torah, and second is the oral Torah. Yes. Okay, yeah, ready for this one? This one, this one, that wasn't that was an easy one. Oh, look at that! You even remember Avril Mel Goldberg? You remember that bloody name? How do you remember that? All right, all right, this one. So let's play round two of Guess the Guest. All right. Firstly, that we have proof for God versus no proof for aliens. So they aren't equally probable. It's replacing one we have evidence for with something we don't have any evidence for, but merely an hypothesis from his perspective. For example, if we had a murder victim, it's possible that aliens came down and killed him, but what we look for is a human killer. Who is the guest? <laughs> Mr. Mushroom. <laughs> <laughs> Hamza's biggest fan. <laughs> okay. Secondly, that as humans, we look for guidance, as Irfan mentioned. There's a drive in us that seeks out the creator, looks for meaning and purpose. If we agree that we are ultimately created by the creator, then everything within us and creation itself would ultimately have been caused by God. So God deliberately created us with this need to sanctify and revere God. <laughs> Turn off slow chat. Nah, there's too many of you. We're playing Guess the Guest. No, you're wrong, Iram. <laughs> yes! It was Hamza's biggest fan again. Well done, Miss Nomad. Okay, and final one. Give the example of the solar eclipse at the death of his child. Clear example of how he could have manipulated the people, but explain the fact that these natural phenomena were created by God. Guess the guest. Yeah, you got it wrong, Mariam. Al Neo got it right. Well done, son. So what we, the game we were playing is <laughs> Brother Sharif's... Um, remote control uh, attempts of what to ask the guests and we were seeing which guest that uh, advice or question was aimed at no it wasn't mushroom again it was dude because the dude was claiming the prophet and could have lied and if he could have lied it's a beautiful example that when when his, when his son died and there was an eclipse and the people were saying oh this is because his son died he was quick to say Oh, this has got nothing to do with my son. This is just an act of God, you know. So, and if he was a charlatan, if he was, if he was a con man, if he was a liar, he would have took advantage of it. Yeah, you see, you see, I am the Messiah. He would have taken advantage of that. So, it's evidence for there was an opportunity for him to use a, a, a natural phenomena to cover up uh, the lie or to add to the lie. Yeah, he did take take that, which is an example. Now, the difference being is Paul, according to the New Testament, would tell people what they wanted to hear. Yeah. So as a, if, if you're going to say you don't trust the process, somebody could have lied, and yet you trust a man who accept, who admitted to lying, you got a problem. It's cool, like a little quiz to see if we were paying attention. Yeah, indeed so. Indeed so. Let's pick his Next time, Sharif, anyway, inshallah, um, we shall have you. Because words of wisdom, bro. Absolute words of wisdom. Let's have a quick um, subscriber check. Woo! 95,340. 
Oh, sorry, Neil. Neil, yeah, you, you, what, what, what messages did you do? Sorry, dude, I missed you. Uh, I missed you. I see, I saw, I didn't ignore you. I didn't see you. Hundred K is definitely close. I think, um, Subhanallah. How's the latest short doing? Not bad, 23,000. And it's only released uh, today. Um, shorts are doing all right. Eleven point three million views. Allah How's Ben? Ben Ben's all right. I think he's recovered from his illness. Inshallah, from here the momentum increases exponentially. Yeah, inshallah, because you've got a hundred thousand people, uh, hundred thousand subscribers, and YouTube is pumping out your material to all of them, then um, it grow really big. A Nikabi neighbor, I hope you don't mind that I subscribed. Why would we mind that you subscribed? Make sure everybody here is a subscriber as well. That would really help. Like, I think 80% of the people who watch my videos don't are not subscribers. Anyway, I'm going to go now, but I'm very excited for Muhammad Ali on Hamza's Den tomorrow. Tomorrow? Whoa, what do you need tomorrow? There is no tomorrow. Uh, the next arena is in two weeks. I just brought it forward from tomorrow to today because of um, I wanted Jake, and Jake can't do Fridays. Am I planning to do anything with EF Tower? No, I'm not planning anything right now. <laughs> Sharice enjoying gas the gas. <laughs> <laughs> the last guest that came on Houses Den like Robin from Australia. Um, no, I don't think it was Robin. Um, look, you got to remember one thing, yeah. This is their lies, this is their world, this is their beliefs. This is going to see Willy Walker's chocolate factory no more. It's a hard, it's heavy, you know. You know, when I became Muslim, I didn't have anything, I wasn't holding on to anything, I had no belief system, I had no promise of heaven or paradise or anything like that. So when you have nothing, mashallah, you can easily grab onto Islam. But when you've got something, when you've got something that you think is tangible and real, that you know you, you guaranteed paradise, Jesus died for your sins, you went to the Walker's Chocolate Factory, you think it's all happening. It's hard to accept the idea that it's it's not happening no more. And that's why what I intend, and, I, and you know, and you may people might take it a bit weird. I said to him, I don't care if he takes your harder because. I didn't, I didn't want him to think that uh, we're like, ah, ah, please, please, take Shahada. We're begging you. We want, we want to see it. No, it's very simple. You want to take Shahada, take Shahada, mashallah. You know, alhamdulillah, it's for your own decision. You're the one who's going to live it. You know, I'm not going to like force you all. At the end of the day, my intention is to basically um, reduce them to what I was before I became a Muslim. Clean slate. All right, forget all the crap I've been fed, right? What you got? Now, I was teaching someone how to do dawah the other day. And I said, what you've got to do is this. And here's the tactic. You've got to pick away at what they believe. Right? You've got to pick away, pull little strands, poke it here, there, and everywhere. Just keep asking questions, right? And then what will happen, you'll reach the magic moment. You'll reach that moment when they'll turn to you and say, I could say the same thing about you. And you're like, ah. Oh. Because now they're inviting you and asking you to speak about Islam. So, you know, some people have, have, a, have a kind of thing. How do you speak to someone about Islam? How do you get, you know, get into a conversation? That's how you do it. Just poke away at someone else's beliefs and you're going to try to reciprocate. And as soon as they reciprocate, Hamza, the chat is, is asking you to become the Truman Show. <laughs> as soon as they ask you to reciprocate, um, they're asking you to speak about Islam. So they're inviting you. So you don't feel pressured then. You don't feel like, oh, I'm trying to force religion on them. They're asking you. Yeah, you are. And so that's the trap. Yeah, so that's what you do. You set them up to ask you about Islam. 
And then you're like, well, you, you ask me these questions, you want to know. It's not like you're forcing them. Like, I, want to, I want to talk about Islam. So if you have a situation where you want to speak about Islam, but you don't know how to instigate the conversation, don't talk about Islam. Talk about their beliefs, poke their beliefs, twist their beliefs, twist the nipples of their beliefs. <laughs> yeah, And then they'll, 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 they'll automatically, they'll, they'll, they'll just have to say, I could say the same thing about you. And you're like, really? All right, let's have it. I have a discussion about the new brand of religion there. No, Hamza can't stand him on stream. How is he going to react face to face? Who are we talking about, young Ramsey? I'm missing something here. Can't stand who? I don't stand who? Frank. Oh, Frank. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hamza's den. Jazakallah. Assalamu alaikum from the birthday of Imam Abu Khari. Why nobody is shutting CP's mouth? Farid has done that job. Muslims are stupid if they're getting doubts from him. Alhamdulillah, Amir. MashaAllah. Amir. Amir. Amir? Uh, Hamza, I never received that information. You said I was, you was going to email me. Jay Doyne. What information did I say I was going to email you? Forget, sorry, remind me. Um, I know... Somebody messaged me today. Um, email me. Let me just see who emailed me. Email me again, Jay. Sorry. Look, so much going on. I keep looking at my emails. Come on, come on, you go up on me. David Solomon from the warm up uh, messaged me and thanking me. Jay from the live the other day. Um, what, what information? Remind, did you email me? You got to email me, man, to remind me. I showed you po I showed you the poetry. What poetry did I show you? I don't understand. What poetry? What, po what poetry did I show you? Sunday chill, yeah. But what did I what poetry? I don't remember any poetry. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't done that, James, to be honest with you. Um, we didn't do a, a Taui effect on that video, so forgive me. Uh, update on the Kata project, and as I've been whinging already, um, I'm in the hands of two things. GoFundMe, I'm, I'm not releasing any of the money until they get more information, which I've given them. I just need to wait for them to sanction it. And the other one um, is the higher card is the visa i'm waiting for them to confirm i've given them everything they need i'm just waiting on human beings to do their bloody job um that's it unfortunately if i can't get it done tomorrow um i won't be traveling on monday and then i, I don't know i don't know what's happening to be honest reference the raymond farron no raymond ferris no oh no when oh did we do that Have I met John Rambo? Speaker's Corner. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> when will I debate Sign Man? I'm not going to debate him. I just want to know his story. I want to know why he's there with the sign, but he wasn't there on Sunday. It was funny, right? I wanted to, I wanted to interview Sign Man to find out why why is, why is he got a sign, um, and I wanted to give Victor a scarf that I promised him before COVID, right? And Victor wasn't there, and Sign Man wasn't there. Like, okay, weird. Am I going to stay awake till Fajr? Somebody, I'm not. I'm going to go to bed soon. I'm really left. But um, the good thing is I'm not working tomorrow. Usually um, after arenas, I'm working. I'm not working. Nice. I'll stick around for a little bit. Not too long. Yeah, they did miss the bus.
I don't want to give it to something that's not a scar. <laughs> Can we get a non shop stream tomorrow? No. No. Oh, my chair keeps going down. Hammers 100 subs for 20 minutes. Can you accept that rate? Uh, what? I played it before I left. You played it before I left. Poetry. You'll have to remind me. Sorry. Sorry, man. Do you know how many people I speak to? I'm real. <laughs> Can I do a video on cynicism? <laughs> what? <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, Frank went to speak his call. Not last week, though. I think it was the time before. Oh, okay. Yes, now I remember. Now I remember. Um, what was I sending you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. We watched Muslim Spoken Word, and then we watched um, Truth for the Life of This World. I can't remember what I promised to send you after that, though. Sorry, Jay. Now I get it. Where are we going? What are we doing? Like, wake up one morning. It's welcome to the show. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm honest. I'm honest. Be honest. How do you feel about low life stealing your intellectual property? No one's stealing nothing, to be honest. No one is stealing anything. It's, it's up to you guys, isn't it? Because you're, you're my subscribers as well as their subscribers. So if you're going to watch crappy quality, and I do. I'm still waiting for Allegation Hunter to, to chop up the arenas that he said he wanted to do, but I'm not quite sure he still wants to do it. Am I coming to cut that? I don't know, Omar. I don't know. I've got some lovely things lined up there as well. Some brother wants to drive me about. I'm not. Uh, what's it playing the gaming channel? I'm playing. I'm playing V Rising. Um, I've not been streaming it though. <laughs> yeah, I, I was trying to explain. I said I prefer online games to single player kind of games. I like survival games. I like base building games. I like PvP type games. And uh, this V Rising is really good. <sighs> All the goofy YouTubers. Nah, that was stealing nothing, mate. We're on 95,357 subs. I always learn I never lose. No, 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 no. Naeem is I never lose. I win or I learn. You have space in your clan? Behave yourself, son. You should join our clan, man. Well, like I said, I'm planning to hook up with Mohammed Ijar. Um, I'm pretty sure uh, we're trying to meet Habib. Stuff. You like so yeah, survival base building game. Have you played that V Rising? It's really fun. It's a really good game. Brother, please, can you at least tell me the names of the books or the... Um, all right, I'll, I'll give you a book to read. I, I'll, 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 I'll tell you what might help you. Yeah. Um, I do say goodbye. Why am I Okay, so this book, The Mythmaker, and the Paul and the Invention of Christianity by Hayam Maccabee. This is uh, what I would recommend. When do I sleep? Um, I, I can sleep in a tree at any time. I can sleep for like forty minutes and feel like six hours. I, I'm, I'm a, 
I'm that kind of guy. And and this was another book I was reading from today, um, The Cross and the Crescent by uh, Gerald Dirk. Really, really good book. This is the foundation of my book against the uh, Gospel of Matthew. Hamza's then 24 hour live stream when I hit 100k. Well, that's like flipping Sunday. <laughs> um, um, maybe we'll do something again. If we hit 100k next, next Friday, we'll do a. If I'm not in Qatar, uh, If you go to Qatar, uh, meet with all people of the book. I don't know. I'm going to speak to Ijaz tomorrow. I'm picking him up. Like I said, I'm breakfast with him. I'm going to pick his brains about everything. Come to where? Bukhara. Where's Bukhara? Is that in Saudi? Yeah, we'll just chill out more now. We'll just relax then. The arena's over. People might try and pick on me now. I'm all alone. I'm all alone. It's wonderful having Jake about and Irfan and my little pocket pocket Sheikh Sharif. <laughs> Forgot the guy to slap Maguire. <laughs> the brown thorn I'm wearing reminds me of Father Brown. Oh, that's Father Brown. Uh, Brother Hashim met Zaki Naik. Yeah, I know the boys have all met Zaki Naik. I know, I know, I know, I know. I know. know. Ah, Bukhara is the place of Bukhari. Ah, Bukhara. Ah, mashallah. Yeah, I think it was good. I think it was good. I think it was enjoyable. We squeezed three hours out of it. Um, killer Kane. I remember no killer. Killer's the Sikh guy, isn't he? The Sikhy guy. Nice enough guy. But you know, you know what's really, really annoying? They think they've got a point and they want this point to be true. And we just show them it's just not true. They just want it to be true so badly. You know, today I had two people on the warm up trying to. Say that when the Quran says that some on that day some will have blackened faces and some will have whitened faces, it's saying black people are going to hell and white people are going to hell. You're like, what the bloody hell are you talking about? You know, it's really ironic about that. I was thinking about it today, right? So they read that verse where blackened faces will be going to hell and the white ones, whitened faces, will be going to paradise, right? And yet the nation of Islam, using the Quran, say people with blonde hair and blue eyes are the devil. You know. The nation of Islam don't think it's racist. And it's like, and you're trying to say to them, it's just not true. And rather than to go, oh, really? It's like they want it to be true. They're like, they're like um, they want it to be true so they don't have to um, accept the reality. Do I consider myself a student of knowledge? No, no, no. Nay, nay, thrice nay. Yeah, black due to be as I've said to him. What colors coal? What colors um, charcoal? Black. Uh, what makes it black? Fire. Right there, you go. <sighs> you want to prove the crowds are not from God? It says, "Duh." Uh, how are you going to do that? You on about no worries. <laughs> Gloomy or sad faces and see, yeah, I know, I know. It's just they just want it to be. And like I said, the nation of Islam, they don't think Islam is racist. Yeah. 
Exactly. Skin color don't matter. It's sins that matter. Kareem, please relax, mate. Leave Jay alone. Sheikh Uthman's traveling, but I will, I will pin him. You can prove it in two sentences. Go on then, Da. Prove it. <laughs> prove the Quran is not from God in two sentences. This is going to be really funny. And it is exciting, Milati, Ibrahim. Come on, let's hear it. Quick question. I currently live with my partner. She doesn't want to confer. Is there anything that says I can't live with a woman if we're not married, etc.? Oh, okay. I'll be honest with you, my brother. Um, you will change your values yourself. Yeah, you know, you shouldn't, you shouldn't live with a woman who you're not married to. Uh, she doesn't have to convert, but... She, why didn't she marry you? I don't get it. Um, how, how long have you been together? I, I left my girlfriend. She didn't want to marry me. I left my girlfriend. So uh, I became a Muslim in 2001. Um, my girlfriend didn't want to become a Muslim. Okay, that's fine. I said, you don't have to become a Muslim. But we need to be married. We can't live together if we're not married. Um, and um, she didn't want to. So subhanAllah, three and a half months later, I was in Morocco getting married. And mashallah, I've been married now over 20 years. So, you know, the, the way I saw it, or see it now, should I say, is the girl I was with at that time was only to take me to that moment of time in my life. She wasn't meant to, she wasn't going to take the rest of the journey with me. This is my current wife, Was that was her place. Um, obviously, I wasn't aware of it um, at the time. Um, and I know brothers who try to make it work with the party. It, just doesn't, it doesn't work. Because what happens is you'll have different value sets. She'll start doing stuff that you know is haram and she, should, you know, in Islam. I mean, she doesn't want to become a Muslim and you still live with her. And while she starts drinking and this and that, and it's it, it really is chaos. And you, you'll realize that maybe you've come to the end of the road together, you know. And if that's the case, that's the case. But inshallah, she might see the, the, the good that becomes of you. She might see the better you, better version of you. You know what I mean? Even my wife was saying that to me today. She says, you could have, like, stayed with my ex. You know, because you just become a Muslim, you're a new Muslim, you're, you, you know, you're learning your way. She could see a change in you, no more drinking, no more gambling. And she could have become Muslim. I was like, what, so you'd rather me have stayed with her? She said, no, 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 no I'm not saying that. I'm not saying what happened, happened. I'm, that. <laughs> I'm just giving an example. But it, just because you're living with a woman, it's not a not reason not to take your shahada. Yeah? So what happens is you, take, you become a Muslim, you take your shahada, you start learning to pray, you start growing in your deen. You start, your values start shifting. You start looking at your surroundings. You start looking at your friends. You start looking at everything and say, these things that used to be a value to me were something important to me are no longer anything to me. You know what I'm saying? So. <sighs> Don't listen to these shakes in the chat. Alhamdulillah, Fugu. Fugu? Fugu, Fugu. When I started to practice, all my friends left, no longer on the same page. Allah SWT has changed, replaced my friends with a hubby and daughter. Alhamdulillah, Ira. Uh, you can do nikah with a non Muslim. Uh, Yeah, it's 149 here. Yeah. 10 more minutes, and then it's that's your lot. Oh, there is a contradiction with Judas, no worries. You, you said what, what did you say? He bought the field and then went back and threw the change at them. No, that's not what happened, mate. Quran is not from God, it is from advanced civilization existing in this universe, which is immoral. 
response. Um, I'll be honest with you, Afaq Shah, I'll just go to, you, usually most things are answered by Islam Q&A, to be honest. Thank you, Najia. If I saw a cross in the house, I would break it, so I don't know. She will react. There is, yeah. <laughs> Mac Mac is still here. Hey, there's three hundreds in the Judas story. Who bought the field? Why is it called the field of blood and how he died? Exactly, Mac Mac. And, and not just that, not just that. One, he was full of remorse, and the other one, he was happy with what he'd done. Do you know what I mean? It's like even his feelings is a contradiction because one, he throws the money back because he's full of remorse, and the other one, he runs off and buys a field. Oh, Fugu. Ah, oh, Fugu came from the episode of The Simpsons when he's a puffer fish. Okay. Hey, Kiki. You have no problems with being with a Christian. Yeah, but you need to start thinking seriously about that. Kiki. Um, oh, thank you for it, Tana. Um, you're welcome, Jay. And like I said, email me, man. <laughs> uh, this arena was dope. I'm so happy you enjoyed it because it's hard trying to uh, squeeze it out, man. I thought it was a good laugh. I enjoyed myself. I thought it was funny, man. Do you think that I'm controlling myself a bit more in the arena now, letting other people speak? What do you think? Yeah, I know. We were just celebrating 80K, and now we're on 95.3. Amazing, isn't it? SubhanAllah. <laughs> to be a Christian. <laughs> and he wondered why his wife left him. Oh, that's, sorry. That was not the belt, was it? Oh, you had ups and downs in the chat as well. Oh, who are you chatting with in the chat? I'm surprised Jay Burns didn't come. <laughs> it was so funny on the warm up. Okay. Jake was right. He knew the brother. He's apologized that one who snuck on at the end. But we forgive him. You think I need to be more polite? Um, I am polite. Um, what, what's, what's my man saying? Hamza, claimed, Hamza chimed in on Judas. He collected the money and purchased the field. No, that's not what, that's not what happened. That's not what happened. He was full of remorse and he threw the money back. There's two opinions. One, he was happy with what he'd done. The other, he was sad with what he'd done. One, he that he he bought the field with his own money and then died there. And it was called the Fields of Blood. And the other was, um, no, was it? it? No, it was called Fields of Blood because he bought the money with the blood money. And then it was called Fields of Blood because um, he died there and the Jews bought the field and named it after him. Anyway, there's a contradiction, man. No, um, you've not done anything at all. Yeah, Kiki, you, you shouldn't really be with a, uh, a Christian man, unfortunately. I know it's hard, but you do need to start either getting him to become Muslim or you're going to have to seriously consider what the future is going to be. Make him a Muslim, Kiki. Or move town. Make your move. Do your hijra. Move to a Muslim area. 
If you're young, travel, go study, do something. Uh, you feel like children living in Christian Muslim Christian Muslim family. Yeah, I've I've seen them. The mum who was not a Muslim, the kids celebrating Christmas and all that, and it's just nonsense. You know what I mean? It's, it's just it's just it's, it's, it just won't work. Because you've got different values. The things that attracted you to each other are gone now. Uh, when we do a stream for Muslims, come and ask their doubts. I don't do wind streams. I don't, I honestly don't, I apologize. I'm not that guy. I'm really not that guy. I'm not, I'm not a doubt buster. I'm like, put your big boy pants and knickers on. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not, uh, I'm not, I'm, I'm not that guy. I'm not a guy of dep depressed people and all that. I, I'm the wrong guy. I'm just the wrong person for that. Lighthouse Foundation. Oh, yeah, yeah, I need to recommend, I need to promote uh, my brother, Yusuf Pons. He does the lighthouse. They're for you. Those guys are for you. EF Dower, Doubt Busters, Dower Clinic. These guys are there for you. No. Oh, sorry. I gave up too much to be a Muslim. I gave up my daughters. I gave up my business. I gave up my girlfriend. I gave up my whole life to be a Muslim. And then I get Muslims whinging at me, having doubts about stupid things because they heard Christian Prince say something. I'm the wrong guy. Don't come, don't come to me with it, please. I beg of thee. No, I'm not with EF Tower anymore. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I apologize if it, if it feels harsh. It's just the way I am. I just don't. Um, I just, I just can't. It just, just sounds like it just, I, I hear it, and it just sounds like whinging. You know, have you ever um, have you watched Charlie Brown? From back in the day, um, and that when the adults talk in Charlie Brown, right? They don't, you don't, they don't speak. They're like this, like when the teacher speaking to Charlie. So, that, that that's what it sounds like. And and honestly, when people start whinging, I'm like, please, come on, man, put yourself together. Yeah, yeah, look, Muslims need Dawa more than non Muslims. Listen, go to Bleak, go three days on Jamaat, be all right. I'm not equipped, I'm not equipped to deal. Look, one of my weaknesses, and, and I'll, I'll hold this up now, I can't deal with mental illness. I, I, I just can't. And if depression is a mental illness, don't come to me with it because I don't, I, I can't, I can't handle it. <sighs> what was my conversion story? I can't do it. <laughs> I'm going to grab the one off um, Rerouted. I'll put that on my channel. You'll be able to watch it. Ben interviewed me, I think. The Quran says, what's the make of Christian Jewish women? I used to talk about that. Yeah, I would agree. I would agree. I'm the wrong guy. I'm the wrong guy. <laughs> I have sympathy. I struggle. I struggle with it. I can't, you can't be good at everything, can you? And I, I just can't deal with it. Could you do a poll to figure out the ages of your audience? Um, uh, should we do that then? Okay, let's do that. Let's see what demographic is awake. All right. I'll start. I'll start, yeah. I'm 
23. Okay. Twenty-three, twenty, twenty, thirty-seven, thirty-two, thirty-three, thirty-three, forty, forty, twenty-seven. The age I accepted Islam. Thirty-three, forty, forty, twenty-seven. So much so, we're like kind of. Uh, oh, a few millennials there. It's a bit younger than my daughter. So it's about right. It's what I would expect, I think. Yasmin's older than me. No. We're ancient. Why are we ancient? You're not 65, Miss Nomad, surely. I can't believe I'm 50 next year, man. Oh, you're twenty. Okay. No, it's good to know who who is who is watching what I do. Um, I can actually check. Should I check? Let's show you the demographics of the channel. Let's do a quick demograph check. Studio uh, analytics, channel analytics, audience. <whistles> oh wow, it's changed now. So United Kingdom is top viewers. Then the United States, then India. India. Let's have a look. Subscribers are turned on all notifications was only 14K. Subscribe to all notifications for your channel and enable YouTube notifications was 9%, 10%. Say. Watch time from subscribers. 60% of the people who watch my stuff is not a subscriber. <sighs> anyway, what was we saying? We were saying, oh, the ages. So 13 to 17, 1.3%. 18 to 24, 20.5%. 20 25 to 34, 35%. 35 to 44, 22%. 45 to 54, 11.6%. 55 to 64, 5.5%. And 65 plus 2.5%. So my the highest average is 25 to 34, which was kind of what it was, wasn't it? And, all, and let's have a look. Females, 10.2%. Males, 89.6%. User specified, 02 What the hell is that? User specified. Wow. Views in shorts, 3.4 million. That's incredible. 3.4 million views in shorts. Impressions, 72% from YouTube recommended your content. 12.3 million. Wow. Amazing. My fishing works. Yeah, with the arena warm up. Yeah, yeah. We got, we got, a, I think, was it two of them? A Mac Mac killer. Oh, we got three of them. A Mac Mood. Three of them came, didn't they? <laughs> the lads younger than Hamza. Okay. All right, I'm going to call it a day now, guys. There's this, uh, I can feel this flipping flu catching up on me. Oh, the shorts. Yeah, yeah, it's cool. Even on Tiki Tok. Uh, do I watch football? Uh, yeah. Talking of emojis, I need to add some more. We need to do more for the members as well. All right, Kiki, uh, you take care now. May Allah make things easy for you. And um, 
bless your affairs, inshallah. And hopefully, we'll make your partner a Muslim. Do you want the bus before we go? I'll give you the bus before we go. It's been a while, hasn't it? We haven't done it. We haven't done it for a while. So it seems... Um, All aboard! A mental in Speaker's Corner. Mental? Have you seen... Mental. Me I swear, it's like... The local mental hospital had a day, has a day trip every Sunday and the coach piles up and Hatun gets on it and Acid gets on it and Captain Bloodfire gets on it and Kay gets on it and Soko gets on it and you are they all and they bring it to, to Hyde Park and they all pile off. They spend the day at Speaker's Corner, go for a meal later and then it's back to the hospital because they're all mental. We haven't had it for a while. Well, there it is. Have you guys seen my latest uh, video? Did I play my latest short? Oh, yeah. You've probably all seen it anyway, haven't you? Look. I like this one, actually. I like this one. You're a slave. You're a slave to your ego. I'm a slave to my creator. And that's a massive difference. You know why? Because your ego will fool you and trick you and want stuff. But when you're a slave to your creator, it doesn't matter what the ego wants. The ego takes a back seat now. It's the creator. Right. Yeah. So you're a man who seeks truth. Which religion do you believe is true? See, we believe religion is merely man's relationship with mm -hmm. his creator. So the first man created, that would be the first religion. So Adam, yeah. his religion would be what? Submission and surrender to God. Would you agree? Let's imagine God exists in this scenario. Yeah. So Adam is the first man created. To connect to his creator, he would submit to his creator because that creator would be the source of supreme guidance and source of objective morality. Yeah. Would you agree? Therefore, that would be the first religion. Now... I will put it to you, there is only one religion. There is no other religion that is true. Okay. Yeah. Only Islam can be a true religion. And now the, the reason is the word Islam in itself means submission and surrender to God. These are just to trigger responses from the uh, atheists. This is the one that got 4 million views on TikTok. As a Muslim, yes. why are you in the Christian country and not the Christians are in a Muslim country which is, you know, has a prosperity? Do you believe England's a Christian country? Oh yes, it has a big huge history. So this country in England, Darwinian and evolution is directly against Christianity. Yet we teach our children in school as a fact this is true. In England, you can be gender fluid, change transgenders. In England, homosexuality, married men can marry men. What type of Christian country allows men marrying men? What kind of Christian country allows this? What kind of Christian country teaches our children that we evolve from 
from common ancestors and we weren't created by God. So let's establish one thing. England is not a Christian country. England is a secular democracy. One of the British values is freedom of religion. Mm -hmm. Now, I'll ask you a question. What are you doing in my country? I'm English. Yes, That was a cracking end to that one. Asking me what we're doing in England. How many subs do I have in TikTok? Um, I don't know. You don't have subs in TikTok, you have followers. Um, Eighty-four, eighty-four thousand. But it, it can go mental. It can go mental. Like I said, that that particular one I just showed you now had four point two million views. Four point two. Here's the thing, though, right? It had four point two million views, right? Three hundred and four thousand likes. And yet, I've only got 84,000 followers. I don't get it. Why did I slip follow? 304,000 people love that video, and yet they didn't follow me. Why not? The video we received yesterday had uh, that you know, you're a slave, had 129,000 views. You're a slave. Amazing. I saw comments on that saying it's a rude question to ask from Christians. Yeah. Without them realizing Ukraine asked it. Exactly. 11 million views in, in YouTube. Yeah, mashallah. We, 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 we've got a hand with Ben doing his flex. Mashallah. We kind of got YouTube motoring now. Once we get to 100,000, then we're just going to push on. <sighs> yeah, I do need to debate somebody. Uh, I feel like it's getting irritating that the people I'm speaking to don't know the facts and then people could turn and say well they wouldn't know the facts so i feel like i should speak to people who should know the facts yeah benny's nailing it man alhamdulillah yeah so basically what i do with the shorts i release a short each day for a premiere that's coming on sunday so now that we're going to premiere on sunday uh at 11 o'clock and then i'll do my sunday chill straight after what are my views on Daniel Hakikachi? No, mashallah. Oh, <sighs> I'm gonna need this fix. I don't understand that. What was it? What? My fix of what? My fix of what? Right, I'm tired. I'm going. Thank you for joining. Much appreciated. Um, if I do some gaming, just look out for it. So if you if you like the gaming stuff, you need to um, make sure you 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 click the notification because with the gaming, there's no warning. I just just do it. Um, I might be playing V Rising. I might let you watch. See what's going on. Um, Inshallah. Okay. So until the, um, other than that, um, the premiere should come out on um, Sunday in the morning. Inshallah. Until then. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi. Thanks for watching. I will see you on the other side. Comes the lion. Wrong lion. Wrong lion. Wrong lion.